lead attorney here. Hope you guys are doing well, man. Listen, can y'all hear me? Oh, my. I was streaming, man. How how are y'all doing? Can y'all hear, a brother? All right, are we in here? Everybody hit the like button. Can y'all hear me? Why can't I hear me? Is everybody good? How are y'all doing? Maybe it's my microphone. Is my mic right? Man, listen. Breaking news. Breaking news. Fannie Willis has responded. She has responded. She is coming out swinging. Coming out swinging. Let me show you what we got. Let me show you what we got. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Check this out. Now, y'all remember, y'all remember there was an affidavit from President Donald Trump's uh, investigator. That's what that's what Trump called himself. He didn't call himself ex-president. He didn't call himself former president. Get my mic right. He called himself president. Somebody write president in the goddamn chat. <laughs> He called himself president, a little under the weather. And he said that there has been some evidence to demonstrate that Fannie Willis, God, y'all are tearing this chat up, man. Um, there's been some evidence to, oh, let me slow the damn chat down. Hold up, because y'all are tearing it up. Uh, I don't want to do it. There's been evidence to demonstrate that Fannie Willis and Nathan Wade have been sexing. <laughs> They've been in a relationship. They've been having sex. Even though Fannie is the one who pointed out and tapped, pause, Fannie Willis tapped. Nathan Wade to be the special prosecutor to go after President Trump. It looks like there could have been some self-dealing because she ended up paying Nathan Wade over $650,000 and Nathan Wade in turn was taking her to Aruba, taking her on cruises, taking her to Fogo, Chops, Bones, Ruth Chris. He was also giving her the dick. Uh, allegedly. Allegedly. What has he done? What has Donald Trump done? Donald Trump has come and blasted open this case. Now, y'all know Fannie Willis. And let me tell you something. If you don't know who I am, mucho gusto. I am the lead attorney. A 20-year attorney right here in Atlanta, Georgia. Fannie Willis, right down the street. Uh, your boy Nathan Wade, right down the street. Hateville, the airport, right down the street. The courthouse is right down the street. There is no one better positioned to explain this case to you than me. I bet the same courtrooms where Fannie was holding up them papers, ah, where she was freaking out. I've been in those same courtrooms, walked those same halls in front of those same judges. Fannie Willis got all upset because uh, Ashley Merchant had said that maybe they had sex, her and uh, Fannie and Nathan, at the conference. Oh, I don't have sex at the conference. Bullshit. I will tell you guys, y'all are in the right place today. I will tell you guys that attorneys, we attorneys at those conferences, at those CLEs, we call them CLEs, Continuing Legal Education. We have to go to all these trainings. These conferences, these trainings, we fucking, we are. Look at them. I mean, look at Nathan and, and, and Fanny right now. Y'all might not know this. Y'all aren't in the small community. It's such a small community. If a woman is smart and she's married to an attorney, she will go to every single one of those conferences with her husband. Because if not, 
somebody going to be sucking him off. And it's not just the attorneys. Judges go to these conferences. These judges be fucking. (laughs) They're just humans. Attorneys. Guys, uh, a lot of law firms, they will take their paralegals to these conferences so the paralegals can learn. Ooh, when I show up to a conference and I'm checking into the hotel and I see 12 paralegals from a law firm checking in, I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. I mean, it's 12 of them right there. Guys, listen, I, I, I don't even want to expose to you the real community down here in Atlanta is Sodom versus Gomorrah. God damn it. At any rate, Donald Trump, President Trump, as he called himself, has busted open this case by getting an investigator to look at Nathan Wade's cell phone records. And what did you see? Now, not to be outdone, because you know a black woman, you can't never keep a black woman down. It's not an independent one, too. What did Fanny say? No man can do shit for me, but my daddy. (laughs) Look what she's done. Let me show you what we got, guys. Bam! It's a filing. It is a filing. State of Georgia versus President Donald John Trump. Somebody put Donald in the damn chat. If you go down here, what do we see? The state's objection to and motion to exclude Donald J. Trump's proposed exhibit. What was the exhibit? We're going to take a look at it. But if you go down here, if you go all the way down, go all the way down, whose signature do you see? Who's the first name that you see? Bam, Fanny T. Willis. We're going to get all into it, guys. We're going to get all into it. Fanny Willis right here, district attorney, the Atlanta Judicial Circuit, where I have practiced over 20 years. You guys are, are, are listening to this. You guys are getting this broken down from an insider, guys. I'm going to tell you all about this. We're going to go all through it. We are going to read what she says. Now, I asked y'all yesterday. I said, this evidence looks damning. What do y'all think? Do y'all think Fanny is going to admit that she got caught? Or do you think she's going to deny that she got caught and double down? Well, y'all had to wait less than 24 hours. She said, I'm doubling down. I'm denying and I'm doubling down. So we are going to get all into it. Now, I cannot start... I cannot start it up without my number one co-host. We got AV to the seventh power. Hi, guys. We got AV to the seventh power. Man, y'all were tearing her Instagram up. Oh, Oh my God. Y'all go check her out. AV, let them know who you are. Let them know what you got going on, where they can find you. Yeah, Yeah. absolutely. So really excited to be back. (laughs) We've done three days in a row. This is day three. Jesus. We've been really, really killing this hearing, but uh, super excited to be back. My name is AV. I'm a co-host here on this channel. I also have my own channel here on YouTube. Where we cover all things law and crime. All those things are over there. So you can find me at AV7Official on Instagram or my handle below at AV to the seventh power here on YouTube. A hundred percent. So we are going to get into it right now. But hold up now. I know that we ain't got 5,000 people in the chat and 900 likes. Get them likes. Y'all better like. In fact, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put y'all, some of, y- some of y'all going on punishment. Let me put it. In. I'm, <laughs> Don't, you <laughs> punishing like, them this I'm early put, in the I'm stream? Punishment. Oh. Y'all, got, y'all got my chat. My, my likes at 900. Watch this. Watch what I do right here. God oh. damn it. Right? Listen, y'all get me up. Y'all get me up to to two 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 point five. Y'all get me up to two point five likes, and I, I might open this shit up. But y'all got my likes looking real niggardly. What? Well, hey, hey, that's a real word. <laughs> y'all are being real niggardly with my likes. 
Just it's free. Just get them up. Seconds. Just do it. Just do it. Hit the get them up. Shout out to Postnut Clarity. Postnut Clarity is like, ah, members only. <laughs> Y'all fucking around with my likes. 2.5, we opening it up. But let's get into it, guys. Listen to this. Are y'all ready? Now, 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 wait, 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 wait. Let's do this. Let's do this. Let's take a let's take a back step for those that didn't see what Donald Trump himself filed by and through counsel. Mm-hmm. Let me show you guys this. Let me show you what uh our president, let him tell it, <laughs> has filed in this case. Check this out. Check this out. Hold up now. Um Look at this here, guys. Bam. Bam. There it is. What do we got? What do we got? We got state of Georgia versus Donald J. Trump. And guys, do y'all remember all of the co-defendants that he had? You know, you know, uh, uh, Rudy, Rudolph, Giuliani, all of them. Donald Trump said, no, fuck y'all. Y'all get out the way. This is me versus the state of Georgia. He just put himself. He didn't put anybody else. He said, this is me versus fat ass Fanny. Watch what I do. He files this supplemental defense exhibit. And what does he say? He says, President Trump, not former, not ex, current. (laughs) He says, President Trump hereby files this proposed supplemental exhibit. And if we go down here, what do we see? We see an affidavit. Now, what does the affidavit say? It says, my name is Charles Middlestat. I am 59 years of age. I am a criminal defense investigator working with Steve Sadow. Now, who is Steve Sadow? AV calls him Boots. Mm -hmm. He had on suede boots the other day. If you ever see a 60-year-old in some suede boots, you know you fucked up. And, and they were like baby blue or whatever the fuck. Oh, yeah. He was ready to kick in the door, waving the 4-4. Waving the 4-4. <laughs> All right, Steve Sadow comes. And what did they do? They put a subpoena. Let me, let me, let me make it bigger so you can see it, Paul. Let me blow it up. They they Steve put up, put a subpoena on ATT. And in, in a week. They got the response back from AT&T and the investigator says that they fully, uh, AT&T fully complied. It talks about the information that they received needed to be analyzed through a tool called Cell Hawk. Mm -hmm. And what what they asked uh, AT&T for was data. Show me all the data regarding Nathan Wade's phone from January 1st, 2021 to November 31st, 2021. We want to know his whereabouts. We want to know who he's been talking to. We want to know the number of phone calls that he's made. We want to know the number of text messages that he has made. And AT&T was like, here. If, 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 If this is for President Trump, here. Usually they make you make months and months for the information. They gave this man the information right off the bat. Here you go. Right. And so he talks about his, and we went over this yesterday, so I'm not going to go all through it. We're just going to hit the highlights. This is a refresher. He talks about his extensive training and analyzing the cell hawk analytics. And he talks about, how the, the the data is not capable of being manipulated. So he's saying that you can trust the data. What does he say? He says he pulled two reports in particular. The first report attached as exhibit A says it's isolating all interactions between Mr. Wade and Mrs. Wade. Oh, Mr. And Mrs. Oh. Wade. Oops, Mr. Oh. Wade and Mrs. Willis during the period of available records in 2021, the dates, the timing, the frequency, the duration of these interactions. What did the report show? The report revealed over 2,000, over 2,000 phone calls, 2,000 phone calls between Nathan and Fannie Willis in under a year a lot of phone calls guys 
And this is for the men in the chat. I know we got a lot of women. Men, have you ever talked to a woman over 2,000 times in 11 months and you ain't been smashing it to death? I mean, smashing it to death. Smithereens. 2,000? Do women, do you know how hard it is to get a man on the phone 2,000 times? Danny did it. You got to give us the ass. <laughs> you can't, you can't not hook us up and then get us on the phone 2,000 times. Mm. Men value money and they value their time. And if you want to get, you can get us on the phone twice. 200 times without letting us hit? Probably not. But 2,000, inconceivable. That's what Donald Trump's investigator found. That's right. Not only 2,000 times, guys, they had texted each other 12,000 times. 12,000 times exchanged text messages over an 11-month period. Yeah, and that averaged to something like 1,100 texts in a month. 11? They talked a ton in 11 months. It can't be 1,100 texts in a month because it's... No, yeah, you're 1,100 texts in a month. Mm-hmm. Look <laughs> at your face. You're like, no, I don't want to talk to... No. I don't want to talk to nobody that much. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Do you know the amount of tit pics there better be? I mean, for you to sit me, ping, ping, ping. <laughs> you, you to send coming me, out like a manufacturing you, machine, just like ping, ping, ping. If you were gonna send me twelve thousand text messages, eleven thousand better be some tit pics. Oh, I mean, a twelve thousand. How could it be possible? At any rate, this is what. <laughs> Donald J. Trump's investigator found. That's just the first report. What is the second report? The report reads, focusing on geolocation activity near 3300 Dogwood Drive, Hateville, which is the Yerti condominium. The, the gentleman says that he constructed a very conservative geofence, which isolated two cell towers. There was one cell tower, guys, 3,000 feet away from Fanny's home and another cell tower 2,000 feet. And the purpose of the cell towers, guys, is to kind of triangulate a location whereby you can detect if Nathan's cell phone has gone to Fanny's house or it has been extremely close. And so you've got the triangulation there. The report reads that the, 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 the assessment was set up so that the, the, there would be no hits if Nathan was traveling down I-75 or I-85. There would be no hits no pings if Nathan were to visit nearby attractions. There would be no hits if Nathan were to go to the airport. Shout out to Atlanta, Fulton County, Hartsville, Jackson Airport, the busiest airport in the world. He says, following the initial conservative sweep limited to two towers, he further constructed or further constrain those findings with hits on Alpha Sector, which pointed directly to Dogwood Drive community. So he's making it very clear, trying to eliminate any false positive. What does he say? He says this analysis using the above reference modality revealed a minimum of 35 occasions. 35 occasions when Mr. Wade's phone connected for an extended period of time to either one of the two of those towers in the closest proximity to Dogwood address. Guys, over 35 times. When Nathan was on the stand, what did he say? When Nathan was on the stand, he they asked him point blank. A.V. was exactly right. A.V. called A.V. was like, I bet they had that information when they cross examined them. Oh, yeah. He knew. Boots knew. Boots said, hey, boy. 
if how many times have you been over to to, to Fanny's residence? Oh, well, you know, I can't say, well, was it 10 times? Well, I don't know. It could have been 10 times. If could could have been more than 10 times. Nathan was like, no, no, not more than 10 times. Boots was like, okay. So if I have, oh, I don't know, cell phone records that show that you have been over in that area to that house, to that residence more than 10 times, then that, then that, that those records, those records would be false. Like, was like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, they'll be false. What do the records show? The records show that Nathan was over there over 35 times, guys. A minimum. Late night. (laughs) A minimum of 35 times. And not only that, guys, it's not only that he was over there, that his phone passed through. The key, the key that I want y'all to see is that it was for extended periods of time. So it's not like there was just a ping for two seconds. For example... September 11th through 12th. Specifically, Mr. Wade's phone left the Doraville area and arrived at the Dogwood address at 10.45 p.m. So Nathan's phone arrives at the address at 10.45 p.m. Why did his phone leave at 3.30 in the morning? You got there at 10.45, boy. And you left at 3.30 a.m.? What were you doing? Shout out to Judge Mathis. Looks like a crackhead move to me. <laughs> what are you doing over there? Y'all testified that he ne- you never spent the night over there. Your phone spent the night over there. How are you not there? This is what Donald Trump's investigator found. Furthermore... The report, the report goes on. Additionally, on November 29th, for example, Wade's phone was pinging the East Cobb Towers near his residence. So Nathan was at his own house. And then he got a call from Fanny at 1132 at night. Boy, your sneaky link hit you at 1132 at night. You know what it's about. And he stayed on the call. As he drove over and arrived just after midnight at the Dogwood address. Boy, that's how you know it's love. Every man in here has gotten the, the, the phone call at uh, 1130, 1145 at night. Hey, can you come over? What's, what do we do? What do we do? Guys, if you get a phone call from, you know, your little side piece and she calls you up and she says, can you come over? What do you do? You say, yeah, and then you hang up. (laughs) I'm coming over there. Why do I need to talk to you? Why do you need to be on the phone? And the interesting thing is Fanny and team are saying, oh, there's restaurants and places in those areas. What restaurants are open by the time he actually arrives in the area at 1245? He got to the area at 1245. But listen, guys, what does it mean when your, your girl call you, the little sneaky link call you? Pizza Hut call you, and you stay on the phone the whole drive over. That's love. I'm sorry. <laughs> you were loving it. You were loving it. You stayed on the phone, though. Hey, baby, I, I'm just getting out the car. I'm in the driveway. You were on the phone with her the whole time? Didn't get off. And we ain't going to talk about the fact that he got a wife. <laughs> still married. He's still married. But that's love. So the report shows, guys, that he arrived at the address at 1245 in the morning. When did he leave? 4.55 a.m. He stayed over there till 5 o'clock. 5 in the morning, crack of dawn and early yawning. Wiped the coal out my eye. Boy, you get to the damn place at 1245 in the morning. You stay till 5. What the hell were you doing there, boy? We We know what you were doing. We know. When you were doing the same shit that y'all were doing at these goddamn conferences, right? I've been to those conferences. I've been to those CLEs. 
They're like legal freak offs. They're legal freak offs. When we all go down to Jekyll Island on the coast, oh my God. Boy, don't, if you are, if you are a woman and you are married to an attorney, do not ever let your husband go down to Jekyll Island alone. It's Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde for real. I've been there, guys. Y'all are talking to the right one today. And so this is what Donald J. Trump, President Trump's uh, investigator found. And he filed this into the court. Now, let me show you. Fanny was like, fuck. This looks bad for us, Nathan. What are we going to do? Nathan was like, man... Should we just cone and tell him? Should we just tell him, like, why? Are we, what are we doing? Should we just go on and come clean? Fanny looked at him and said, you acting like a real bitch right now. <laughs> oh, you acting like a real bitch right now. <laughs> we are in a fight. Ain't nobody giving Never up. Never surrender. That's what she said. Never <laughs> surrender. She is a black woman. Never admit nothing. She is not going to admit a goddamn thing. <laughs> so she has responded, guys. Now, we are going to read this damn response. I have not read it, V. I don't, I don't know if AV is ready. We're nope, we're doing it raw, dog. We're, we're doing it raw, do dog. It raw dog, guys. Let me, uh, let me pull it up here. Say, so you acted like a real bitch right now, <laughs> <laughs> Shit. All right. So <laughs> let us take a look. Let us take a look. Bam. There Bam. Go. There it is. There it is. Now, again, you see all of the names. You see all of the co defendants. You see all of the co indictees. And this course. came out late last night. I also want to say that Boots put a correction in to their document, which was filed at 9 a.m. There was a correction put in. It's not really much that's changed, but he had put in a correction at 1.30 p.m. Mm -hmm. I just want to make sure I have that right timestamp. Yeah, 1.55 p.m. And then we have Fani's response late last night. I believe it was around like eight or nine. That's what we're about to read right now. We're about to check it out. All right. All right. Let us take it. Well, before we do that, before we do that, let me shout some people out, man. Shout out to A Magnificent says, Sub Lead, this is getting spicy. A hundred percent. Man, everybody, I don't ask y'all for nothing, but everybody write Joe in the damn chat. God damn. Oh my God. Shout out to Joe Ethereum. Man, just for that, just because. Are my likes? Oh, is all there? I was gonna open the gates, and I was gonna let all of y'all comment because my man Joe Ethereal has blessed the stream. It's eleven thousand people in here with two thousand likes, guys. Come on now, yes, the likes need to be in ratio in proportion to the to to the to the to the to the chat. At least get it to like forty percent, guys. This is like twenty percent. Come on now. But shout out to my man, Joe Ethereal. Somebody write Joe in the damn chat, man. No comment, no question, just the pure love of the game. <laughs> Guys, I always say the sponsor of the stream is the person who gives the biggest super chat. First of all, man, shout out to my, let me, let me pull this up. Let me just put the banner up right quick so y'all can, so y'all can see it. Joe has also to... gifted a few memberships too. He's generous today. Shout out to my man. He's trying Come to help me. the people that are locked out. <laughs> out, all right, shout out to Thane Mithra. Y'all see Thane right there. Thane blessed yesterday's stream with a rack. What did, what did Fanny say? Oh, someone give me a G, I give him a G. I was like, Fanny, you're, a, you're a, a district attorney. Why are you talking like you're standing outside the gas station in the street? With the gray, gro go gray goose and the cigarettes. Okay, with the goddamn black and mild. Somebody give me a G. <laughs> I'm like, get this girl off the goddamn stand. She thinks she's back in the goddamn hood. But shout out to my man, Thane, who blessed yesterday's stream with a G. Shout out to Fanny. And then the, the, the stream before that, that as well. So big, big shout out to Thane. Somebody write Thane in the goddamn chat. But today our man Joe is in there. Shout out to Joe Ethereal. Thank you so much, Joe. Big supporter 
of the lead. Shout out to my man, Joe Ethereum. So let us put him up in there as the stream sponsor. Now, I said I was going to get to some Super Chats, and I will. But when, when y'all bless me like this, I like to get right up into the right up into the um the content. So I'm gonna read some more super chats, but first let us see what Fanny is talking about. All right, and thank it. you again so much, Joe, and thank y'all uh, for shouting out our man Joe Ethereal. Uh, 10, 11,000 people in here, guys. He is the one that is sponsoring this stream. All right, let us take a look. Now, apparently, your boy uh, Nathan is dealing with a black woman. Shout out to Fanny independent and she is told nathan in no uncertain terms that she is not backing down thus and therefore they have filed this the state's objection to and motion to exclude the affidavit that was filed by president donald j trump let's take a look what does it say comes now the state of Georgia, notice that it doesn't say Fanny. Doesn't say Fanny Willis. This is how much power Fanny has, guys. Fanny, you know, I'll just tell y'all guys, she's the queen. There's a reason why she moves this way. There's a reason why she acts this way. So, so bold, so provocative. Tan, tan pinche prepotente. Because she knows she is the biggest district attorney in the biggest county in the entire state. She's number one. That's why she throws her weight around. So when she's getting called out, she doesn't even need to say, oh, well, now comes Fanny. No, fuck that. Now comes the state of Georgia. Now comes the state of Georgia. By and through Fulton County District Attorney Fanny Willis and both objects to and moves the court to exclude President Defendant Donald John Trump's proposed affidavit. Let's go down here. This is just boilerplate, sha la 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 la. All right, let's get it here. What are we talking about? Here's the first argument. For the reasons set forth below, Judge McAfee, this is the judge who was who was sitting there while Fannie was going crazy on the stand. Mm -hmm. Judge McAfee must exclude Donald Trump's inadmissible proposed affidavit from consideration, or at least at a minimum, it must consider, the judge must consider the state's rebuttal evidence. Oh, so there's some rebuttal evidence. Okay. And the state's rebuttal evidence demonstrates the unreliability of the unqualified opinion wow. evidence. All right. So they're, 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 they're off the rip. They're attacking that expert witness. That's exactly right. They are attacking two up. things. Just like uh, A.V. said, they're attacking the witness, the affiant. They're attacking uh, the, the, the investigator who's been doing this damn near 30 years. And they're also attacking cell hawk. They're saying cell hawk is unreliable. But everybody uses it. Everybody uses they it. They probably have used it in the prosecution's office. A hundred percent. They are attacking cell hawk and they're also attacking the investigator. So they're 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 unleashing both barrels. All right, let's take a look. What does it say? It says um defendant. President Donald Trump's proposed affidavit was improperly submitted in direct violation of Judge McAfee's own standing case management order for criminal cases, and it should not be considered. So what does this mean? It means that the courts, guys, judges have standing orders. What's a standing order? A standing order is an order that applies in all cases. And so a standing order would apply to any case that's filed into the court. And they're saying that Donald Trump's submission violates the order. Interesting. Let's take a look. While President slash defendant Donald Trump's affidavit cleverly avoids the use of the term expert. Wow. <laughs> wow. One word's not included in there. And yeah. it it's cleverly avoiding it. 
Interesting. It is clear that Defendant Trump's submission is an attempt to have the court improperly receive unqualified opinion evidence written as expert testimony. In quotations. The court's own standing management Kate, the court's own standing case management order for criminal case states as follows. Okay, guys, so here's the rule. Here's the law. Here's the rule right here. Experts. Now, notice it says experts. Any party <clears throat> seeking to rely on expert testimony at trial or any evidentiary hearing must provide written notice to the opposing party. This notice must include a meaningful summary of the expert's testimony, as well as his or her qualifications to serve as an expert witness. This notice must be provided at least 14 days before the final plea trial calendar call and seven days before any evidentiary hearing requiring expert testimony. Now, this is interesting, guys. They're saying, hey, hey, hey wait a minute, time out. They are trying, Donald Trump is trying to introduce expert testimony, which is fine, but you have to follow the rules. There are rules for submission. You have to put us on notice. You have to give us written uh, summary of what the person is going to say. You have to do all of this beforehand. In this instance, none of that was done. They just submitted the they just submitted the affidavit. Now let's take a look. Let's take a look at the affidavit. Is this an affidavit of an expert? Because let's take a look now and we are going to we I'm going to let you guys decide if this is an expert. Hold up. Let me let me let, let me show you what we got going on right here. This is the this is the affidavit, right? That talks about the 2000 phone calls and it talks about the the 12,000 text messages. Now let's read it. And you guys tell me if he's an, he's an expert. My name is Charles Middlestat. I am 59 years of age. I am a criminal defense investigator working with Donald Trump's attorneys. I requested the subpoena from AT&T and I got back all of the information. AT&T fully complied. I got the analytics back and ran the analytics through a tool called Cellhawk. Now, here we go. Listen up. Listen up. As a board-certified criminal defense investigator, having specialized in criminal cases for over 25 years, so I routinely bad. use Cellhawk to conduct analysis on records, both on initiated subpoenas and those received in discovery. My firm was granted a license and completed training in 2019. I pay an annual licensing fee. And, and the Sailhawk is the program I exclusively use to analyze such records. Since that time, my staff and I continuously attend webinars and remain up to date on training and the latest features available via Sailhawk Analytics. I have a strong working knowledge of its capabilities and limits, and I have extensive experience utilizing this program to analyze cell phone data. While I am not a cell phone tower engineer or expert, I have the equivalent experience of an expert and training of those individually routine, routinely tasked by law enforcement agencies or the district attorney's office. Uh-oh, wait a minute, guys. Does it put a yes if you think that sounds like an expert? Put a no if you think that doesn't sound like an expert. Wait, wait, wait a minute now, wait a minute. Because what, what is he saying? He says... While I am not. Hello. He says, while I am not a cell phone tower engineer or expert, I have the equivalent experience and training. He's trying those. to get in front of it. They got in front of it. That's why that paragraph or that sentence is worded that way. What do you guys think? Wait a minute. Now, Fanny might have a point. Fanny saying, if, if you are going to introduce an expert 
affidavit, you need to follow the rules. You need to give us a written summary. And you need to, to, to provide this days before with notice. You just filed this into the court. Yeah, it's a technicality. Like 14 days notice, you want to know two weeks before, right? And you also want a seven-day summary the week before, right? Um, and I'm looking at the timeline of how all of this has happened because th this was happening beforehand, right? The investigation was happening while Fannie was on the stand. You know, and this is mm. such a technicality. But to your point, look at the way that that sentence reads. It's yes. almost as if the attorneys on Trump's side knew, OK, we have to qualify him as an expert. Let's form this paragraph. We have to talk about his education, his experience and his training. But that that sentence at the end. <clears throat> so shout out to Mika. Mika's like, well, I'm sort of like an expert. Yeah, <laughs> that, that sentence at the end is like it's a little problematic. I will tell you something, guys. And again, I've been doing this for 20 years. I can't tell you how many times I've had to subpoena these types of records. If you get cell phone tower records from AT&T, there is no way in hell you are going to be able to interpret them. I am a 20-year I'm a 20-year attorney. I can't make heads or tails of it. No, there's 13,000 people in the chat. None of you can understand all the goddamn hieroglyphics when you get back that zip file. It's so many numbers and data and formulas. You don't know what the fuck is in there. You need to use a tool like Sailhawk to interpret it for you. Now, listen, listen to now what he says. He says he is. He routinely uses Sailhawk to conduct this analysis. How can you do this if you're not an expert? He says he has a firm that's dedicated to this, and his firm was granted a license and completed training in 2019. He pays an annual licensing fee to Sailhawk, and Sailhawk is the program that he exclusively uses to analyze the records. He says he, he and his staff continuously attend webinars and remain up to date on the training and the latest features available via Sailhawk Analytics. You sound like a Sailhawk expert, then. <laughs> you, oh. I'm trying to clean up my act. Oh. You sound like an expert. If I'm gonna, uh, if I'm gonna be honest. So hold up now, Fanny. Shout out to the black women. Fanny's like, fuck that. Stop being a bitch, Nathan. We Never surrender. <laughs> I mean, you sound like an expert, if I'm going to be honest. All right, but oh, wait, 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 wait now. Let's let's take a look. Let's take a look. Let's take a look. Let's take a look. Let me uh let's get back to the uh let's get back to Fanny's defense. Let me let me let me get back. Let's see what Fanny says because it sounded a little bit like Fanny might have a little something, might have a little taste, right? Let's take a look here. Let me pull it up. So Fanny's like, listen, Judge, if you and and again, this is called experts, and it's a thing, guys, where you know it'll walk like a duck, quack like a duck, but you'll say it's not a duck. It's not a duck. What is it? Oh, it's an animal. <laughs> <laughs> looks like a duck, walks like a duck, quacks like a duck, but it's an animal. Is that what they're doing here? Is that this guy's mm -hmm. talking about all of the trainings, all of the webinars, all of the licensing fees, but he's not an expert? They're saying that you must, they, that Donald Trump needed to provide written notice to Fannie. And the notice must include a meaningful summary of the expert's testimony, as well as his or her qualifications. Now, let's keep going. It says President Trump's proposed affidavit violates this mandate of the court in four ways. Number one, President slash defendant Donald Trump provided no written notice to the state. Number two, President slash defendant Donald J. Trump provided no summary of the purported expert's testimony. Number three, President defendant Donald Trump provided no information relating to the qualifications of the witness to serve as an expert witness, 
And number four, no notice was provided at least seven days before the evidentiary hearing that began on February 15th, 2024. So what are they saying? They're saying that Trump didn't give Fannie any notice. And and it was a surprise, guys, because A.V. pointed it out. Like, you could tell by the questioning, they already had the information. They just they didn't tell them. Yeah. Boots was like, well, wait a minute now. Oh, oh, what's your <laughs> name, boy? Uh, what's your name? Uh, Nathan. Little Nate Nate. Wait a minute, little Nate Nate. Are you telling me, boy, that if cell phone tower records show that you were there over 10 times at Fanny's house, those records would be wrong. And Judge Wade, Nathan Wade, was like, yeah, they'd be wrong. And Boots just looked at him. Because he knew he was lying. <laughs> he knew he was lying. I got you, boy. I got you. He went, he went right back to, he went right back to the uh, council's table and called Donald Trump. We got him. We got him. <laughs> But do you see how it was a setup? Do you see how it was a surprise? They never told Nathan. They never told Fanny that they had this, this in their pocket, right? They never gave it to him seven days before. Number so they didn't get rid of notice. There was no summary of the expert's testimony. So they needed to summarize it. They needed to say, hey, we got this information. And not only did we get it, here's a summary. It shows 2,000 telephone calls. It shows uh, 12,000 text messages. It shows that on September 11th, you were over here. It shows on November 29th, you were over there. There was no summary. They knew nothing. Interesting. It says that no information related to the qualifications. Now, Here's the thing. The guy did give some qualifications. He did. I was just he, thinking that. I was like, well, three, I might have a little bit of a problem with because it's right there in the document. Yeah. You know, he's been doing this for all, all these years and all the webinars and the trainings. And he, he has licenses and his him and his firm is dedicated to this. So th there were some qualifications listed, but the qualifications need to be listed in the notice. There was no notice. There was just a damn naked affidavit. Yeah. They're like, oh, it's in the affidavit, but you didn't tell us. We didn't know. We didn't have time to prepare. Exactly. And then number four, no notice was provided at least seven days prior to the, the evidentiary hearing. Now, guys, listen. Shout out to Donald Trump, but we're calling it fair over here. Put a yes if you think Fanny got a little something. Put it, if you think Fanny got a point, put yes. If you think she doesn't have a point at all, put no. Now, be fair. Not if, if, if President Trump should go to jail or not. I'm not asking you that. Put a yes if you think she has a point. Put a no if you think, no, 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 that, that, there's no point. There's some yeses. It's because... Uh, Fanny Willis told Nathan, stop being a bitch. <laughs> We Never are surrender. not going to roll over on this now. This is interesting. Let's keep it going. This is, guys, this is so interesting. This is like a full fucking legal soap opera, guys. It <laughs> is, because this was like she testified last Thursday was a crazy day, the backwards dress day. So on backwards dress day, that's when she should have received notice. Imagine yes. that. Imagine after backwards dress day, going back to your office, and then you you have this where it's just like, hey, you know, you were just on the stand. We caught you lying. Caught you lying. What is real gospel chop says? Fanny is saying, if they had given me notice that they had the evidence, I wouldn't have lied. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Straight oh. up. <laughs> Shout out to the real gospel chops, man. Y'all are killing it in the chat. This is... <laughs> Shout out to the real gospel chops. Somebody put chops in the damn chat, man. God damn, that's fucked up. Let me read a few more of these while we are at it. We're going to get back into it because it's looking like Fanny's working with something. Shout out to Kendo TV, a new member. Thank you so much. We got the Professional Nomad podcast in the house. And I'm going to read the ones that are 20 and over, guys, because we got 13,000 people in here. So we need to we need to move it along. But 
Uh, for the ones 20 and over, I'm going to read. Shout out to Conversations with Gambit. Thank you so much. Shout out to the notorious Kevin Brooks, man. Shout out to Kevin. <laughs> Kevin. We got the Young Black Economist, a new member. Thank you for becoming a new member. We got the Mikey Mikey Show always showing up and representing. Thank you so much. We got WDMA, a new member. Thank you. Shout out to SPC. Thank you over here. Shout out to John. We got John in the house. We got JoJo, a new member. Thank you so much, JoJo, for becoming a new member. We got Michael Merriweather up in the house. We got Joe Ethereal gifted 10 membership. Somebody write Joe in the damn chat. Somebody write Joe in the damn chat. And listen, guys, I don't know if y'all know. I don't know if you can hear it in my voice. Fanny Willis down here in Atlanta. Nathan Wade, Judge Wade down here in Atlanta. The lead attorney down here in Atlanta. Atlanta is located in Georgia. Georgia is located in the South. In the South, we have manners. If you were one of the lucky ones to receive one of the 10 gifted lead attorney memberships from Joe Ethereal, tell him thank you. Mind your manners. We are raised right down here in the South. Thank you so much, Joe, for gifting out 10 memberships. Shout out to Joe. God damn, boy. Everybody thank Joe, and especially the ones that got these goddamn memberships, because y'all can't, y'all can chat in the stream for because of Joe, right? So let me change the banner as well. Thank you so much. Joe is Joe is giving y'all a voice. Joe's like, listen, the likes are fucked up and lead on some bullshit. So y'all go on and comment in the chat. Thank you so much, Joe. Shout out to Michael Merriweather. Already read that. Michael, again, thank you. Shout out to Jeremy. Shout out to Jeremy Hakimi. <laughs> Hope I put some respect on your day, brother. Sit there at a student tie. That's how we love. Say love to see their text messages. And that's a thing. I mean, how many tit and dick pics were going back and forth? 12,000 text messages? There's a ton. It's Boy, I mean, ain't nothing like, you know, it's 5 30, 6 o'clock in the morning, you roll over and you, you click on that phone and you got about four or five tit pics from the night. You're like, oh my God, she blessed me. Oh, she blessed me. Now, Fanny's 52, 53. Is that the same blessing? I don't know. Fanny did bless this gentleman, though, with $650,000. I'll take time. that over. You can keep your 50 year old areolas. Give me the money. Right. <laughs> Shout out to Jeremy Hakimi. Thank you so much. And Jeremy is exactly right. Says, I would love to see those text messages 100%. Shout out to Eartha Weston. Got the Weston in the house. Shout out to Eartha. Uh, a new member. Thank you so much. We got Christy B, a new member as well. We got the red one. Not only is the red one a new member, but the red one gifted five lead attorney memberships. Look at that. Thank you so much, red one. And again, guys, if y'all got one of the red ones lead attorney memberships, tell them thank you. All right, y'all blessing me so much with all these memberships, and especially my man, Jeremy. We're going to get back into it. I know I got a lot more to read. We're going to get into it. Shout out to Scorp, uh, Scorp. All right, let's go, guys. Let's see. Now, y'all are pretty much in the consensus that Fanny might got a little something. She might, she might got a little something on this expert thing, but let's keep going. Fanny says, at the conclusion of the portion of the hearing held on February 16th, guys, this is just like what, last week? Yeah, Friday. Friday. Counsel for President slash defendant Donald J. Trump stated. So Donald Donald Trump's attorney stated this. We are in the process of, if the court will allow us, to obtain certain phone records. And we like the records kept open for the introduction of those phone records. Okay, that's a little confusing, but we would like the record kept open for the introduction of the phone records. We have them in draft informally. We do not have certification of them. And they would deal with, if you'll remember, I asked Mr. Wade about certain activity down in Hateville during uh. the time period. And it deals with that specific time period. We're talking about February or March of 2021 through November 1st. We would want to know, Judge, 
if what we believe is their if what we believe is there based on our preliminary research is there, we'd like to reopen and introduce records and someone explain what they need. I remember this. Mm. This was on Backwards Dress Day at the very, very end. Interesting. We watched that. Donald J. Trump's attorney also stated, as soon as we got a hearing date and the state's response to what happened, when the state responded February 9th and admitted to the relationship, but put parameters on the timing, I sent subpoenas out in response to that. The problem is Delta 8. Oh, shit. They trying to get the Delta records. <laughs> <laughs> The plane ticket. Ooh, Donald J. Trump's attorneys are not fucking around. They trying to get the Delta records. Did you fly first class on, on the state's dime? Says the problem is Delta, AT&T, and all these folks aren't super fast about all that. I know Delta. We're also waiting. I wanted to remind the court, waiting for those records to be submitted in camera. And AT&T actually emailed me these phone records yesterday morning on the way to court. So they had them. Interesting. So represent. So this is what Fanny says. Fanny is saying, listen, Judge, the representations made by Donald J. Trump and, and Defendant Roman make very clear to the court several relevant factors. Number one. Defense counsel issued subpoenas for the telephone records on or about February 9th. Number two, defense counsel had the subpoena telephone records in their possession at least as early as February 15th. Number three, defense counsel always intended to attempt to introduce both the telephone records and an expert witness to explain what they mean. Oh, because if you go up there, that's what uh, Donald Trump's attorney said. They said, in open court, we'd like to reopen and introduce the records and for someone to explain what they mean. Guys, let me tell you something. There is only one type of person that can explain what cell hawk data means. Do you know the name of this type of person? Somebody put the name of the type of person who can explain cell hawk analytics. What is the name of this person? Does anybody know? Can anybody guess? What is the name of the person, of the type of person that can explain cell? God damn, it is not even fair. Of course. Keita. Keita. Keita got it. Of the type of person is an expert. Only an expert can explain what cell hawk uh, analytics mean and mm -hmm. Keita G. It's not even fucking fair because she's a she's a a high powered attorney herself, so she already knew. So this don't count. I'm I'm, I'm gonna go to the next person. Shout out to Audie. Audie, Audie, the expert. <laughs> Audie got not it. Fair. An expert. So this is wait a minute. Now this is what uh, Fanny's saying. You're saying, uh, Donald Trump's attorneys, that you want someone to explain what they mean. Obviously, that's an expert. Yeah. And looking at a calendar, like if we peel it back to the dates that she's talking about, she's talking mm -hmm. about that they started the investigation. They started these requests for AT&T for Delta on February 9th. That's three Fridays ago. Mm -hmm. Right. And this statement that you just read was in open court last Thursday, not last Thursday, but you know, the, the Thursday prior to that on the 15th, right? Yesterday, we were wondering why the hearing wasn't happening. And it's probably because of all these shenanigans right here. It's super interesting, guys. So let's get back. So um, what does Fanny say? Fanny says, in spite of this, Donald Trump made no effort to comply with the court's own case management order. Donald Trump provided no written notice to the state in advance of the hearing. Donald J. Trump provided no summary of the testimony. Donald J. Trump provided no information related to the qualifications to serve as an expert witness. 
this court standing case order was specifically intended to prevent parties from ambushing opposing counsel with purported expert evidence without allowing opposing counsel a meaningful opportunity to review the evidence, review the purported expert's report and qualifications, and also obtain its own expert in rebuttal. What are they saying? Guys, if there's one thing in all of law, this is not just criminal law. This is not just family law. This is not just immigration law. This is not just tort law. This is not just admiralty law. In this country, if there is one concept that is fundamental on the federal level and the state level and the municipal level, on all levels in every single state in the nation, is that in in today's society, there is no such thing as a trial by surprise. There is no such thing as a trial by ambush. That used to be a thing 100 years ago, 150 years ago. You show up with all your information close to the vest. They show up with all their information close to the vest. You show up for a trial and it's a goddamn shit show. Because I don't know what you had and you don't know what I had. That is not a thing anymore. I have a right to know everything that you are going to introduce. And you have a right to know everything that I'm going to introduce. Fanny is saying that these fuckers ambushed us. They already had the information. They told the judge that they were going to get somebody to interpret the information. And now all of a sudden, there's an affidavit interpreting the information. But you didn't tell Fanny. You didn't tell the state. You didn't let them know who this guy was. You didn't let them know what the qualifications were. You didn't give them a summary of what this motherfucker was going to say. This is a goddamn ambush. Somebody write ambush in the chat. It is, I mean, I know you don't fuck Fanny. All right, fine. But this is an ambush, guys. You know when that affidavit got filed in the court, you know for a fact Fanny was like, what the fuck is this? Yeah, because we were thinking about the postponement. What happened? Like, we, you know, we went live Thursday night getting ready for Friday, right? Mm-hmm. And this document was filed from Trump's attorneys at 9 a.m., right? 100%. And then they didn't put a statement out all day because they needed to respond, and it came in late last night. This is interesting. Shout out to the Dove 96. It's an ambush, you guys. And we don't do trials by ambush in the United States. In Mexico or in France, you know, in the Congo. They don't even have trials in the Congo. <laughs> it's, fucking, it's rough down there. But in the United States, not in Georgia, not in California, not in Texas, not in New York, there is no trial by ambush anymore. Not in the modern times. So this is this is looking like it's looking a little, little something, but let's keep going. Looking like Fanny got a little taste of something right here. Um, what does she say? She says, the court. You, Judge McAfee, cannot allow President Defendant Donald J. Trump to bypass this protective procedure when, in other cases, you have excluded expert evidence for a party's failure to follow the, the, the standing order. All parties coming before this court must be treated equally. Hello, just because you represent Donald J. Trump doesn't mean that he should be treated fairly than this black woman down here who's fucking, well, I ain't even gonna go there. Shout out to Fanny. Fanny is saying you cannot treat Donald Trump differently just because he's the president. Fanny says, indeed, Judge, treating like cases alike promotes a system of equal treatment under the law rather than one built on arbitrary discretion. So that's the first argument that they did Was not- Was that a quote of the Federalist Papers from Alexandra Hamilton? Um, I do not know. The Federalist, Alexandra Hamilton, she went all the way back. <laughs> she went all the way back. All right, so guys, that's the first argument. Apparently, there are some arguments, and that was the first one. And I got to say, it's, it's something. 
I'm not ready to say that she's won on this one yet, but I will say the judge is going to be like, mm, mm, let me think about this. All right, but that's the first one. Let's see if the second argument holds any water. Let's see. Number two, president slash defendant Donald J. Trump's proposed affidavit violates OCGA 24-7-701 and the Supreme Court's rule. Oh, my no, God. They now we got to do Daubert. Yeah. They going straight to Daubert. And guys, Daubert is an extremely important case in the United States. And it deals with expert testimony. This is like the case that that that, that sets the precedent for, for expert testimony. It is what we call the seminal case. It is the bedrock. It is the foundation. It is the number one principal case in the, in the nation regarding expert testimony or the, the admission of expert testimony. And Fanny is saying Donald J. Trump just violated. Yeah. He just violated Dauber. It's interesting, too, because it came up when we were covering Depp v. Heard. Mm -hmm. There was a huge, I think we spent almost a half a day watching the testimony on the arguments for, for that. And that case was bought up. Dalbert is bought up in every single case where there's contested ex expert testimony. Every single one. It is the seminal case. Let's see what Fannie's saying. Fannie says, effective July 1st, 2022... The Georgia General Assembly uh, revised the evidence rules regarding expert opinions. And uh, sha -la, la 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 Okay, here we go. The provisions shall apply in all proceedings. sha -la, la la Okay, here we go. President slash defendant Donald J. Trump now seeks to submit the, the, the affidavit, which contains, among other things, an affidavit of witness Charles Middlestadt that consists of opinions based on scientific, technical, and other specialized knowledge within the scope of OCGA 24-7-702. Now, the, the, is, this is this correct? Guys, I read you the affidavit of Charles Middlestadt for, for a purpose. So you guys could analyze this together. We can all do it together. Somebody put a yes if this is true. Put a yes if the affidavit is based on scientific, technical, or other specialized knowledge. Put a yes if that's true. Put a no if it's not true. Was his opinion on the number of text messages, the number of phone calls, and the location of Wade's phone, what were those opinions based on scientific Technical or other specialized knowledge. I guarantee you, if you got that report from AT&T, there would be no way for you to understand it. Zero. Not even 1%, not a half percent. You could not interpret that data because it is so technical. You can't, you look at it, you don't know what it is. It's just numbers. So... Fanny, it looks like what Fanny's saying, you know, she, she's right on this one. Says this type of opinion testimony is specifically prohibited if a witness has not been qualified as an expert. No applicable exceptions exist under Georgia law. Prior to providing expert testimony, the court must make each of the following findings. Now, this is very important, guys. Here's, here's, what, here's what she's saying, and this is extremely important. There's two types of testimony. I'm telling y'all are going to be my law students today. Two types of testimony. There's lay testimony from laymen's regular people, and then there's expert testimony. A lay type of testimony, a lay person like you, you guys can testify to a lot of things, but you cannot testify to everything. You are only allowed to testify to certain things. What things can you testify about? You can testify, oh, I saw the car cross the intersection at the, at the, at the accident and the car was red. You can testify to, oh, I walked outside on the day of the murder, murder and it was raining. You can testify to that. But 
can you testify to the specific type of drug that was ingested supposedly by a person if you're not a pharmacist? Can you testify specifically to the drug? You can say it looked like cocaine, but can you say it's cocaine if you never t- if you never tested it? You are not allowed to testify to 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 to, to medical information. You can't say that a person was having, uh, let's say, a brain aneurysm. You can testify that the person grabbed their head. You can testify that the person said that that they were that they had a, a a a lot of pain in their skull. You can testify that you saw that the person fell down to the ground and was rolling around, but you cannot say that the person was suffering a brain aneurysm if you're not a doctor, because a brain aneurysm is something specific, it's something technical, it's something scientific. Only an expert can testify to these specialized things. I can testify to things that you cannot testify to. You cannot testify to legal theories, but I can because I've been trained on what legal theories are and how to interpret laws, right? So this is the difference. And what they're saying is, hey, man, he's not calling himself an expert. Well, fine. If he's not an expert, fine. Fuck him. He's a lay person. If he's a lay person, why is he giving opinions about technical information? If he is a lay person, why is he giving opinions about cell hawk analytics? He's a lay person. That's why that sentence that we were looking at at the beginning is such a problem where it said, while I am not an expert in this and that or not well versed in this and that, I don't remember the exact words, but that ending sentence of that paragraph can be a problem now because of what he is saying. Exactly, exactly right. Now, y'all doing pretty good on my likes. Y'all really owe me a thousand more likes, if I'm going to be honest. But but I'm let me open up that let me open up the um. The comments because I really want to see what, what what y'all say about this. I'm gonna, let me let me open them up for a second. I might close them down. Y'all get my likes fucked up, but um, I want to know what y'all do. Y'all, first of all, do y'all understand? Put a yes in the chat if you understand the distinction between a lay person's testimony and an expert testimony. Because I know it's, I, and that's why I got to break this down. Because I know it can be a little bit confusing. But I want y'all to, I want y'all to get what Fanny's saying. Fanny is saying, if this guy is not an expert, fine, fuck him. Why the fuck is he talking about cell hawk analytics? He shouldn't be allowed to give such an affidavit because that affidavit inherently involves opinion that are based on scientific, technical, or other specialized knowledge. All right? So y'all are saying, y'all are like, yeah, yeah, you got it. Okay, okay, let's keep going. Let's keep going. This is what Fanny's talking about. Fanny's saying, now, if he's going to be, if he is going to provide expert testimony, then the court beforehand, before he can provide expert testimony, the court must make each of the following findings. Number one, that the expert's technical, scientific, or specialized knowledge will help the judge understand the evidence. Number two, that the testimony is based on sufficient facts or data. Number three, that the testimony is the product of reliable principles and methods. And number four, that the expert has reliably applied the principles and methods of the facts of the case. It goes on. It says, Fanny says, the party advancing the expert testimony. So Donald J. Trump has the burden of establishing the the affidavit's admissibility. Fanny says, here in this case, Judge, none of the required findings have been made by this court, and no timely, competent evidence that complies with the court's standing order exists that would establish even one of the factors. Indeed, Donald J. Trump has provided no competent evidence whatsoever that would establish that Middlestat is in fact an expert in anything, goddammit. The court, I mean, are you an expert or are you not? The, they're, the, the, uh, Vanny is saying that this judge has not found that he's an expert in a goddamn thing. And if he's not an expert in anything, why in the hell is he talking about cell hawk analytics? Yeah, that's shots fired, that last part where it says an expert in 
anything. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> Says moreover, the cell phone records at issue. And let me hold up now. Let me um. All right. Moreover, the cell phone records at issue themselves, which form the basis of Middle Stats purported purported expert testimony, are not properly in evidence. Now, this is you know. They're not in evidence. No one has submitted them. Uh, what do they say? No one has authenticated the telephone records at issue, and the certificate of authenticity uh, is insufficient. OCGA 24-9-902 states that a party intending to offer business records into evidence under the code shall make both the record and the declaration available for inspection sufficiently in advance of their offer into evidence to provide an adverse an adverse party with a fair opportunity to challenge such record and declaration what are they saying they're saying listen the law in georgia states that if you want to int- if first of all if you want to introduce something into evidence There needs to be a foundation, and we need to know that what we're looking at is what we're looking at. It needs to be authenticated. We need to be looking at the real thing. So before we even introduce, before we decide what this means, we need to know if it's authentic or not. Is it genuine? Is it the real thing? Fanny is saying that the whole affidavit about the cell phone records is based on information that was obtained from AT&T, but who made sure that the AT&T records were genuine? Who authenticated the AT&T records? What if they're making up the records and then basing their opinion on the made up records? The law says that before you introduce these things as evidence, you have to give Fannie an opportunity to look at the AT&T records. So Fannie can decide whether she wants to object to them or not. Fannie can decide if these look like real authentic records. If you don't give Fannie the opportunity to look at the records, how are you going to introduce this opinion based on the records? What if the records were falsified? Yeah. Now we all know. Like nobody is blindsided. Exactly. Now, now we all know Donald Trump. Is he the type of person that would falsify record? Like, no, you know, it's a technicality. We know Donald Trump. He's not going to falsify nothing. But Fanny still has the opportunity to look at it. Right? So here's the thing, you know, is is what Fanny's saying, is is, is, is it true? Is does, does, does she have a point? Guys, let's keep it going. Let's keep it going. Um, so, Fanny saying that they did not get an opportunity to to inspect to inspect the records. Fanny also says contemporaneously providing the certificate of authenticity and telephone records to the state. After the close of evidence (laughs) is not sufficiently advanced notice to provide the state with a fair opportunity to challenge the records and declaration. Like you're giving us now. Here's the thing. When AT&T sends business records, they also send a certificate of authenticity. But, you know. That certificate could be uh, forged. That certificate could be uh, 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 plagiarized or could be damaged in some way or could be made up. So you can't just say, well, AT&T gave you a, a certificate, so there you go, because the certificate itself could be manipulated. That's so true. you have to give the records and the certificate to Fanny beforehand so she can inspect all this and make sure everything is only up and up. And Fanny's saying, you guys just didn't do that, man. Y'all did not give us sufficient time to look at this shit. Uh, were you going to say something, A.V.? Nope. Okay. So let's keep it going. Uh, <clears throat> Fanny says, Fanny quotes a case and says, uh, fail, excuse me, failure to comply 
with the notice requirement excusable only because the business records themselves were provided in discovery well in advance of trial. So they're citing cases to let the judge know, man, hey, there's really no excuse for them trying to ambush us. Uh, Fannie Willis says, Judge McAfee, you should not, you should not exclude president slash defendant Donald J. Trump's failure to comply with the law when it is clear from the record that President Trump subpoenaed the records as early as February 9th and had both the records and declaration in his possession by February 15th. And yet, rather than providing notice to the state at that time, he never provided notice. And instead, President Donald J. Trump is now attempting to ambush me with these unauthenticated records only five business days in ahead in advance of the scheduled closing arguments. Only five business days. What does the law give her? The law gives her... Seven and 14. So seven days, seven days for the summary and 14 days official notice. Yes. So now here it doesn't say that. business days now. So, but yeah, interesting. So Fanny's like, they're, they already had the records, but they're just not, they're not, they're not giving it to us. They're trying to ambush us. Um, and why are they trying to ambush us? Why did they give us the documents so late? They gave us the documents so late to deprive us of an opportunity for a rebuttal. They don't want us to, they don't, they don't want to give us a chance to defend ourselves. They want to make the hit and then boom, without giving us an opportunity to be heard. It's a violation of our due process rights. Let's keep going. So that's okay. So that's the second argument. The second argument, the first argument was, you know, the lack of notice and all this and all that. The mm -hmm. second argument was like, hey man, is this dude an expert or not? Because y'all are saying that he's not an expert. If he's not an expert, fine, fuck him. Then why are we listening to his inf to his opinions based on this specialized and technical information, right? And then on top of that, you know, we have an opportunity to be heard. This stuff needs to be authenticated. The 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 opinions are based on unauthenticated evidence. So why would the court consider the opinions? The, all of these AT&T records could be made up. The guy in court himself, uh, Boots himself, said AT&T is slow and Delta is slow in getting these records back. What if they just said fuck it and made up the records themselves? How would we know if no one has seen them, Judge? You got to give us. You got to give us a chance. You got to give us fair play. You got to give us time to look at these records. So that's what she's saying. Who thinks? Put a yes if you think that that's a persuasive argument. Put I can't no. wait to see the third one. Yeah, put a no if you're like, no, that's not persuasive. Fuck Fanny. <laughs> but I'll just say, man, I did not expect this. I'll be honest. I didn't, I didn't know Fanny was going to come with this fire. Fanny told Nathan Wade to stop acting like a bitch, and they are going to fight this all the way down. So it's interesting. Let's keep it going. Let's keep it going. The third, the third argument. If the court determines that president slash defendant Donald J. Trump's affidavit. Um, <clears throat> oh, I missed it. Affidavit. Wait, what? Okay, if the, tort de if the court determines that Donald J. Trump's affidavit is in inadmissible, let me just read it. If the court determines that Donald Trump's inadmissible, untimely proposed affidavit can be considered, the court must also consider the state's rebuttal evidence. Okay. So now they're making another argument. They're saying, listen, judge, if for, if for whatever reason you want to listen to this affidavit that's been uh, tendered about the cell hawk information, if you want to consider it, okay. But you got to consider our stuff too. You got to consider our, our evidence. All right. So Notwithstanding, Fanny says, notwithstanding the inadmissibility, the inadmissibility of President Donald Trump's affidavit, pursuant to this court's own evidentiary ruling against the state at the hearing, 
the phone records at issue are inadmissible. When the state attempted to impeach the testimony of defense witness Terrence Bradley concerning the circumstances around his departure from the law firm, the court ruled that the state could not introduce extrinsic evidence contradictory to Bradley's testimony for the purpose of impeachment. The judge said, under Rule 608, I don't see how this isn't well beyond the core facts at issue. I think you confronted him. You can. I think you confronted with him. I think he answered them as he saw fit. An argument can be made as a result. But to go down a whole mini trial on whether he did or did not do this and the circumstances of his leaving the firm, I don't think I don't see how that gets past Rule 608. Here, President slash defendant Donald J. Trump attempts to do the exact same thing, introduce extrinsic evidence purportedly contradictory to Nathan Wade's testimony for the purpose of impeachment. If the court didn't allow the state to impeach with extrinsic as of evidence, it cannot allow Donald Trump's attempts to do the same thing. The all parties coming before this court must be treated equally. So what is she saying? She's saying, listen, judge, the black dude, uh, Terrence Bradley, he was up on the stand and he was lying. What was he lying about? He was lying about the reasons that he left the firm. So I, or we as the state, we wanted to introduce evidence to show why he left the firm. Do you remember? He They wanted to put up all of the, the women who had been sexually assaulted. They did. They, they had them put, like in the first row. Yeah. They wanted to put up evidence to show why he left the firm, but they wanted to show that he's lying. So it, that's called impeachment. When I show that you're lying, I am impeaching you. So Fanny's crew wanted to put in evidence to show that Terrence was lying. What did the judge say? The judge said, listen, man, you know, y'all now we're arguing, we're going to have a whole thing about whether Terrence is lying or not about this, this, this issue. We're not going to go down that road. I'm not going to allow you to introduce evidence to show that Terrence is lying. Fanny says, fine. Well, what's going on right here, judge? What's going on right here is that Donald J. Trump is trying to introduce an affidavit to show that Nathan is lying. Yeah, because it's like, hey, judge, you said no to that. So why would you allow this to happen? But it's mm -hmm. also, you know, looking at how this is constructed, this is her third her third piece of the argument. So the first thing is the technicality, the notice. The second thing is, is this authenticated? Is this is this person an expert? And now we get into, hey, if you're going to allow that to happen, you didn't allow us to question these women or, you know, bring these witnesses on the stand. So if you allow this, it's almost like a, you know, if this is how the argument is ending, it's almost like a, like a gut punch, like a threat. It's just like, hey, these are my arguments, but Was if you're gonna punch with your elbow, I know it's like a I don't know. That's just that's just what came out. That's just what came out. It was like a threat, you know. <laughs> like I'm like, okay, we're going with the technicality, but it's almost like Fanny's at the end, like okay, and here's the final blow. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, no, you're exactly right. Now I will say, guys, I thought the first argument was, you know, it had some merit, and I thought the second argument it had some merit. This argument, I'm not really feeling so much because it's really like Nathan leaving the law firm because he's sexually abusing clients, uh, supposedly, and, and employees. That's really far away from what we're talking about. It's really far away. But, you know, whether you, Nathan, are sleeping with Fanny and when you are sleeping with Fanny, that's actually pretty important to you being tapped as a special prosecutor. So it's true, Fanny, that you tried to get in extrinsic evidence for the whole sexual assault thing. And now they're trying to get in extrinsic evidence 
for uh, the, the cell phone tower data. But one issue was very far away from the core issue. And this, this issue actually is pretty close. This issue is actually pretty close. Now, I will say, as an attorney in these types of arguments, if you've got 10 arguments and only three are strong, you still try to make about seven or eight. <laughs> you still, you, you want to make it what we call cumulative. Now, you don't want to put the dumbest arguments in, but you want to beef it up. Not every argument can be a knockout. So I'm going to say this one, and I'm not really feeling this argument, if I'm going to be honest. Because when you and Fanny were sleeping, as juxtaposed to the date that you were, you were um, tapped to be the special prosecutor, that's actually pretty important. And if they're lying about that, you know, we need to know about that. No, here's, the, here's the thing. Does anybody really need to know if Terrence was lying about sleeping with the, with the, with the client? Is that relevant at all? I mean, that's a good question. No, the answer is no. No one cares if this black dude is sleeping with a client or not. It doesn't matter. But if Fanny and Nathan are sleeping together while this whole thing is going on and there's money being exchanged, I kind of do want to know because there's the appearance of impropriety, guys. There's the appearance. Not only do you need to avoid impropriety, you need to avoid the, imp the appearance of impropriety. So mm, I'm not feeling Fanny on this one. I'm not, I'm not really feeling it. But we'll those see. ethics complaints are still in play, right? And mm -hmm. as we're reading this, like it's also important to know, like we're reading it. It just came out last night. It doesn't mean that any that the judge has made a decision yet. That's something we're going to see next week, mm -hmm. right? Um, but it is interesting because I'm, I'm watching how this argument is being crafted. And as we keep going down to this document, I want to see if there's a fourth a fourth section or if it just ends there. Yeah, let's take a look. I, we, I really don't know how many arguments there are, but let's keep going. Let's keep going because we're not done with this one yet. Big shout out to uh, Lawal Muhammad. Thank you so much, Lawal. Sends me $5 on the Cash App. Says, thank you for your insight and knowledge. Uh, thank you for that. Also, shout out to Sam. Sends me $5 on Cash App. Says, uh Thought we hit checkmate on Fanny. All right. All right. So thank you so much, guys. So y'all are blessing me. All right. Let's keep it going because we're not done with this argument, but I just I did want to chime in. Oh, and I just I'm going to read these super chats as well. But shout out to Cat. Cat has um, <laughs> gifted five, sub, uh, five, five subs. I'm on Twitch. Five members, guys. If you received a membership from the beautiful Cat, please, please, please tell her thank you. She didn't have to do it. And she's blessing you. So if you got one of the five special cat memberships, shout out to the smooth cat. All right. Please tell her thank you. Thank you so much, cat. Really appreciate it. All right. Let's keep it going. Mm. So there's so uh, Fanny's saying that you need to treat me and Donald Trump the same. If we can't get if in if we can't show that that Terrence is lying then they shouldn't be allowed to show that Nathan's lying. All right, so that's their argument. Fanny goes on. But even if, in spite of all of these evidentiary deficiencies, the court determines that it can still dis, uh, consider President Donald J. Trump's uh, affidavit, the phone records simply do not prove anything relevant. Avi, do you want to pick it up from here? Yeah. Uh, the records do nothing more than demonstrate that spe the special, pro pro special prosecutor Wade's telephone was located somewhere within a densely populated multi multiple mile radius where various residences, restaurants, bars, and nightclubs and other businesses are located. This next part is bolded and underlined, guys. It says <laughs> the records do not prove in any way, the content of the communications between Special Prosecutor Wade and District Attorney Willis, 
They do not prove that the special prosecutor was ever at any particular location or address. They do not prove that the special prosecutor Wade and District Attorney Willis were ever in the same place during any of the times listed in Supplemental, supplemental Exhibit 38. And in fact, on multiple relevant dates and times, evidence clearly demonstrates that District Attorney Willis was elsewhere. That's interesting. Including at work at the Fulton County District Attorney's Office. And this is now in caps, ladies <laughs> and gentlemen. And visiting the three crime scenes where a mass murder motivated by race and gender bias has taken place. <laughs> Wow. I'm dead. Wow. I knew the strong arm was coming. Oh my God. I felt it. I felt it coming. Hell no. I mean, she just, you want to talk about muddy in the waters. Everything in the kitchen sink. But I can't believe she said, and in fact, on multiple relevant dates and times, the evidence demonstrates that I, Fannie Willis, was elsewhere, including working at the Fulton County District Attorney's Office and visiting three crime scenes this where yelling. a mass this is murder. Yelling. This is yelling murder. <laughs> a mass murder motivated by race and gender. <laughs> had taken place, man, Fanny getting messy as hell. So <laughs> now what she's doing is she is attacking the cell hawk analytics directly. This is not a collateral attack. This is not a peripheral attack. This is not a side attack. She is attacking the evidence directly. She's saying that the cell hawk information doesn't show what y'all think it shows. It, it's only showing ranges. It's not showing that Nathan's phone was sitting on my nightstand charged in at 2.38 in the morning. It's not showing the nightstand. And I wasn't there. I was, I was at I a was, crime scene. I was at a grave site <laughs> <laughs> of a mass murderer. <laughs> guys, so what do y'all think is this? Is she muttering the waters, muddying the waters? And then, guys, this is not really good legal writing, but this is how you know. Any legal writing uh, professor would give her an F for this shit. Yes. But you want to do it. Judges hate when you do this, but you just feel so impassioned. If there's one thing that you want the judge to know, you underlined it and the bold. But then when she went all caps, I'm like, come on. But she it was really, like she was on the stand again. <laughs> yeah, she was screaming was all caps. <laughs> that was cute. <laughs> So let's listen. What is she saying? She's saying the records, even if the expert opinions and the unauthenticated records and expert versus non-expert, fuck all that. The What does she say? She says the records do not prove in any way the content of the communications between Wade and Willis. So first of all, she's saying, listen, you don't know what we were talking about just because his phone pinged in a location doesn't show you what we're saying. So that's number one. So all, the, you know, y'all are thinking that we're sexting where we're just talking about cases. All right. So the cell phones don't show the contents. That's the first thing. Number two, they, they, <coughs> excuse me, the information, the, the cell hawk analytics don't prove that Wade was ever at any particular location or address. Guys, it's not an app. It's not a, it's not an air tag. All right. The triangulation is only going to get you what? 2000 feet, 3000 feet. It's not like a specific, you were in Fanny's back room. You were in the kitchen. It's not that specific. So she's saying, you know, before y'all get all hyped up about the cell hawk, it's really not showing what y'all think it's showing. It doesn't prove any particular location or address. Number three, the cell hawk analytics do not prove that Wade and Willis were ever in the same place during any of the times listed. Because what, what is he saying? What is this? The cell hawk says that on November 29th, Nathan's phone purportedly was in Fanny's, uh, let's say Fanny's residence. What doesn't it show? It doesn't show if Fanny was at the residence. Oh, <laughs> Maybe he had a key and it shows that he 
still was there. Just went over there to sleep over by himself. Yeah. Right. There's no evidence to show that Fanny was there. It's not like you got two phones and you can you can you can mesh the two phones locations. You only got one phone. If you had two phones, if you had two cell hawks, then you could say, yes, the phones were there in the same location at the same time. Yes, Fanny was there and Nathan was there. Nathan was there and Fanny was there. But all you can say, guys, is that Nathan was there. Is anybody oh, believing this? Put a yes if you believe this. Wow. <laughs> it's only showing that Nathan was there. It's not showing that Fanny was there. Put a yes if you think it's believable. Put a no if you're like, all right, come on, Fanny, man. <laughs> uh, you know? I mean, technically, she's right. Technically, she's right, but it's like, come on. And what she appears to be saying, guys, is that on a loca on a time when Nathan supposedly was over near Fanny, Fanny was visiting three crime scenes where a mass murder motivated by race and gender had taken place. Now, why she needed to throw the race in there? Why she needed to throw the 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 that's the, a lot of extra there's extra in there extraness, you know. So you know, I don't know. Technically, she's right. Technically, I will say this: technically, everything she said here was right. Number one, um, <laughs> the records don't show anything that was said. So you don't have any re phone call recordings. We don't have the text messages. You don't have the text messages. You don't have the tip pics. You don't got the dick pics. So the judge, the judge, you need to understand that. No content was exposed. So that's true. Number two, they don't prove that Wade was ever in a particular location. Again, this is true because it's not an air tag. It's a cell phone ping. And a cell phone ping means that the phone was near the cell phone. It doesn't mean that the cell phone was in the kitchen at the Dogwood Avenue address. So it's a ping. So that's true. What Fanny's saying is true. Number three, uh, the, <coughs> the, the, the analytics don't show that Wade and Willis were ever in the same place um during any of the times and that's true because they had nathan's phone but they didn't have fanny's phone so you got to give it up to attorneys man i mean everything she's saying is the truth now is it persuasive is it persuasive you know but it's true it's true right so let's keep going um, so that's the third argument. Now, again, that argument, I'm not really feeling that third. Murder the third. motivated by race, and it's just like dang. <laughs> yeah, that was fucked up. All right, so let's uh man, y'all are tearing up this chat. Let me uh let me close it off. And y'all been y'all been blessing me so much with the memberships, man. Let me let me bless the members a little bit. Let me uh slow the chat down. Let, let's see what the members have to say. Shout out to all the members, thank y'all so much for joining the jurors. Y'all are in the jury box. We got a lot of jurors in the jury box. All right, let's keep it going. Number four. Actually, all right, so, so let y'all, well, let's keep it going. Let's keep going. Number four. De uh, defendant slash president Donald J. Trump's purported affidavit, which clearly is inadmissible and it has very little evidentiary value was not filed in good faith and is simply an attempt to garner media attention. All right. And uh, let me pull this up. Shout out to uh, shout out to Mikey. Mikey's like, man, I'm going I'm to I'm bless y'all. I'm going to let one of y'all speak. <laughs> <laughs> shout out to Mikey. Thank you so much, uh, Mikey Scott. And before we look at the um, before we look at the uh, at the fourth argument, let me do this now. Let me shout out. Let me shout out some some people here. Shout out to a new member. We got self preservation. Thank you so much, self preservation. Thank you. And again, I'm gonna read the ones twenty and up. Shout out to Duncan. We got Duncan Ido in the house. Shout out to Andre. Shout out to Andre Malcolm Studio. Thank you so much. What does Andre say? 
time to wash my sack a cheeks she want to the meat and buns <laughs> oh, wow this is the problem when you say you're going to read once 20 and yeah. up. You read shit like this. But I, it's 20 and up, so I read it. Shout out to Andre. Andre said, time to wash my sack of sheets she wants to the meat and buns. All right, this is really how I start reading like a, at one in the morning, right? <laughs> Shout out to Andre. Shout out to Mr. KG, gifted one sub. If y'all receive Mr. KG sub, please tell him thank you. Shout out to JB, a new member. Thank you. Moreno tranquilo, mira no más. El Moreno Tranquilo aquí. Muchas gracias. Si recibiste uh, la, el regalo de membresía del señor Moreno Tranquilo, por favor, dile gracias. <laughs> dile gracias, cabrón. Ok. Él fue muy amable contigo. Dile gracias. Thank you so much, Moreno, <laughs> Moreno uh, Tranquilo. We got Bethel Boy in the house. We got Linea Wolf. Shout out to Linea Wolf in the house, the beautiful Linea Wolf, a new member. We got Bethel Boy Entertainment as well. Shout out to Bethel Boy Entertainment. We got Miss Audi in the house. Says, not a member yet, but decided <laughs> to drop a little at the door to say, hey, guys, uh, hit the like button, please. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Shout out to Miss Audi. Shout out to a Rational. Rational CFBF. In the house, thank you. Thank is that a you. Georgia, is that a Georgia helmet? Oh, Grace, Grace. Go dogs. <laughs> Shout out to <laughs> AV with the great eye. Go dogs, guys. Do y'all know where the lead attorney went to law school? Let me tell you guys something. I'm a goddamn double dog. <laughs> All right, the University of Georgia for undergrad, the University of Georgia for law. Do you know where this judge went? Do you know where the judge? The judge is a dog. We had the same evidence teacher. I said it's the same evidence person. Now he is, he's about six or seven years older than me. So we weren't there at the same time. Uh, your girl, um, Fanny, she went to Emory. Very prestigious, prestigious uh, law school here in, 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 in Georgia. Now, Nathan. Mm. <laughs> We're not going to talk about where Nathan went to school. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Shout out to Daryl. We got Daryl Triplett in the house. Thank you so much for being a member. Thank you, Daryl. We got Incognito. Thank you so much. We got Gen X Boomer. Thank you so much. We got J-F-T-H-F-C-T-S in the house. <laughs> Thank you for becoming a member as well. We got the beautiful Lala. Lala is a member. Thank you. We got the intellectual property in the house. I appreciate it. Look who we got. We got our man, Beautiful Lies. Beautiful Lies. What is my man, Beautiful Lies, saying? Y'all go check out Beautiful Lies. Y'all go check him out, El Guapo. If one of the mods could drop a link to my man's channel in the chat. What does he say? He says, I am a cell tower expert. My man knows. I was a, a telecommunications engineer for 11 years. My ears started ringing when you said the word azimuth yesterday. I don't know what the hell that is. I am not an expert. So <laughs> I, you know what that is. I don't. You the expert. So thank you so much, beautiful lies. If one of the mods could please drop my man's uh, link in the chat. And hopefully he is feeling better. I think he put out on his community tab that he was feeling under the weather. I myself am feeling under the weather. So health is wealth, guys. So everybody wish beautiful lies a speedy recovery. Shout out to my man, Beautiful Lies. Thank you so much. Uh, shout out to that dog in him. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much. The Beautiful Lala gifted a membership and we're in the South. Please show Lala your appreciation if you were the lucky one to receive the membership. Shout out to Brett. Thank you so much, Brett Johnson, a new member as well. Y'all are showing up and showing out. We got Chopo Matic in the house. Thank you. We got the real gospel chops up in here, too. Thank you so much. We got a $20 one, so we're going to read it all. Shout out to the beautiful Keita J. Keita G, an attorney as well. Excellent, an attorney uh, killing the game. She is from the North. What does Keita say? Just because he said he's not an expert doesn't mean he's not one, okay? All uh, right. Unfortunately, the tea has been spilled. The salaciousness <laughs> of it all. You, that is exactly right. Somebody write Keita G in the damn chat. Thank you so much, Keita. I got some more super chats to get into, but we're going to get right back to the meat and potatoes. 
All right, let's look at the fourth argument. What is the fourth argument? Hopefully there's not yelling in this paragraph. Exactly. <laughs> uh, Fanny says that Donald J. Trump's affidavit is clearly inadmissible and offers very little value. And furthermore, it was not filed in good faith and simply another attempt at what Keita G calls the salaciousness <laughs> of it all. Fanny says this was just to garner media attention. A.V., do you want to take this one? Yeah. It says the state submits that Donald defendant Trump's proposed supplemental Exhibit 38 was not filed in good faith, but instead is nothing more than another attempt to garner salacious headlines. <laughs> you call that. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> in the media, see Exhibit D, the New York Post article. Some of these headlines, including the attached, were patently false and many others were misleading. Roughly simultaneous with the filing, counsel for defendant Trump immediately provided redacted, unredacted cell phone records, Ooh. which contained personal identifying information belonging to the special prosecutor Wade and district attorney Willis wow. to members of the media. So I don't know if it was a phone number, maybe it was the address we saw. Wait, wait, wait. This says Exhibit E. Well, shit, let's just take a look. Let's just take a look. What she's saying, I guess, is that... Um, They're in pro- oh, oh, yeah, we just saw an ATT document. Hold on, that's Exhibit C. Let's okay. take a look at Exhibit E. Mm. You know you're a woman if your uh, signature block looks like this. It's like, Jesus <laughs> Christ, man. Oh, damn. <laughs> oh, look at that signature block. Of course her name is Sammy. <laughs> Fanny with that goddamn signature block. Come on, man. That's some bullshit. (laughs) Jesus Christ, Fanny. Okay. Um, (laughs) Let's see here. Let's let me find the exhibit. What is exhibit E? E. Yeah, we're looking for the personal information that was shared. Okay, so this is exhibit E. So Fanny's saying that um, they doxed her. Oh well, this is a this is an email from Boots. Oh, here it goes. Listen, um, what is what does Boots say? Boots said, I inadvertently sent the unredacted cell phone records to Bill Rankin this morning. Oof. When I realized the effort, I immediately contacted him and told him explicitly not to disclose them to anyone else and not to publish the cell phone numbers or any other protected information. Mr. Rankin indicated that he understood <laughs> and would not publish the cell phone numbers or address. It was my mistake alone. All right. So he's basically admitting to the fact that he he doxed uh, Nathan Wade's number and Fanny's number to the media. Now, why is this a problem? Does anybody remember why this is a problem? Because Atlanta is super dangerous. <laughs> Atlanta is super dangerous. She is the district attorney. She is the queen. And she has mentioned that she's had to move out of her house multiple times and that uh, her her safety is always at issue. So someone doxing uh, her information. And let's be fair, she's a woman, right? So, you know, it's a thing. And she's prosecuting some extremely, extremely dangerous men. She is actively prosecuting right now some extremely dangerous gang members. So, I mean, it's a thing. It's a thing. Her her life really is a, a day in danger. Now, no one told her to be the district attorney's office and no one, uh, the district attorney, no one told her to bring all these damn RICO cases against these thugs. But, you know, she's doing that. It is good to get gangsters off of the streets. So she's doing a public service. And when you dox her, her information, it's not that great. All right. So that was Exhibit E. So I think we were right here. Do you want to keep going, Amy? Yeah. See Exhibit E, Steve Sato email. Portions of Defendant Trump's proposed supplement Exhibit 38, including cell phone records with personal identifying information, were then quickly distributed on social media. See Exhibit F at, um, and the, in, in the, this is on Twitter, and it looks like the account that shared it was Citizens Free Press. Okay, so let's take a look at this. It's probably redacted as well. I think we caught a little bit of it. Um, so that's E. We're so at this F. is exhibit F right here. Heat map of Fannie Willis calls and text <laughs> with Nathan Wade. God damn. 
both testified under oath there was no relationship. Uh, oh, here are the oh, cell phones. Oh, there it is. And so you can see, I would imagine right here is the unredacted. No, I don't know. Well, well, yeah, that's the heat map that they shared on Twitter. And what it showed is like the times when these communications would happen. Mm, let me go back here. Is there yeah. any way to, to blow it up? Yeah, let's try see it. see what we got here. Okay, so it says approximately 12,000 interactions, so voice and text in 2021, 2,073 voice calls, 9,992 text messages. And then the last bullet says heavy concentration after hours, seven days a week. So wow. that heat map shows you the time in a day, right? Uh, usually after work, it looks like, and mostly at night is when these con these communications would happen. The document looks like it is a printout from Hawk Analytics, and it says heat map analysis report has the case number. The description part looks a little fuzzy, guys, but it also shows the date in which this was pulled. Yeah, this kind of looks like the YouTube analytics right here. It does. <laughs> <laughs> interesting, interesting. Okay, so apparently there was some uh, inadvertent doxing going on. Mm. All right, so let's uh, let's jump back up here. Mm. Let me see here. God damn, that's a lot of um. Yeah, she she responded. She's like, "Here's everything we collected." Now I can see why it took them so long yesterday. Uh huh. Okay. Okay, so let's keep it going. Yeah. Uh, Defendant Trump's proposed supplemental Exhibit 30A includes an attempt to introduce evidence by affidavit, even though Defendant Trump insisted that the state was disallowed from doing so and compelled Special Prosecutor Wade to testify. Mm. Defendant Trump's proposed supplemental Exhibit 38 fails to comply with the court's standing order and evidentiary rules regarding notice or, or qualification of an export witness. So it looks like they're wrapping it up here. Moreover, the state's questions whether defendant Trump legally obtained cell site location information, which is generally only attainable after finding after a finding of probable cause and in issuance of a search warrant. Mm. So now they're saying that even though that they had this and like they had an investigator go and look for this, did the Trump team do this legally? Right. Where they were required to have a search warrant. <laughs> I mean, it's a hearing. Yeah. Oh, that, that's interesting because now we're diving into the realm of criminal law. For all of these reasons, it is clear that defendant Trump's proposed supplemental exhibit 38 is inadmissible. Oh, is right. Inadmissible supposed to be one word? Inadmissible? Yes, yeah, one word. Yeah, they have it. It's separated. Inadmissible right here? Yeah. No. Oh, I'm, right here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Inadmissible. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> spell check. Mm hmm Yeah. So it's um, it's clear that President Defendant Donald J. Trump's affidavit is inadmissible. It was not filed in good faith, and it should not be considered by the court. For the reasons set forth below, the court must exclude Defendant President Donald Trump's inadmissible affidavit signed fanny willis what do you think guys what do you think is this a strong response is it a weak response put strong if you think in totality it's strong put weak if you think it is weak in totality right because there were some weak arguments but you know there was some arguments you're like all <laughs> right now, let me do this, guys. I know I got to get through a lot of Super Chats. And I want to go back now and take a gander again at some of Nathan's Wade's testimony in light of what has been shown through these text messages. Was he telling the truth? Was he lying? We're going to see. We're going to take a look. But first, and I got a lot of Super Chats that I want to get to, but I got to get to this one in particular. <laughs> Shout out to Daryl Triplett, a.k.a. Officer, keep it real. Shout out, my man. No comment, no question, just the pure love of the game. Guys, let's be honest. I don't ever ask y'all for anything, but somebody write Daryl Triplett in the house. 
God damn. Oh my God. Somebody write officer. Keep it real in the chat. My man is the new sponsor of the stream and shout out to Joe ethereal. Cause Joe was the sponsor for the longest, but my man Daryl's like, man, thank you so much, Joe, but let me come on in and take over a little bit. Let me write my man, um, Daryl triplet in the banner here. Shout out to officer. Keep it real. boy. <laughs> Uh, officer, keep it real. Thank you so, so much, officer. Keep it real. And thank you as well to my man, Joe Ethereal. So I got my man in the um, in the banner right there. And let me just say, guys, 11,000 people in here. Somebody please thank Daryl. He is the one currently that's sponsoring the, 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 the content that me and AV are really working up here to provide. You know, it's interesting. We're doing a lot of things here kind of behind the scenes, trying to keep tabs on the chat, trying to read these documents, read the super chats. We're doing a lot, but we're really doing it for you uh, so that we can all understand what's going on. This is one of the biggest cases right now. You know, they're trying to get Donald Trump. They're trying to, to, to convict a president. They're trying to incarcerate a president. But you have these two people and their situation is sketchy. Yeah. And yes, it's starting to look like they've perjured themselves. Mm -hmm. And so it's very important that that people who have maybe a specialized knowledge, <laughs> right? Shout out to AV, shout out to Keita G, shout out to myself, shout out to me. We come in here and we try to give you guys kind of a behind the scenes look of what all this really means. We try to break it down for you. And our man Dale Triplett, a.k.a. Officer Keep It Real, is supporting hardcore. So many of y'all are supporting. Thank you for all the new members. Thank you to all the Super Chats. But I really do need to take a moment and, and, and really thank the people that go way over and above like our man Dale Triplett has done. So, Dale, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. Really appreciate it. Shout out to Dale Triplett. All right. We are going to keep it going, <laughs> guys. Let me show you what we are going to do right now because we read this um also also y'all remember um nathan wade himself had filed a motion right he was trying to say that um that there should be no viewing of terrence's terrence bradley's uh text messages y'all remember terrence bradley right let me give me one second here let me um let me show y'all for for all the people who have tried to purge out of their memory banks. Y'all remember this man right here, Terrence Bradley, right? Now this, uh, this gentleman right here was Nathan's law partner. Not only was it Nathan's law partner, he was Nathan's friend and uh, they go back a long time. Well, the problem was Nathan and Fanny started dating and he was telling uh, Terrence all about the relationship. But what happened? Terrence got caught with his hand in the cookie jar. Terrence started fucking people that he shouldn't have been fucking under circumstances that were a little bit sketchy. He was fucking a uh, he was fucking a, a client. Apparently, he was having sex with an employee, and there's allegations that this sex was not mm, je ne sais quoi consensual. Consensual. There was allegations that it wasn't, mm, let's say, voluntary. So Nathan was like, you know what, nigga? We got to get you up out of here. <laughs> we cannot have you assaulting clients. We cannot have you assaulting employees. So what happened? Nathan booted uh, uh, Terrence from the firm. Well, guess who didn't like that too much? Terrence. So then what did Terrence do? Terrence said, well, I need to get my lick back. And so Terrence started calling up Ashley Merchant, who represents one of Trump's indictees. And Terrence started spilling the beans on Nathan. So Terrence is telling Ashley all the goods about Nathan's information. Well, now the judge is like, well, you know, I want to know more about what you're saying between what happened with the, the communications between uh, Fanny and Nathan, Terrence. I want to know what you know about these people. And I want to I I examine 
your, your cell phone, and I, I want to talk to you about this. Nathan, guys, y'all remember, made uh, an argument. He, he submitted a filing to the court telling the court, no, you should not listen to this. Y'all remember, it's, um, it's the filing right here. Let me show you. He objected. Mm. Give me one second. He objected to the, the, the in-camera inspection. Right, he says. Now comes a uh, special prosecutor, Nathan Wade, and files this brief concerning the in-camera uh, in examination of Attorney Terrence. Because y'all remember, they don't like each other. Yeah. And so, what was Nathan's main point? Nathan's main point is that the stuff that I told Terrence was covered by attorney-client privilege. And so, it, court, if you examine him, you are going to be compelling him to make disclosures that were made in confidence. So judge, you cannot make Terrence talk. You have already said at least 14 times that attorney-client privilege <laughs> attaches to these issues. Excuse me. You've already said that uh, attorney Bradley testified that he has no relevant personal knowledge. Attorney Bradley uh, sought advice from both counsel and the state bar on attorney-client privilege. So, Judge, you cannot make him testify in camera. Uh, Nathan says that Georgia law clearly prohibits compelled disclosure of attorney-client privilege communications, even in camera. So Nathan is like, Judge, you cannot talk to Terrence. Mm -hmm. The judge issued a ruling yesterday. Judge was like, yeah, fuck that. Fuck all that. I'm talking to him. <laughs> I'm talking to him. I want to know what this ninja knows. Right. I want to decide myself, is it attorney-client privilege or not? Because I do not trust this ninja. I don't know if he knows what attorney-client privilege even is. Mm -hmm. So I need to talk to him. I need to examine the information. And then I, as the judge, am going to decide. If, it, if the communications are covered by attorney-client privilege. So the judge has denied Nathan Wade. And the judge is going to be talking to Terrence on Monday. <laughs> Apparently, they're going to be talking on Monday, guys. Put a yes if you think the judge is going to get some good information from Terrence. Put a no if you're like, man, Terrence don't know nothing. Terrence, you know, he's just a sideshow. What do you guys think? Is the judge going to get anything good, right? Um, so now let me show you guys what we're going to do is we are going to look at a little bit of Nathan Wade's. We're going to look at a little bit of Nathan Wade's testimony in light, in light of, of all of this talk about the cell phone towers. And guys, I want I want us to really see if we can catch him in any lies. Do you, does this look like the face of a man that would lie? No, right? Why would he lie? He looks so he, honest. Why would he lie? This is the <laughs> face of an honest man. Shout out again to Daryl Triplett. Let me move this so we can all see. But, you know, who thinks, put yes, put liar if you think <laughs> this man is lied on the stand. Put truth if you think he was telling the truth. Put lie if you think that this man that we are looking at has lied. Put truth if you think that he has been telling the truth. Now, let me do this. Let me um, go up here, and we're going to get into it, guys. But I do want to shout some. Um, I do want to shout some people out. Uh, all right. So let me shout a few people out here. We got the beautiful Lala. I already read this, Chapel Matic. We already talked about Keita G. Let's keep it going. Shout out to Black Man Swimming says, breaking news, judge allows Terrence Bradley's testimony. Yeah, hmm. we were just talking about that. This is timely. So the, uh, the, the judge issued the ruling. I couldn't find it, but I saw an article talking about it. So that is exactly right. Shout out to Chris. We got Chris, a new member. Thank you so much. And shout out to Gerald, Gerald Davis, super generous to you. What does Gerald say? And again, guys, we're, we've got 10,000 people in here, so I need to, I'm only going to read the ones 20 and up. Gerald says, lead and AV, watching from Hawaii, okay? 
Fanny playing Uno while uh, Donald Trump's team's 45 is playing spades with the big joker and the joke. <laughs> All right. Shout out to my man, Gerald. Thank you so much. Super generous of you, Gerald. Shout out to Impress. We got the beautiful Impress in the house, a new member. Thank you. We got Dean Supreme in the house, a new member as well. Shout out to Dean Supreme. We got Matthew in the house. Damn, we got Impress gifted 10 memberships. Shout out to Impress. Listen, we're in the South. I already told you this man right here sitting right down the street, Atlanta, Georgia. We're in the South, guys. In the South, we have manners. This man had manners. This man received $650,000 from an elderly woman. And do you know what he did? He has manners, so he fucked her. All right? He showed her love. Elderly. He showed her love. <laughs> this man responded in kind. You think he just pocketed the money and left hell? No. He took his cell phone, got the towers pinged, and went over to Dogwood and dogged around. Similarly, if you receive one of 10, one of the 10 lead attorney memberships gifted by Ian Press, show her some love. We're from the South. We were raised right. Mind your manners. I mind my manners. This man minded his manners. He tried to wear Fanny out. All right. So shout out to this man right here. Shout out to Impress. Thank you. We got a uh, medical vampire. That's a real name. Shout out to medical vampire, a new member. Thank you. Shout out to Mikey as well. Thank you so much. Shout out to Sean. Got Sean in the house. Thank you. Got E. Haywood, a new member. Thank you so much, E. Haywood. Got Steve in the house. Thank you so much. We got L minus a new member. Shout out to L. Got Steven in the house. Got Chi Town. Fit Queen, okay? Chi Town. Mm -hmm. I'm about to say Chit Town. <laughs> Chi Town Fit Queen. Thank you so much. A new member. Shout out to Chi Town Fit Queen with health as well. Let me tell you right now. Thank you so much. We got Regina Harden in the house. Thank you. A new member of the jury. We got Game of Tyrone. Shout I out love to that Game name. Of the Game of Tyrone is such an awesome, strong brother. Thank you so much, Game of Tyrone. We got the sophisticated motivation in the house. Thank you. Got Liger in the house. We got a new member in <sighs> Roll the Dice. <laughs> We're going to roll these dice. Shout out to Roll the Dice. We got uh, SC Lady 48 in the house. Thank you as well for becoming a new member. We got Duncan Idaho in the house as a new member. Shout out to Jay and I. We got Jacob. We got Rafia. We got Gerald. We got Anna, the Amy. My bad. Shout out to Amy. <laughs> the beautiful Amy in the house, a new member. Shout out to Amy. We got Pedro. We got Anna Mar in the house as well. We got the beautiful, uh, says the beautiful AV. Damn, and she's smart too. Shout out to E. Capone. Y'all know E. Capone in the house. Always supporting. Shout out to Afro Man, a new member. Got Afro Man right here as well. Says, y'all hilarious. They know the rules. Okay. They did that to scare Fanny. So she can know they have evidence against her. Was this a media play, guys? Was this a media play to get everybody talking, to let everybody know the relationship that she had with this man? You know? The, and and, and what, what Afro Man is saying is so apropos. And then Fanny... Uh, said it in her in the last page of her response that this is really for salaciousness. This is this is a sideshow. This has nothing to do with the prosecution of Donald Trump. That's what Fanny believes. You know whether I'm fucking this dude or not is irrelevant to Donald Trump. He tried to steal an election down here in Georgia. Why are we talking about what I'm doing with this man? Right. So it seems like Fanny's saying that they're just trying to 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 stir the pot. So they're, they're, they're making a distraction. So shout out to Afro Man. Got Rashid in the house, a new member. Shout out to Rashid. Mambo Fuego. We got HB Gone Global in the house. Thank you so much. Got Carl, a new member as well. Got Jamal here. Got Bob here. We got Snoodle Girl, okay? The beautiful <laughs> Snoodle Girl in here. We got RV Blessed. RV Blessed. Thank you, thank you, thank you. What does RV Blessed say? Lead. Um... Hey, lead and uh, AV, are perjury traps allowed in an allowed strategy? And if they are, how would advance notice serve in the setting of said trap? Uh, by trap like an ambush? No, this was not a thing. 
I don't think they knew that. No one knew that that this man and 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 Fanny were going to lie like that. Like you know, yeah. you expect that they would tell the truth. Mm-hmm. But then when they lied, uh, Donald Trump's team tried to get evidence to counter that lie. But when they got the evidence, they didn't send it to them. They wanted to make it look. They wanted to make them look bad. So this is not really a thing. And it shows in Fannie's response. They're like, hey, you can't ambush us with this. And they're right. But for the media, for media purposes, this was kind of a win for Donald Trump. Yeah. Because the the lies are still there. I mean, the lies are still there. Like in her argument, we're seeing all the procedural things. And then at the end, I was not there. I was at a crime scene, right? Mm -hmm. But we haven't. We haven't seen how it's going to play out yet. This is just her response. This is just her response, RV. But I think that was a great question. Great question and great observation. Absolutely. You guys are on it. Shout out to Stoney. We got Stoney Valentine in the house. Got pills, potions, and poisons. Talking about fake news. That is exactly right. Anna P in the house as well. Anna. Anna P. Shout out to Anna. Got Sergeant Fax in the house. Thank you so much to Sergeant Fax. Shout out to Roll the Dice says, can you please make me a mod? All right. AV, tell uh, Roll the Dice the number one rule about making people mods. So Roll the Dice, what we've done on this channel for a few years is if someone asks to be a mod, the answer is no. (laughs) Because you're asking. The rule is if you ask to be a mod, you'll never be a mod. (laughs) (laughs) You can't ask. You you just got to be initiated. You can't ask just to be a mod person. We decide when you get made. All right, shout out to Roll the <laughs> Dice. Got JT Coin Rings who has gifted a sub. If you got JT sub, then please tell him thank you. Got J Marshall Presnell in the house. Thank you. We got Mark in the house. Shout out to Mark. We got uh Cad Monkey. All right, that, that funky monkey. All right, thank you so much. <laughs> we got Victor Man 7777. Got Victor Man in the house. Got Gino. What does Gino, Gino say? Gino says, AV is the best co-host in the history of co-hosts. 100% agree. That's why <laughs> she's mine. All right. That's why she's mine. And I went through a few of them, too. They were all terrible. I got the best one in the nation. Uh, Gino says, and the glasses? She had two thumbs up. Shout out to KS. Somebody put KS in the damn chat. KS is the one, I believe, that, that helped you select those glasses, AV? Yeah, so um, believe it or not, guys, I used to wear these like Tiffany black glasses that were like turquoise. <laughs> and he was like, those look whimsical. And <laughs> picked out whimsical. these ones instead. This is like real 24 karat gold on the side, you know? He Shout out well. to KS. Yes, he those glasses well. are on point. Shout out to Gino. Thank you so much, Gino. We got our man Joel in the house. Thank you so much, Joel. We got Afro Man again. Shout out to Afro Man. Got third eye Jedi. I like that name. Uh Till is that Till Films? Till Films. Till Films in the house. We got him. We already shouted out Cat. Thank you so much, Cat. We got our man Guy Incognito. <laughs> Thank you so much, Guy Incognito. What does Guy Incognito say? Guy Incognito says, Man, this man right here visited 35 times. Nathan Wade was a Fanny's was at Fanny's place pulling a Johnny Depp busting the hinges. <laughs> oh my god! Guy went deep. <laughs> the hinges. <laughs> no pun intended. Guy went deep. <laughs> Shout out to my man Guy. It got you know, hundred percent. See y'all, y'all know that I'm gonna read the ones that are twenty and up, and then y'all go crazy with them. All right? <laughs> Shout out to my man Guy Incognito. Yeah, this guy was over there 30 some times. What do y'all think about that, right? Uh it's 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 a real one. Shout out to Guy Incognito. We got the beautiful Anna P again. Thank you so much, Anna. We got uh, a Betty Spaghetti, 100%. <laughs> she says apparently it wasn't 12,000 texts, but 12,000 impressions in a corrected release. Yes. And I think AV you were uh talking about the release. I haven't seen the yeah. correction. What's the yeah. difference 12,000 impressions? What what are they saying about that? So on the bottom of the document, I'll drop it in our chat, but mm-hmm. on the bottom of the document, it just kind of shows um, what time it was changed. So mm-hmm. this came from Boots. He refiled it at 1.55 p.m. And on the very bottom of the document says the correction is on page five, the first paragraph, line four, which should have read 12,000 interactions. 
and not 12,000 text messages. Interact. Oh, yeah, it could be, you know how like, if you text somebody and you, you like, um, you know, you like the text. So Apple has that feature enabled. Oh, so if you yeah. heart it, if you hit a thumbs up, um, it could be voice memos. So they had to change the word from text messages to interactions because it was a mixture of things. Gotcha. That makes more sense. 12,000. That makes Yeah, because we were all looking at it yesterday. Like, who's calling somebody or texting somebody 12,000 times? A hundred percent. Excellent. Shout out to Julio. Thank you so much for that, Betty Spaghetti. Shout out to Julio Suave in the house. Mikey Scott, gift in the membership. Please tell him thank you. Shout out to Ronnie. We got Ronnie in the house. And shout out to Don Allen. Don Allen 80 says Fanny was in the Nate Doe's 1990 freak Nick poses. Okay, that's what we need. Bust it wide open. Shout out to my man, Don Allen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, I know I got some more to get into, but we are going to pick this up. Uh, thank you again, Don Allen. So let's see, guys. Let's take a look at this. And now let's listen, guys, with a closer ear. Let's listen with a good ear and see if we can identify anything sketchy in our brother Nathan's testimony. All right. Let me uh, turn on a little bit of the closed captions here. Maybe stick it right there. All right. And then let's let's go now. Let's see what they're talking about. He believes he answered it truthfully, and then we can get, drill down into why or why not he doesn't. And maybe we'll end up exactly where you are. Right, let's go. So our man is on the stand. Is that Boots? No. It's not Boots? Okay. Mm -hmm. So now they got Nathan on the stand. Oh, yes, sir. Hmm. Okay. Now, these are the interrogatories that you had filed on uh, May the... 30th, 2023 in your divorce case, correct? Yes, sir. Now, you went over in part some of those interrogatories, but I, what I want you to do, because I, I, I want to get down to the specific language to clear up exactly what the interrogatories asked for and exactly what you answered, okay? Yes, sir. Now, if we look on the interrogatory that uh, I believe, as we indicated, they're, they're really, I think, on page two, uh, the one this, that starts off, describe each instance in which you've had sexual relations. You see that one? Yes, sir. All right. Now, that interrogatory uh, begins, describe each instance in which you have had sexual relations with a person other than your spouse during the course of the marriage, Ooh. including the period of separation. You see that? Yes, sir. Now, these were filed on May the 30th. 2023, correct? Yes, sir. Now, at that time, uh, you had had sexual relations with Miss Willis, correct? Well, I'm going to. Are we getting deep already, guys? Mm -hmm. Object to the question as phrased. I think the question is properly at that time um, certainly asked about his answer, but I, I, I object to. All right, Mr. Gill, I'll just ask you to rephrase, but I think you can make the same point. Well, Your Honor, it's a specific interrogatory, and I would, you know, so the words do matter, and I would like him to answer. Uh, whether or not he'd had sexual relations with Miss Willis, because uh, if he answered yes, then this interrogatory is a uh, is a false interrogatory. So I would ask the court's indulgence. I'm not here to jump into some salacious um, bedroom situation, but this is an inter interrogatory that matters. So I would ask the court's indulgence. Miss Cross. Questions have been asked and answered several times. I understand Mr. Gillen is coming at it um, from a different way, but this question is not substantively different than those that have already been asked and answered in the information that he's seeking. All right, um, Mr. Gillen, I'll uh, allow maybe this question one more, but uh, I think you are asking it in a different way, and I'll ask you to stick to the point. All right. Now, as of May the 30th, and may, may, may I ask the question that I, uh, that, okay, thank you, Your Honor. On, as of May the 30th, 2023, you had had sexual relations with Miss Willis. Isn't that correct? The, the interrogatory, sir, asks during the course of the marriage and the period of separation. Excuse me. My response, Your Honor, I would ask the court direct the witness to answer my question, yes or no. That's how you do as it. As of May the 30th, 2023, Did you had, do you, it? Had, had you had sexual relations with Miss Willis? Yes, Mr. Gillen, let's start with 
uh, at the higher level, whether he believes he answered it truthfully, and then we can get, drill down into why or why not he doesn't. And maybe we'll end up exactly where you left us. Well, but again, Your Honor, the point of it is, is that the words matter and that we have to establish what did and did not happen. And then he can give whatever uh, explanation he chooses to to what apparently is a false answer. But I would like an answer yeah. to my question. And you may get one. I just would ask, I would like us to start at the high level before we drill down in specifics to see whether he actually contradicted that interrogatory, if I'm making sense. Well, uh, the interrogatory is rel relatively direct and explicit. Sexual relationships with a person other than your spouse during the course of the marriage, including the period of separation. That's pretty simple. Sure. Let's, um, let's see if... Uh, if that's something you can get him to admit. You did have sexual relationships with someone other than your spouse during the course of the marriage uh, and during the period of separation, which included up to May the 30th of 2023. Isn't that correct, sir? The, the, my answer to this interrogatory is none, is no. None. So you're saying that you did not have sexual relationships with anyone uh, outside of your marriage and the period of separation is during the period then you're answering the question to this interrogatory, correct, sir? I'm saying during the course of my marriage, I did not have sexual relations to anyone, and this answer is no. Well, again, Your Honor, I, I understand. Need to, you can proceed, Mr. Gale. I need to. We need a yes or no. <clears throat> Let's just get down to it. Did you or did you not, Here by May the 30th, <clears throat> 2023, have had sexual relations with Miss Willis, yes or no? Yes or no? Yes. Okay. Oh. Now, <clears throat> what you did... Is you answered right. no to right. that. So when was the date? Let's say the date. So May 30th. Did you by May 30th of 2003? Can proceed. Okay, so here we go. Mr. I need to we need a yes or no. <clears throat> Let's just get down to it. Did you or did you not by May the 30th, <clears throat> 2023, have had sexual relations with Miss Willis? Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes. Okay. Now <clears throat> what you did. Is you answered no. Okay, so he is admitting that yes, he was boning. He was boning Fanny. All right. Now he didn't say the times, how many times, and he didn't say when it started, but he said by the time when was it May of 2023, he was hitting them sheets with our girl Fanny. Fanny's over 50 years old. And he said, I don't give a damn. She's over 50 years old. He said he didn't give a damn. He gonna break her wide open. Let's go. To that question did you or not correct i didn't answer no to the question you just asked i answered no to the interrogatory question and the interrogatory stands uh that you answered as a pleading in a in a uh in a, in a civil proceeding your divorce case right yes <clears throat> now <clears throat> excuse me the next interrogatory let's move there that interrogatory states as follows Identify any and all occasions in which you entertain a member of the opposite sex other than your spouse who is not related to you by blood or marriage. Um, you see that? I do. You, uh, now, uh, there are two parts to this. The second part is, I read on, or in which a member of the opposite sex other than your spouse not related to you by blood or marriage entertained you. And then it goes on to say, including but not limited to dining, drinking, <clears throat> in restaurants, bars, pubs, hotels. You see that, correct? I do. Now, as of May the 30th, 2023, when you filed this interrogatory, you had, in fact, entertained Miss Willis on many occasions, had you not? Again, during the course of the marriage, the marriage was irretrievably broken in 2015. Well, the, answer's, the answer's still no. Let's read what the interrogatory says about the time period required to answer the interrogatory. And again, because again, what guys, it says is, again, guys, interrogatories are just a discovery tool in a civil case. So this is a divorce case, and, and that he, these interrogatories come from a divorce case. Interrogatories are just a list of questions. So one interrogatory: state your name. Another interrogatory: state your place of employment. Another interrogatory, state why you believe that your wife is not the best person to have primary custody of the kids. Another interrogatory, state whether you have had any sexual relations with anyone during the pendency of your marriage. That's kind of the interrogatory 
that, that they were wondering about in this one because he answered he answered no yeah. that he hasn't had any sexual relations with someone during the pendency of his marriage. But right now, he just said on the stand he did. He had sex with Fanny uh, prior to, what is it, May of 2023. Mm -hmm. So the attorney's like, wait a minute now. In the interrogatories, which are sworn, by the way, you had to swear to tell the truth. You said that you have not had any sexual relations with anyone outside of your wife during your marriage. And right now you're saying that you did with Fanny. So you're lying. Yeah. Right. How does he get out of it? What does he say, A.V.? What does he say? I don't remember, to be honest. But I, mm -hmm. what I was just thinking of just now is this is like a second example of Nathan Wade lying on the stand. You know, yes. like you have these interrogatories, which are the written documents prepared by the sneaky snake paralegals that the lawyers <laughs> sign. Right. Yeah. But uh, what happens is, um, you know, you have proof of him lying in a written document. Right. This is one of many other instances that we see. But looking at this, this is one of the very early ones that we've seen. Exactly. So how does he get out of it? What does he say? He says, well, I didn't have sexual relations with anybody other than my wife during my marriage. And the attorney's like, well, how is that? And he was like, well, my marriage was officially, well, my marriage in my heart ended in 2015. In my heart. In my heart, my marriage ended in 2015. I had sex with Fanny after that, so I have not had sex with anybody in my marriage other than my wife. Because my marriage ended in 2015. And I'm fucking uh, Fanny 2022. All right, 2023. Now, what's the problem? The problem is that that's an okay answer for you guys because y'all, you know, y'all are not experts on the law. <laughs> this man is an expert on the law. In fact, he's a goddamn judge. So he knows that he is still married as of this day. Today, guys, what's today? A Saturday? He's married today. Yeah. He cannot use y'all's thing. Oh, well, I didn't know. Oh, I'm a civilian. You're an attorney and a goddamn judge. But, you know, he was trying to get out of a lie. So that's what he said. Oh, well, my marriage ended in 2015 because I was emotionally separated from her. And that was that. And it's like, all right, dude, all right, all right, but let's keep going. Uh, it goes on to say, including you, including but not uh, limited to dining and or drinking at any restaurants, bars, pubs, hotels, or persons' homes from the date of marriage to the present. You understand what the word present means? I do. And present means the filing on May the 30th, 2023. Isn't that right? It is. So as of May the, tw the 30th, 2023, you have done a lot or you had done a lot of entertaining of Miss Willis, had you not? I had done some, yes. And in fact, under your testimony, um, you would have said that she had also entertained you. Isn't that correct? Yes. And so your answer to this interrogatory is false, is it not, sir? No, it's not false. Uh, well... Hate to dance around the, you know, you, 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 the answer is yes, you did entertain Miss Willis, correct? Right? Yes. She's not, she's not uh, your spouse at that time or any time, correct? That's correct. She's not related to you by blood or marriage, correct? That's correct. But she entertained her, right? Yes. And during the course from your marriage, the period of time up to the press, so the answer would have been, yes, I did entertain somebody, correct? During the course of the marriage, no. Mr. Wade. Uh, Mr. Gillen, I think we've we've made a point. Oh, I think it speaks for itself. And the oh, attorney gosh. was like, come on. Yeah. The attorney's like, nigga, you know what you're doing. But right. the judge, the judge is like, hey man, that's his answer. All right. We every attorney, guys, that courtroom is filled with attorneys. It is filled with attorneys. I need to be there. It's right up the street. Every attorney in there knows what the deal is. But this attorney who's crossed and examined him, he wants to get to the truth. But the judge is like, no, I'm not going to let you badger the witness. I'm not going to let you argue with the witness. You asked a question. He gave you an answer. Move on. 
you're he's saying that he entertained someone, but he's saying that he did not entertain someone during the marriage. Well, we all know that he's still married, but his story that he's sticking to is that his marriage ended in 2014, 2015. And the judge is like, listen, if he's saying his marriage ended in 2014, 15, that's what he's saying. He's sticking to it. Move on. And you can hear the attorney's frustration in this. Yeah. The attorney cannot believe that the judge is letting them get, get away with this. That's correct. But you entertained it, right? Yes. And during the course from your marriage, the period of time up to the press. So the answer would have been, yes, I did entertain somebody, correct? During the course of the marriage, no. Mr. Wade. Uh, Mr. Gillen, I think we've, <laughs> we've made your point. I think it speaks for itself and we can save that for itself. argument. And then I'll just follow up with one quick question. Mr. Wade. Do you understand what the word present means? Your Honor, I think we did cover that already as well. Okay. Now, <clears throat> what has happened uh, from the time that you file this court document in May of 2023, let's go over some of the things that you uh, had been involved in in terms of being entertained or entertaining. Prior to your filing on the answer on the, the interrogatories on May the 30th, 2023, we've already established, have we not, that you had paid for a uh, Royal Caribbean cruise. Oh, the Bahamas, my God. You're paying for the cruise. Uh, with Miss Willis, correct? Yes, sir, with Miss Willis and my mother. Well, okay. your mother's not a part of this interrogatory. I'm talking about Miss Willis, okay? So, what are you talking about, Willis? You paid. Uh, and, and, and caused to be paid approximately $3,335 on that trip, Bahamas trip, from uh, October the 28th through October the 31st, correct? Yeah, no, no objection. I think we've said this ground several times already. Mr. Gillen, let's, let's cover new ground. Well, I am I'm just trying to establish with specificity the things that he had done to entertain or be entertained prior to May the 30th 2023, I'll try to move through it. Quickly. Sure. Well, uh, that's already part of the record in, in terms of his prior testimony. And so if you want to link those things to those two things together, you can do that during argument. Well, uh, so let me then let me discuss this. You indicated that during the course of your explanation concerning the Belize trip, that Miss Willis, uh, that Miss Willis paid you all that money back in cash. Remember the cash? Yes, sir. Now, the Belize trip had just happened, hadn't it? That occurred in March of 18th, 2023, right? Yes, sir. So you're filing this maybe two months after you have gone to Belize with Ms. Willis, correct? Uh, again, I think all of this is I think, I think you might be getting somewhere new. We'll see. Right. Yes, sir. So we've got the trip in we've got the trip in uh, to Belize on on March the 18th, 2023. You and Ms. Willis, correct? Yes, sir. Now, two months later, you follow the interrogatories that speak for themselves that we've gone over a few, a few minutes ago, correct? Yes, sir. Now, the March the 18th, 2023, to state the obvious, is before. There's all types March, of phones going me, off in here. May 30th, 2023. Will you agree with me on that? I do. Okay. So then you tell us that <coughs> Miss Willis uh, paid you in cash. All the money for the entire trip. It was a gift for you for your birthday, correct? Yes, sir. And I'm sure you probably have the deposit slips where you took the cash and deposited the cash into your account, don't you? I did not deposit the cash in my account. You don't have a single solitary deposit slip to corroborate at, or support. Look at his face. He's almost smiling. Wait, you see his face right now? Mm -hmm. When he says he don't have a deposit slip, look how it changes. Cash and deposited the cash into your account, don't you? I did not deposit the cash in my account. You don't have a single solitary. Look at him. He's like, I got you, nigga. <laughs> He's like, you trying to catch me? I did not put that money in my account. Exactly. And we saw, it, we saw his financial affidavit, guys. And even mm -hmm. in his financial affidavit, he states that he has $5,000 in cash. So yes. that kind of actually kind of matches up a little bit. So Very you know. deposit slip to corroborate or support any of your allegations that you were paid by Mrs. Willis in cash, do you? No, sir. Not a single solitary one. Not a one. Now, 
Um, <laughs> <with Ms>. Willis, <laughs> not a one. Would you scamper down to the T uh, ATM with her, and uh, she drew money out of scamper. her account to pay you these thousands of dollars? Mr. Gillen might scamper, but there's been no evidence that uh, the way that, uh, he that might that scamper. Argument of nature. On that issue, overruled. That was aggressive. Did you and Miss Wade scamper down to the ATM <laughs> and have her dry out? Uh, for example, on the Belize trip, just on on uh, your payment would have been uh, two thousand seven hundred ninety-four dollars. Miss Wade. For Claire, yes, yeah, thank you. Pardon me, Miss Wade and I didn't didn't go to Belize. No, I'm excuse me, uh, Miss Willis. I'm I'm sorry. Did you go down to the ATM with Miss Willis while she drew out? Two thousand seven hundred ninety-four dollars to pay you in cash. That you did. Did, did she? Did you go to the ATM with, with her? <laughs> no, sir. She didn't go to the ATM. She carried the cash. Oh, and so she would give you the cash. Did you have a little place in your house where you just stack up all this she cash that you apparently cash. got to repay you for these benefits that you bestowed on her? Well, Mr. Gillen, if I answered that, I'm putting myself in jeopardy. If I, if I tell the world that I have cash someplace in my home, don't you think that? Could be problematic. No, I don't. I want an answer as to whether or not you have a little cash hoard in your oh. house where you have allegedly taken the money that oh. you got from Mrs. Willis and went and put it somewhere. Where'd no, you put sir. it? No, sir. Now, just put it on the hip and kind of walk around money. Did I put it on my hip? And, and, yeah, just and walking around money where you would spend the cash yourself. Let me finish. Did I put it on my hip in Belize and walk around with no, it? When you got paid back. Would you take the money, the cash that she gave you, and would you just carry it around with you for spending money around what town? What did you do with it? So we have to break down each trip because, for example, for the cruise, she paid me the money before we took the cruise. So I was here, and I could put the money in my pocket or put it away wherever I wanted to do with it. Um, other trips, she would give me the money there. So at that point, I could either spend it or put it in my pocket or put it in the hotel safe. There, there's no special place that you would have all this cash that you would be getting from her that you've told us about to, to pay back for the benefits that you have bestowed out. Uh, the allegation concerning the benefits that you have bestowed on her, is that correct? Phrasing the benefits that bestowed upon her, I don't believe that's an accurate reflection of the testimony, and I don't think that's appropriate. Question. I think overall, you can answer the question. Okay. When you said proceedings, are you talking about the divorce proceedings? Because we were talking about the interrogatories. I, to that no. question, the answer is no. If you're at, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead with your answer. I want, I'll hear the complete answer, then I'll follow up. Okay. If you're asking me about <clears throat> this hearing, the proceedings of this hearing, have we discussed the, the financial piece based upon Mr. Roman's motion? Yes. So you have discussed the financial piece. When did that, where did that discussion take place? Conference room. Were you other people there or were you in this Willis discussing this about what your position was going to be? Well, Mr. Gillen. And the relevance has to do with, with uh, suddenly we have a declaration from, from Mr. Wade in this case where he says roughly equal and then shows one uh, alleged payment by Miss Willis. No mention of cash, none. So I need to find out a little bit more about how suddenly we have this, this, this revelation about cash uh, from the witness stand today. Right. Overall. So, so we part company there when you say no mention of cash. Um, if I provided one receipt that didn't amount to what you would think was roughly equal, the rest of it is cash. Well, did you in your declaration, sir, it was filed in this case. Did you tell the court oh, who's that? in that declaration that the expenditure is that you had you provided <laughs> on behalf of Ms. Rose was paid for uh, back by her in is. cash, yes or no? I believe oh, that I did. When I, I wonder if this is one of the women that Terrence. Yeah, because why would they be zooming in on her, you know? Right, right. It's interesting. Said that the expenses were. Is that Anna Rodriguez? Roughly even. Or if it's his wife, you know, because he's still married. 
And his wife can point to me, but I can't tell from the face if that's her or not. Mm-hmm. Anybody, Any, anybody in the chat know who this lady is? Place in your affidavit where you use the word cash, <clears throat> I would appreciate it. I Take didn't. Time. I, I didn't use the word cash. No, sir. No, you didn't use the word cash, did you? But I didn't say that she didn't give it to me in cash. Uh, no, you just didn't tell anybody that you allegedly got paid back in cash, right? No, I, I, I told everyone who asked. Blick says she's an activist. Today. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Now, uh, who else was you, uh, Blick, was no. with you, if anyone else, when you and Ms. Willis were discussing how you would be handling the financial component of the motion here today, that is the I'm personal gonna, benefits? I'm going to object to the relevance of that, Your Honor. Well, the relevance is if they know that they're going to be called as witnesses, they've been subpoenaed, and they are discussing what they're going to say, we need to know that. The court needs to know that. It goes to the veracity of Mr. Willis and, excuse me. um, And really, you know, not to put too fine a point on it, guys, but shout out to Bob Gable. What does Bob Gable say? (laughs) Bob is like, reminder, guys. This is the special prosecutor against President Trump. This guy, the black guy on the stand, is the special prosecutor against Donald Trump. Talking about, you know, he's got cash. (laughs) Like, ah, I mean, shout out to Bob. Not to put too too fine a point on it, man. God damn. Shout out to Bob. Thank you so much. Shout out to Don, the coach as well. Really appreciate it. Uh, says, let's say they throw out the expert claim. What benefits do you think were gained by Trump's team having this information public? And we mm-hmm. talked about that. I think the benefit is what Keita was saying, what F. Fanny actually said as well. It's the salaciousness of it. Nobody believes these people anymore. Right. That it's cell phone tower was really for the court of public opinion. Mm-hmm. Fanny is saying that you cannot get this affidavit introduced in the court of law. Donald Trump says, fuck the court of law. We go into the court of public opinion. Right. Well, nobody believes this dude. And you got uh, you got our man Bob being like, man, this is the special prosecutor. Uh, t- Donald Trump totally destroyed this man's reputation. Right. Mm-hmm. So I think it was more of a media play. A shout out again to uh, Ann Perez, the beautiful Ann Perez. Not only did she bless me with 50 bucks, but she also gifted 10 memberships. And if you, ladies and gentlemen, were one of the lucky ones that got blessed with one of N. Prez's gifted memberships, please tell her thank you. We're from the South. You listen to how we talk down here. You you can listen to the man. You hear his accent. We got manners. Please tell N. Perez thank you. Thank you so much, N. Perez. Shout out to N. Perez. I keep saying Perez is Prez. <laughs> Shout out to Ian Prez. All right. Thank you so much. Let's keep going. Uh, Ms. Willis and Mr. Wade. We didn't discuss how we were going to handle testimony. My, my question was, when you were discussing with Ms. Willis in the conference room, when you were discussing what uh, you perceived to be the situation concerning the 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 benefits for the payments yes sir was there anyone else present no sir how long did the meeting take probably five or ten minutes did miss willis tell you what she was going to say no sir did you ask her whether she had any with uh bank withdrawals that would corroborate the uh the assertion that uh that she would uh pay you back in large sums of cash for these these trips to the caribbean belize California, on and on and on. Your Honor, and then I object. The proffer when the last relevance objection was made was that Mr. Dillon needed to know who else was there. These could be potential witnesses that he could cross-examine. The, that question has been answered for you. Okay. I think it's still exploring possible bias or motive to shape his testimony, so overrule on that ground. Thank you. Uh, now, now, Mr. Willis, uh, excuse me, Mr. Wade, when uh, you were having this discussion, did you ask her? Did you ask? No, oh, he's her? laughing now. He's like, this is a game now. Right. Uh, these cash withdrawals. No, sir. Did you ask her um, where she got the cash? Here, this this is the conversation. What's the conversation? I produced my credit card statement that showed what Miss Miss Merchant in her filing was representing. 
that was the conversation. Um, okay. So when she would pay you back in cash, were you aware of what her financial situation was? Do you know what? No, sir. No, I object to the relevance. Well, Your Honor, it's relevant because um, we've been uh, bombarded with a book, Find Me the Votes, in which... Uh, What's at issue is the financial benefit, and if that plays a material interest in an actual conflict of interest, so I think that's relevant. Now, uh, have you read the book, Find Me the Votes? I have. You have? I have. Okay. Uh, now, in that book, uh, Ms. Willis uh, is telling the authors uh, uh, about how financially uh, uh, destitute she was or uh, kind of hidden down on, on, on the bottom as she was running for DA. Do you remember that part of the book? So let me qualify the response. I've, I've read the, the, the book Get it in, out. in parts. I, haven't, I, I hadn't had the time to sit and read the book in its entirety. Did you read that part about how she's telling the authors about how uh, little money she had and how her, financially she was in bad shape prior to when she was running? Did you did you read that part? No, sir. Did you ever have discussions with Ms. Willis about her uh, financial situation, which was uh, which was uh, in in apparently in rough shape prior to her being elected DA? No, sir. Ms. Willis made it clear that her financial business was just that it was her business i I, I know nothing about her financial status i know nothing about how she talking. was faring before or after the election or even now i know nothing about her finances You're telling us that she didn't share that with you but chose to share it with the authors of a book that's been uh, she was published and, printed the and yeah. sold nationally i think that's a fair question for cross I, I i don't know that she shared it with the author i don't know that the author is telling the truth i don't know the author so I don't know, sir. Okay. Now, did you give an interview to uh, uh, to the uh, authors of that book? I've given no interviews, sir. You, so you haven't talked to them at all? Correct? I haven't talked to any media. All right. None. Uh, now, as it relates to the... I'd like to, though. As it okay. relates to... If you want to talk to the media, you, listen, they, oh. you come yeah, over again, here. Me and AV got your, some questions. Your, <laughs> right. Bank records that you're aware of, there'll be no, there'll be no cash deposits, right? I didn't say that. Are I, there I, cash I, deposits which line up with the money that you have allegedly received from Ms. Willis to quote pay you back for her part of the trips? So, so here's the thing. In my bank records, you will see cash deposits. You will see check deposits i can't say that you, you look through the bank records and you won't see cash deposits because i have two sources of of income sir i income comes from my private practice my firm and income comes from the the contract here with with fulton county um during the course of private practice occasionally i will have occasion to deposit cash into my account and in preparation for this hearing and your testimony did you go through your bank records to find out if you could locate any cash deposits that would corroborate your your testimony no sir i i, I didn't go through my bank records at all now um so what you would do the money that you received of course, the, the money that you receive from your work for Fulton County, that's public funds, correct? No, sir. It's private funds. It's my public funds pay you to do work for Fulton County, correct? Tell me what the definition of a public fund is. A public fund would be your funds as in not fund, but funds money, public money as in money from taxpayers, either in Fulton County or the state of Georgia, pay you to do the work that you're doing here in this case, yes or no? One or the other, I'm certain. You know which one? The case. I don't know which one, no, sir. Uh, now, those you would take those public funds, and those public funds were then used, deposit in your account, and they were then used to pay uh, for the on the credit cards for the trips that you would take 
with uh, Ms. Willis, correct? I object to the question as far as the characterization of public funds. The witness didn't testify to that, and I don't believe there's been any evidence to that. Once it's paid to Mr. Wade, it's private funds. Well, the point of it is, is that you got money. Right, Mr. Gill is rephrasing. Yeah, I'll, I'll rephrase. Let's break it down. You got money from Fulton County for the work that you do here, right? Yes, sir. You would send in invoices. <laughs> and they would pay you money, correct? Yes, sir. Those money, that the word private money, that money was money from either the citizens of Fulton County or from the state of Georgia, correct? Public, that's what I mean by public funds. Agreed? Well, I, I, I guess I'm having trouble with the the the, the notion that the, the, the citizens of Fulton County have paid me any funds. I'm not certain the funding source. I can tell you that either the state of Georgia or Fulton County has written me a check. So that would be those two entities are public entities, correct? Yes. So they would, that would be public funds, right? Right? Yeah. Yes. And that Ooh, those public funds yes on that one. are from the same source that you would then use to pay out uh, on your uh, on your uh, your expenses for the trips that you took Miss Willis on, correct? No, sir. As as I testified to moments ago, I I have income coming in from my law firm. I also have income coming in from the, the funds that we're here discussing now from either the state of Georgia or Fulton County and or both. I'm I'm not certain what it is. So what to percent? say so to say Sorry, that I didn't mean to cut I'm, you off. Go ahead. So to say that I'm paying a credit card statement with funds coming from Fulton County or the state of Georgia would, would not be an accurate statement because the funds could have very well come from my private practice. What percentage of your income in 2022 came from money for your working on this case or from your partners working for the Fulton County office? In 2022, I would, I would say 50-50. You think 50-50 in 2022? Yes, sir. What about 2023? Probably 60-40. 60-40? Yes, sir. So uh, the money that would be in those accounts, at least 60% of those, in your view, would be public funds, that those monies were then used to pay for the expenses that you had incurred for the trips that you took Miss Willis on, the cruises, the uh, the Napa Valleys, the uh, the uh, Bahamas, correct? Right? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, and now, what you what you did is that when you when you signed on in the in uh, November first uh, of twenty twenty one, devil eyed Elvis. That's when you signed on, on Twitter. the backwards uh, dress guy <laughs> for the anti uh, anti corruption matter. Shut right? Devil yes, sir. Elvis. Now, Thank you so much. As you know, in your engagement letter, it doesn't say that you're signing on and your scope of work is to work on the uh, the Trump special grand jury investigation. Doesn't. Shut up, Parker. Watching with T. That you're signing on to work on anti uh, anti corruption. Thank you so much. The anti corruption unit matters, correct? Yes, sir. Matters with a with a plural, correct? Yes, sir. So in your contract. There is no specific reference to any specific case. Isn't that right? That's correct. Okay. Now, if one um, of the mods could drop the link. You to didn't Parker sign on his channel. Y'all go check him out. The duration, Excellent there was a period you have a contract and then it would uh, then expire. And then you would have a new contract, correct? Yes, sir. Now, of course, the, the extension that you received, the first one was in November of 2021. And then, uh, you filed, or excuse me, there was a renewal in, in November the 15th of 2022. Is that, is that right? Sounds right. Oh, okay. Now, that was right after you got re-upped re by Ms. Will, uh, Willis, the right re after uh, you took uh, Ms. Willis uh, to Aruba. Uh, isn't that right? <laughs> On that November the 1st, 2022 trip, to Aruba and through November the 4th, 2022. 
correct? What does re-up mean? Well, re-up means <laughs> you know what came back, means, the contract was up, and then on November the 15th, you and this will signed a new contract for you, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, when you were in uh, taking her to uh, the Aruba and on the, on the cruises, and the, excuse me, the resort there, did you discuss your re-upping uh, of the uh, of signing an extension on your contract? No, sir. Uh, so but, you, but you make an excellent point. Um, I'm, I'm glad you pointed that out. So the, 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 the trip to Aruba, the, the contract was not in existence then. So you're saying, so you're saying that you were not under contract. In, in, in your contract, did you send any invoices in? for work that you did after your contract, your first contract expired? No, sir. You did? No, sir. So, uh, when that expired, that was it. So and then you're saying that after the Aruba trip, you get re-upped with a new contract, re right? re <laughs> I signed a new contract, yes, now, sir. Was there any modifications on that contract? Did you get um, an ex extension on the cap that you were limited on the first one? Were there any modifications at all, Mr. Wills? Excuse me, I've done that again. I, I apologize. No, I've, I've been called worse. Way. I'm sorry. Uh, I've, I've been called worse. Uh, um, now, were there any modifications on that? Um, do, you, do you have the contracts in front of you where you could? Uh, I don't have it in front of me, but I think that. Uh, because I believe the, as the work gradually, um, as the time of the work gradually increased, the the hourly cap would would increase. In other words, starting out um, starting out the investigation, it was impossible to anticipate um, the level of uh, cooperation from during the course of the investigation from some of the witnesses. So, if you assume that there would be great cooperation um, with the witnesses um, in terms of uh, interviewing and speaking and being vol voluntarily speaking with you, it doesn't take as much time. Um, so after getting into it, realizing that most of the witnesses um, were not willing to speak or willing to turn over evidence or information, um, quickly you figure out that this is going to take a little more time than originally anticipated. And because of that, you have to uh, compensate for for those hours. And that's why there was a compensation on your extension. Yes, uh, sir. the the caps. A cap. Now, did Mrs. Willis? Uh, excuse me. Uh, did Miss Willis review your invoices with you when you would submit them? Never. Uh, did anyone ever question whether or not you worked twenty four hours in one day and billed twenty four hours in one day? I've never worked twenty four hours in one day and billed twenty four hours in one day. Okay. And I'm glad you asked me that question because okay. I'd like the opportunity to talk about that. I think you should go ahead. So if you look at that invoice where where it says 24 hours in one day, it, it actually doesn't say one day. If you look at the top of the invoice, it says date completed. The date that's reflected on that invoice reflects the date that the work was completed. It doesn't say when it started. It just says this is the date that is completed. So if you go through the invoices, probably around the first five or six, you'll see that that's the billing format. I would bill only after that particular task has been completed. That's why you see a 24 hour period with the one day there. I kind of wish some of the experts who had opined on that had called me and asked me the question, but there was never a billing of 24 hours in one day. Now, probably around the sixth or seventh invoice, you see the format changed. I started using a range so that it got less confusing, right? I'm confused, so maybe you can correct it. Okay. Um, in in exhibit uh, 14, you've got a you've got down uh, a specific day mm -hmm. prepared cases for pretrial, November the fifth. <laughs> 2021, oh 24 hours at $250 <laughs> an hour, 6000 uh, Looks like we have a new troll that about, just entered the chat. This was about a range. It was about the work that you did on November the 5th. 
Mr. Gillen, look at the top of the invoice where it says date completed. Yeah, what I want you to do, Mr. Wade, is focus on the on the date that you have down there and tell the court what you billed for on November the 5th, 2021. I thought it was already in. I thought. <laughs> Again, Mr. Gillen, it says completed date, date completed. You want to read that one? <laughs> Lucifer Ratzinger <laughs> provides a $20 super chat and it reads, Miss Piglet is getting her fanny spanked in court. Mr. Willis, excuse me? I met Mr. Wade ready for some re-ups with Fanny. Ready for some re-ups. <laughs> <laughs> Lucifer Ratzinger. Shut up, Lucifer. <laughs> the dates that you see here are the dates that that work was completed. So on November the 5th, I completed the task of preparing the cases for pretrial. That's the date I completed it. Just then read it took you, me. Just read if you just would. Read the shit. My question was, read out loud the entry for November the 5th, 2021, and how many hours you billed that day. Just, just do that for me, if you would. I can't do that. Excuse me, I believe the witness is entitled to answer his question. Yes, it wasn't the question that Mr. Gillen asked. All right, well, the question now is to read a certain entry. So uh, I, I just read into the record, Mr. Wade, on November the 5th, 2021, how many hours did you bill the citizens of Fulton County for on that day? Just read it out, please. I completed the task on November 5th, 2021. 24 hours was billed at $250. Look at that smirk. <laughs> now, He's been when you were, you talked about your relationship with uh, Miss Willis, and your testimony is that it began in 2022. Do you remember that testimony? No, sir. Our relationship began in our, your romantic relationship began in 2022 is yes that sir that's yes, your sir. testimony yes sir okay now say it again when 2022 you were re-upped on this contract you had a romantic relationship already established with miss willis yes or no in 2022 you know when yes, you were re-upped on november the 15th 2022 you had a romantic relationship with Miss Wilkes. I signed the second contract. Yes, sir. Answer my question, please. On, I'm not going to use the words re up. Signed up. <laughs> uh, on the, we we re up or whatever you want to call it. Your contract on November the 15th, 2022. You had a, a romantic relationship already existing with Miss Wilkes. Yes or no? I signed the contract, the second contract. Yes, sir during the course no, of no, a romantic she, relationship. Yes or no, you had a romantic relationship with her at the time that you signed up the extension on no, November the 15th, 2022, yes or no? The answer to that question is yes. Thank you. Now, uh, the this was before the special purpose grand jury uh, uh, re released any, uh, uh, any a report, isn't that correct? Correct? Are you asking me if it's before the work was completed or before the the special purpose grand jury actually released publicly released the report when they were two different reports? Your relationship with this with Miss Willis already existed when the special purpose grand jury released its report, correct? At the time the report was released, yes, sir. But and you understand that the report had the 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 work had been completed prior to the release of the report. You understand that? And uh, your relationship with Miss Willis, of course, was prior to the indictment in this case, correct? Yes, sir. Your Honor, if I may just ask uh, my uh, folks over here whether there's anything I need to clean up on. That's all the questions, Your Honor, I have. Thank you. Your Honor, I do have questions. 
He did not like the word re up. Oh, shit. I don't think we went through. No, really right. didn't. They got a few more questions, but man, I got to stop the show for our brother Thane Mithra. Everybody write Thane in the damn chat. God damn. Oh my God. <laughs> Shout out to Thane Mithra. Y'all know Thane. My, but listen, we got 10,000 people in here, but I know y'all must know Thane, one of, uh, one of the supporters of the entire space. Uh, my biggest supporter, biggest encourager. He shows me and the channel so much love, so much encouragement. Not only me, AV, my co-host on her channel, so many other channels this man sponsors. He has sponsored um, this stream. He's a sponsor of this stream. He's a sponsor of the last stream. He's a sponsor of the stream before that. He's really become the the, the series sponsor. Yes. Not <laughs> He is this whole series sponsor mm -hmm. uh, talking about Nathan Wade, Fannie Willis against the president, Donald J. Trump. Y'all know Thane, he came up, um, I believe it was yesterday, dropped so much knowledge. Everybody was shouting him out. Damn near 12, 13, 14,000 people. And the, the, the knowledge, the reception that y'all gave him was, was amazing and warranted at the same time. Thane is such a high value man. The, 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 the information, the knowledge, the wisdom that Thane has. And y'all see it reflected um, not only in, in what he says, but also in his character. You see it, how he supports so many people, so many YouTubers, so many content creators. Guys, y'all aren't YouTubers, so y'all don't know, man. <laughs> it's tough. It is absolutely tough. YouTubers were presented with so many different conflict so many times uh we make videos no one fucking watches them mm -hmm. people hate on us they leave us mean comments they dox us they call you know all types of names and start looking for our family members for youtubers man there's some shit now with some good stuff too you know there's time freedom financial freedom a lot of times but to get there can take years you know i almost quit twice myself youtube because i was making videos i thought i had a lot of knowledge no one gave a shit. No one was watching. And the only thing that spurred me on was people like Thane. People were like, listen, just keep going. Keep going. It's going to be okay. Just keep going. And that's what every single content creator needs because it's such a hard road to, to travel down. And so to, for, for Thane to, to support me for so long, and again, not only me, but so many other content creators, he himself is not a content creator. And so really by default, he really doesn't know the impact that he has. But that's an impact just on content creators. Every now and then he'll bless us and he'll come up and hit the link and talk. And the wisdom that he gives, not only me and other content creators, but everybody in the chat is absolutely amazing. Man, this brother has an open invitation for a dinner in Atlanta whenever he wants to come by. He says he's coming, he never comes, but that's okay. I know my man is busy. <laughs> But the amount of indebtedness and appreciation that I have for this man just cannot be overstated. It is impossible. So, guys, listen, I, I'll be honest. I, I really don't ask y'all for anything, not one thing. But please, from the bottom of my heart, please write Thane Mithra in the damn chat. <laughs> write Thane Mithra in the chat. Oh, my God. And because of thing blessing us so much, guys, I am going to open it up to everybody. We're going to open the doors. So if you have been waiting to get in, come on in. <laughs> Let us know, do you think Donald Trump is going to be convicted or do you think he's going to be free right in the chat? Do you think he's going to be convicted or do you think he's going free? And while you're writing that, please take a moment to thank Thane. He has opened up the doors for you. Uh, shout out to Miami guy. He says, I'm free. <laughs> right. Come on in, guys. Come on in. Somebody yeah. said about time. Y'all <laughs> better thank Thane. Thank Thane. We're we opening up the doors. Shout out for what? He said free at last. They were waiting. <laughs> Thane is freeing the people. Thane is, he's a man of the people. <laughs> They're free. There's free. There's free. Shout out to Thane. <laughs> Thane opening it up. All right. Opening it up. Get in here. Get in here. Shout out to Arbon Wiggins. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thane. Again, just cannot tell you how important you are to me as a person. 
also as a content creator and to so many other content creators. So thank you so, so much. Thane. Shout out to Thane Mithra. <laughs> All right, let's keep it going. But y'all, y'all see Thane. Did I put him in the banner? Let me put my man Thane in the banner. Thank you again to Dale Triplett, a.k.a. <laughs> Officer Keep It Real. He was the stream sponsor for so long, but you got the series sponsor in the house who has freed all of the people. Somebody said Martin Luther Thane. Hell no. <laughs> Martin Luther. <laughs> y'all ain't right. <laughs> he gave y'all ninja freedom, boy. <laughs> Martin Luther Thane. <laughs> Y'all are hilarious. Y'all are hilarious. 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 All right. Let's keep it going. (laughs) Martin Luther Thane. Hell no. All right. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. The commission, he was going to go first. Hell no. Allow him to go first. That's what I thought I had asked for. All right. Let me. With the understanding, next time we're going to keep going in order and I skip around the order. All right. That's why I brought it up because I thought that's okay. All right, Mr. Sado. Thank you. Oh, so this is Donald. I'm going to try to keep my yes. This is Boots. This is Boots. This is Donald Trump's attorney. And I'm going to also, of course, try not um, to go back into specific questions that have already been asked. Okay. Yes, sir. When did your relationship with Ms. Willis end? 2023. Can you give us an approximation of, not by date, but by month? Uh, <clears throat> summer 2023. Um, forgive me. I'm a, I'm a man. We don't do the date thing. Um, wow. He's right. Summer right. 23, I would say. June, maybe. Okay. Okay. Using the euphemism personal relationship, did you have any personal relationship at all with Miss Willis after the summer of 2023? I want to make sure that I'm answering your question. Are you, because I, let me, let me rephrase if I might, the way it has been characterized in for example, the response of the state, and I believe in your affidavit, is there's a difference between a personal relationship and a professional relationship, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. I'm not talking about a professional relationship. I'm talking so about Donald personal Trump's attorney, guys. Mm-hmm. Have you had a personal relationship at all? And you know what I mean by that. After the summer of 2023. Are you asking me if I had intercourse with the district? And oh, we're gonna. I'm a, I want to hear about the intercourse. <laughs> but this is the attorney that submitted the affidavit, the AT and T affidavit, mm-hmm. the affidavit about the cell hawk tower. So this is the guy who got the records from AT and T and introduced this bombshell into the court of public opinion. I think he's about to catch him now. He's going to ask those exact questions. Mm, so pertaining to everything. So this is actually a really good part that we're watching. Awesome. So so uh, AV is saying, listen up, guys. Listen up. This is very, very important right here. It has been characterized in, for example, the response of the state, and I believe in your affidavit, is there's a difference between a personal relationship and a professional relationship. Correct? Yes, sir. Okay. I'm not talking about a professional relationship. I'm talking about a personal relationship. Have you had a personal relationship at all? And you know what I mean by that. After the summer of 2023. Are you asking me if I had intercourse with the district attorney? I I was trying not to, but I I guess the. If you're going to characterize it as that, the answer would be. The answer would be no. Mm. So it's been purely professional since the summer of 2023. So so that's where we're having issues. Um, Okay. Okay. You'll have to explain because I don't know what the issue would be. No, I, I will explain to you. Thank you. Um, the, the, you say personal. Um, we're very good friends, probably closer than ever because of these attacks. But if you're asking me about specific intercourse, the answer is no. How about if I change it from intercourse to romantic? No. 
during the direct examination, you made a statement, at least I believe I heard it correctly, that you personal relationship. And now I'm talking about that characterized the sexual romantic relationship was not a secret. Is that correct? Wait. If you're asking me if people knew that we were having sex, no, they didn't. I'm asking you whether the people knew that you were dating, whether you were romantically involved. You said that it was not a secret. Oh, it, it wasn't a secret. It was just private. My, my, my mother knew, obviously. Okay. Did so anyone in knew. the district attorney's office that has worked on this case know that you were dating or had a romantic relationship with district attorney Willis? I don't know what they knew. Well, hmm. did you tell anyone? No. Do you have any knowledge of whether Miss Willis revealed it to anyone? I have no clue. Okay. Uh, so as far as you know, as far as you know from personal knowledge, no one in the DA's team knew, correct? That's correct. Okay, so if it was a legitimate relationship, is there any particular reason why it was kept secret or private? It wasn't kept secret, it was kept private. And the purpose for that was? It's what we chose to do. I'm asking you why though, not just because you chose. Why, if you're dating someone, why keep it private? So, a few reasons. The first one is, and I want to say this respectfully in the right way. Um, there are some people who are in the public eye who just don't like it, don't wish to be there. Um, I have tried to have lunch or dinner with her publicly, and I, I can't count the number of people that would approach the table or would accost us as we're trying to walk into a restaurant and just have lunch or have a meal. Um, it is not secret, it is private. We don't want the world, the world, uh, asking questions or, didn't or want interrupting YouTube to know. <laughs> at that time. So we weren't trying to keep anything a secret, Mr. Seda. Um, yeah. there's nothing secret or salacious about having salacious. a private life. Nothing. I'm not suggesting that there was. I'm asking the questions. When you went on the various trips that have been outlined, by both Mr. Gillen and by uh, Ms. Merchant. Did anyone in the district attorney's office know that the two of you were traveling on personal trips together? To my knowledge, Mr. Sadow, no. Okay. And again, that was for privacy, according to your testimony. Privacy, yes, sir. Okay. Did you and Ms. Willis go to the Hapeville condo Lucifer Ratzinger <laughs> prior to your relationship starting the beginning of 2022 prior to having physical contact prior to having intercourse did we go to the Hapeville condo again you keep going to intercourse I'm trying not to but fine oh. the answer to that my question would be yes did you and Miss Willis go to the Hapeville condo prior to but I want to say November 1st of 2021. Yes. Okay. And the purpose for going to the Hapeville condo with Miss Willis prior to 2021 would have been what? Or prior to November 1 of 2021. Could, could, have, been, what? could have been any number of things because at, at that time. At, That's what I'm asking to tell me. Yeah. Could have been any number of things because at that time um, she had a friend living in that condo. Miss, Miss Yerdy lived in that Two condo. Chains. Two chains. Okay. So, <clears throat> it maybe was my question was poorly worded. Let me try again. Your answer is yes. Prior to November first of twenty twenty one, you would have gone to the Hapeville condo and been there with Miss Willis, correct? Yes. And you would have been there, as you indicated, for many reasons, right? Yes. Can you give me just list a few of the reasons? Miss Yurdy resided there went to visit her, um, maybe went to talk about uh, a, a document that I received. Um, you would go to the condo I to talk about a document that you received? Absolutely. Okay, go ahead. At 3 a.m.? Any other reasons? None come to mind. None come to mind? No, sir. And uh, would you say that was frequent? When I say frequent, do you think prior to November 1st of 2021, you were at the condo more than 10 times? No, sir. 
So it'd be less than 10 times. Yes, sir. So if phone records were to reflect that you were making phone calls from the same location as the condo before November uh, 1st of 2021, and it was on multiple occasions, the phone records would be wrong? If phone mm. records reflected that, yes, sir. They'd be wrong. They'd be wrong. Okay. Did you, where did you live during that time? Right here. Did y'all hear Ooh. that? Did y'all hear that? So what, what did we just hear, A.V.? Mm. What was the significance of this now? He's asking him probing questions about those phone records. Because remember, guys, Boots knew that they had them already. Boots had somebody working on this. They knew that the phone records were sketchy. They were specifically looking at the, the records that we talked about yesterday. So that 11-month period because November 1st is when he got appointed. And he just asked him, he said, hey, were you at her house prior to no November 1? And he goes, yeah. And he's like, why would you be there? And you're like, oh, you know, number of reasons. Like I could have been bringing her a document, something along those lines, right? But then he goes, um, talking about the phone records, they would be accurate, right? And he goes, no, they wouldn't be accurate. That's not exactly what he just said 30 seconds ago, but he's basically saying that the phone records would be wrong. Mm. So is he saying that, guys, listen, I don't I haven't seen any phone records, so he's denying. All right. So let's, mm -hmm. let's let's take a look. Let's listen to what he's saying. Thank you so much for that breakdown, A.V. Everybody listen up. Do you say that was frequent? When I say frequent, do you? Here we go. Here uh, we go. A, a document that I received. Um, you would go to the condo to talk to about see. a document that you received? Absolutely. OK, go ahead. Absolutely. Any other reasons? None come to mind. None come to mind. No, sir. And uh, would you say that was frequent? When I say frequent, do you think prior to November 1st of 2021, you were at the condo more than 10 times? No, sir. So it'd be less than 10 times. Yes, sir. Mm. So if phone records were to reflect that you were making phone calls from the same location as the condo before November uh, 1st of 2021, and it was on multiple occasions, the phone records would be wrong? If phone records, oh, he says, would the phone records be wrong? Right. Talking about the multiple occasions. Listen up, guys. Location as a condo. None come to mind. No, sir. And uh, would you say that was frequent? When I say frequent, do you think prior to November 1st of 2021, you were at the condo more than 10 times? No, sir. Were so you at the condo more than 10 times? Now, what did yeah. the phone records reveal? The phone records revealed that he was at the condo more than 35 times. And Boots knows that. 35 times. And Boots has the information. So he's setting him up. It's an ambush. This is a man who's, this is the face of a man who's being ambushed right now. <laughs> Y'all remember, remember he was smiling? He ain't smiling no more. <laughs> He's like, what the hell do you know now? Oh, that you face. Know like, you're like, hey. Oh, my God. That face is classic. Look at the face. <laughs> <laughs> he was just smiling and laughing. Oh. He ain't smiling no more. He's like, what do you know? How do you know this? Right? So this is the face of an ambush man. <laughs> Would you say that was frequent? When I say frequent, do you think prior to November 1st of 2021, you were at the condo more than 10 times? No, sir. So it'd be less than 10 times. Yes, sir. Yeah. So if phone records were to reflect that you were making phone calls from the same location as the condo before November uh, 1st of 2021, and it was on multiple occasions, the phone records would be wrong? If phone records reflected that, yes, sir. They'd be wrong. They'd be wrong. Okay. Did you, where did you live during that time period? The same place I live now. Which is so not. He's saying that the phone records are wrong mm -hmm. now. Do y'all believe, put a yes in the chat if you believe the phone records are, put wrong if you think the phone records are wrong. And Fane freed all y'all fuckers. So now <laughs> y'all got the freedom of, y'all got, y'all got freedom of expression. All right. Use your freedom <laughs> of expression. That the Thane has gotten you. Put wrong if you think the records are wrong. The phone records. Put right if you think the records are right. Because if the records are right, then this man is screwed, okay? Yeah, because even because he's saying, he asked him, did you make phone calls from that residence? And he's just like, no, I've only been there less than 10 times. But if it's 35 times and the cell towers are picking you up over there, it's interesting. 100%. 100%. Let's go. See here. That you were making phone calls from the same location as the condo before November 
uh, 1st of 2021, and it was on multiple occasions, the phone records would be wrong? If phone records reflected that, yes, sir. They'd be wrong? They'd be wrong. Okay. Did you? Where did you live during that time period? The same place I live now. Which is not in Hapeville, correct? It is not in Hapeville. It is north of Atlanta, the city of Atlanta, correct? It is. Okay. And the other, any other reasons why you would be in the Hapeville area on multiple occasions prior to November 1st of 2021? Let's see. What's the Porsche experience is there? I'm sorry? The Porsche experience is there? So, okay, so that would be no. Um, any other um, yes, sir. The, the, so the Porsche experience, it's just an attraction where people can drive Porsches, you know, nice Porsches. There's a Porsche club and they meet down there and drive around. So the attorney's asking him, the attorney's find, trying to figure out, trying to trap him, trying mm -hmm. to say, you tell me all the reasons why you would be down there. He says, the Porsche experience? Okay, that's one. What else? Airport is there. The airport, right? Okay. The airport is right near Hapeville, right down there in, uh, in by South Atlanta. Airport in Hapeville. Yes, sir. Delta Airlines is yeah. headquartered there. Um, let's see. <clears throat> restaurants there. Okay. Um, there are no good restaurants in Hateville. That's bullshit. And he lives far away. Like a Popeye's chicken. If you have, if that's your recollection, that's fine. I'm not asking you to try to remember everything, but if oh, that's okay. Okay. Um, did you discuss your affidavit filed in connection with the response with Ms. Willis? No, sir. Did you know personal knowledge whether Ms. Willis um, reviewed your affidavit before it was included with the response? I have no clue. So as far as you know, personal knowledge, Ms. Willis did not know what you said in the affidavit. I didn't give it to her. That's what I said. You have no personal knowledge. No personal knowledge. And as far as you know, no one else has told you that she did or didn't. I hadn't asked anyone. The we've kind of worked this up a little bit, and the numbers could be off. But according to our numbers, um, ten thousand dollars, give or take, would have been reflected on your credit card statements in connection with things um, of potential benefit to Miss Willis. Okay. I want you just to assume that of the 10, assuming that there was $10,000 that you had on your credit cards. Is it your testimony that Miss Willis paid you back $10,000 in cash? Yes. Not I, I, I object, I, the characterization of $10,000 for Miss Willis's travel, I don't believe is an accurate reflection of what the numbers, at least the summary that I've been provided by the defense would reflect. I think that's joint travel. Um, and so I, is that right, Mr. Sigo? I'm sorry. No, it's, it's, it, it's not joint travel. But uh, so all I'm trying to understand, I, I, I'll rephrase because I don't want to get bogged down on specific numbers. You would have received thousands of dollars in cash from Miss Willis, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And the thousands of dollars in cash from Miss Willis, do you know, not, I'm not asking you whether she took it out of her pocketbook or she took it out of a suitcase. I'm saying, do you know the source of the cash? J just that, out of her pocketbook. Yes. You don't know where she obtained the cash? I, I didn't ask her. And the whole time that you, she was paying you in cash, you never said, hey, why do you have this amount of cash? Why would, Mr. S Mr. Sadow, in my practice, people come into my law firm all the time with cash. I never questioned where they got it. Yeah, but we're talking. Dang, I actually made the. I actually. This is a hundred percent true. I made a video about it. No one fucking liked it. I had to put it in members only. Now, now that y'all are members, y'all can watch that video. All right. Ah. Everybody thought I was defending Fanny, but I was saying, guys, attorney. I didn't even know he said this. Attorneys, we have cash. We really do. Even in this brother's financial affidavit, he put he has five thousand dollars in cash. Clients come in with cash all the time. Now, to be fair, they used to come in even a lot more back in the day. But now everybody's got these credit cards and they're tapping and all this stuff. So it's less cash. But attorneys are flush with cash. Clients come in, especially criminal clients. Really, the highest are criminal clients, family law clients, and immigration. Immigration is the craziest because the Mexicans, the Guatemalans, the Hondurans, they got cash, cash, cash. 
A lot of them don't have work permits, so they, they can't work legally, so they get paid under the table. How do you think they get paid under the table? In cash. They take all that money home. A lot of them don't trust banks, and they just stuff it in the mattresses, stuff it in the in the closets. It's nothing for a Hispanic household that might that might have two families, three families, all in the same house. It's nothing for that house to have $75,000 in cash. So when this man says people come in and pay in cash all the time, I can tell you as a 20-year attorney myself that he is absolutely telling the truth. Where she obtained the cash. I, I didn't ask. Now, the, and the whole time, he yes. in private practice, right? And yeah. he, he says that in private practice, you know, Fanny's a damn... <laughs> Fanny is a government uh, officer, but mm -hmm. Fanny did have a private practice beforehand. I think she practiced for a couple of years. So in two years, you can absolutely get $15,000, $20,000 in cash. That, that's not a thing. But, you know, you're going to start using it. So where are you going to get it? Fanny said she got the thousands of dollars in cash from going public, going to Publix and, you know, taking it out. Just $40 before yeah, racks. Yeah. We're just going to take back $4,000. That's exactly right. So, uh, but this man absolutely can have cash in his house. And Fanny could have cash in her house too, based on her her two or three years in private practice. And that you, she was paying you in cash. You never said, hey, why do you have this amount of cash? Why would Mr. S Mr. Sadow, in my practice, people come into my law firm all the time with cash. I never question where they got it. Yeah, but we're talking not about people that come into your law firm. We're talking about the district attorney of Fulton County, who I'm assuming receives a paycheck. She doesn't get paid in cash. So just like you assumed, I assumed she got it from her paycheck. I don't know. Okay, but of course, it's already been, and I'm not going to go back into it. You've not seen any records indicating withdrawals of cash from Miss Willis at all. Why would I ask her? I didn't no, ask. Sir. All I said is you haven't, right? No, sir. Okay. Now. And shout out to Cindy Lou Woos. Cindy Lou Woot, thanks Carl 1412 for the gifted membership. Cindy Lou Woot has manners, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Cindy. She's got manners. She's got good home training. That's what we all aspire to have. If you guys receive a gifted membership, be like Cindy. Tell thank the person you. thank you. Shout out to Cindy Lou. Let's go. Can you explain why you filed for divorce one day after you were hired Ooh. by Miss Willis? You filed on November 2nd of 2021. You're hired on November 1st of 2021. Why this the day after? You mean one day before? So you filed for divorce one day after you were hired, right? Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll answer your question. Okay, please. So in 2015, um, when my wife had the affair, Damn. Um, mm. we had a conversation that we would divorce right then. Again, the better practice, um, at least for my children at the time, was to stay in place until the youngest could graduate and matriculate into college. We did that. When she graduated, matriculated into college, at the time, my wife had moved back and forth to Houston, to Texas. So she's in Texas. We take our child off to college. We come back to Georgia for a brief period of time. Divorce gets filed. She gets served. There we go. Now, the reason that date was selected. Yes, sir. That's, that's what I asked. The, the, the specific reason that that specific date was selected was because she was only in town for a brief time. Your Honor, this is attorney client privilege. Why he decided to file his and why do you have the right to object on his behalf for attorney client privilege? Because well, I don't make a formal objection. All right, there we go. Uh, and that was interesting. I, I believe that she, he's already attempted to answer this question and there was no privilege raised. So he's given a partial answer and, and now he's about to finish that. So, first of all, I don't think it's covered by attorney client privilege. and. and I'll deal with that if you want me to. But otherwise, he's already answered part of it. So he doesn't get to say, now I'm going to stop. So, Well, it was a long preface, but I don't think it ever actually got to what might have been at issue there. So if you can lay the foundation, we'll deal with the objection. Okay. Take a step back. Shout out to okay. William. Thank you so much, William. You realize that an attorney-client privilege is the 
privilege of the client, correct? Yes, sir. And you, in connection with your representation, at least has been um, proffered to the court uh, by Mr. Bradley, that it's up to you to decide whether you want to raise the privilege, right? Yes, sir. It's not up to Mr. Bradley. Yes, sir. So you have the power in order to get to the truth of the matter. You have the power to waive Your the Honor. attorney client privilege, Your do you Honor. not? I believe that's an appropriate question. The privilege is there. The Whether he uses it or not, it doesn't matter why. Mr. Sato, I think if we're trying to get to the answer to your question, let's figure out whether it covers the question you were trying to okay. get to. And your, if I may finish, and your position is you have no intention of waiving your attorney-client privilege, correct? That's correct. All right. So now, um, can you answer the question why you waited until November 2nd, the day after you were hired by Ms. Willis to file for divorce? I, I can. Okay. So, uh, again... Joycelyn had relocated to Texas and she had been in Texas for months. I get it now. Mm -hmm. Y'all remember on his financial affidavit, he was saying that he was paying $1,500 a month for rent. He was paying the wife's rent. He was paying the wife's rent. Now, if my wife cheated on me, why the fuck am I going to pay her rent? Right? But... <laughs> whatever like, like fanny said this is a southern gentleman all right mm -hmm. and even though that she cheated on me she's still a woman she's still a damsel in distress so i'm gonna take care of her lead like, all right you do that shit you want to baby. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what it is okay so let's let's keep going till november 2nd the day after you were hired by miss willis to file for divorce i, I can't okay so uh, again, Joycelyn had relocated to oh, Texas oh, oh. and she had been in Texas for months. She was only here for a brief period of time to drive my daughter's car back with her. And when she came here to do that, I was able to then get her served. It's convenient. So your answer as to why you waited until the day after you were hired by Miss Willis, on which would be November 1st, 2021, to file the complaint for the divorce on November 2nd, 2021, your testimony under oath is because your she was wife here. was here. Was here. But had not been here in October, had not been here in September, had not been here in, Oct in August of 2021. She, she had been in Texas taking care of her a ailing mother so and your an aging father. So the first opportunity that I had after sp speaking with my lawyers to take care of that was the date it was filed and served because she happened to be here. It had nothing to do with, that was purely coincidental, that contract. I wonder if Terrence was still his lawyer at that, on that day. Yes, sir. And, and understand that this was by agreement between between she and I, she being my wife and I, that we would divorce when the children uh, matriculated out and that uh, there would actually have been an agreement attached to the filing. Um, it became apparent that the agreement wasn't wasn't going to happen and things got a little contentious. So that's when the, the privilege will kick in and and I was forced to do it when I did it. So if I understood correctly, again, you tell me if I'm wrong. Is it your testimony that your wife was not in Atlanta, Georgia or the metro area throughout October of 2021? Face. No, That's in October in October of 2021, she was back and forth between here and Texas. So she was at least on some occasions in the Atlanta area. But that was during the time when we were working Not through the consent yes no. that mm -hmm. that fell through. Okay, I think we're pretty far afield on, on relevance. The answer to the question about the timing of the divorce filing. And Understood, Miss Cross. Uh, Miss Sano, where are we going from here? <laughs> we're, we're about. To finish this area since I'm not going to be able to go any, any further about if we want to call the X, we'll call the X for that purpose. 
Well, we might have to discuss whether that's a collateral issue altogether. No, I'm just oh, saying. Oh, they yeah, want to bring Nathan's ex wife? Okay. Mm. All, right. All right. So, current wife stuff. Um, you said that you were aware of the contracts that Mr. Bradley and Mr. Campbell had with the Fulton County District Attorney's Office, correct? Yes, sir. And how did you become aware of those? Just through conversation, they with told me. Conversation with who? Mr. Bradley and Mr. Campbell. So you were discussing matters with Mr. Bradley, which were not related to attorney-client privilege, correct? Related to the contract, yes. Okay, but you were having conversations that would not, even though, if I understood correctly, Mr. Bradley was your attorney at the time, correct? At what time? At the time that... Mr. Bradley received his contract from Fulton County, which would have been beginning of January or in January of 2021, right? Is that the date of his contract? Pretty close. I, I don't know what the date of his contract was, What's but if, if it, if it was after the date of the filing of divorce, then 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 yeah. I'm not talking about I'm not talking about after the date of the filing of the divorce. It's been represented to the court that you had an attorney-client relationship with Mr. Bradley from 2015 forward, Yes, correct? Sir. Yes, sir. That is correct. When Mr. Bradley received his contract with Fulton County, that was in 2021, correct? I don't know. We can prove that through other evidence. But at the time that Mr. Bradley was doing work for Fulton County, if I understand, you still had an attorney-client privilege, at least you're claiming one, with Mr. Bradley, correct? Yes. Okay. So when you talk to Mr. Bradley about matters with his contract in Fulton County, those were not covered by your attorney-client privilege, correct? They were not. Okay, and that meant that not all communications with Mr. Bradley were covered by attorney-client privilege, correct? Well, those certainly weren't. Well, but my question was, not all communications with Mr. Bradley were covered by, at least as you've been represented to the court, by the attorney-client privilege, correct? Those communications were not. So there were communications outside of the attorney-client privilege, correct? With Mr. Yes. Bradley. If you're asking me if I ever communicate with him outside of the attorney-client privilege, the answer is yes, okay. I've communicated with him all outside right. the attorney-client privilege. Um, let's uh, finish this up. And did you call it um, Roman number four? It's just defense. Shout out to and Defense Wrench exhibit Turner. number four. I don't know, Wrench turned in front of the mosque. Mr. Drop Gillen went over Wrench with you your responses to certain interrogatories on May the 30th, 2023. Remember that? Yes, sir. Not going back into those, the words in the interrogatories are already in evidence, so we're not going to do that. But the ones that we've gone that were gone into, there were two of them. And your answer to both of those was none, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Now. And let me just pause here. Shout out to Tamara. I hope that's I hope that's right. I can never if it's Tamara, Tamara. Tamara, how do y'all feel about it now? Tamara is standing, excuse me, standing on business. Tamara says, no matter, Team Fanny, regardless, phone tower means area, not her home. I don't care who she boning. They mad because she getting the job done. Do y'all agree? Put agree with Tamara or do y'all disagree? Put disagree. Tamara's standing on business. She's like, fuck a day of Donald Trump. He mad. Donald is mad. Boots is mad. Everybody mad. It don't matter if she boning this black dude or not. Let her bone who she wants to bone. Do y'all agree or disagree? What does it matter if she boning this dude? Why does it matter? That is an ancillary topic. That is a, 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 a tangential subject. That's not directly on point. The point is, did this man, the one and only president defendant, Donald Trump, interfere with the elections down here in Georgia? Let's stay on topic. That's what Tamara's saying. All right, it's interesting. Do y'all agree or disagree? Let's go. On January 25th of 2024, yes, sir. you again were in a position that you answered 
those same interrogatories, the two that we're talking about. I can get specific if we need to, but as long as we understand we're talking about the same two, yes, right? Sir. Yes, sir. Okay. And they are in defense exhibit number six, and they are interrogatories number four and number five. Okay. Go ahead. No, I want you to be able to see it. So it's a defense exhibit number six. I don't. So you have six up there. I'm told. I'm told that you have six. Okay. Ah, here we are. Okay. You would agree with me that in defense exhibit number six, and we're talking about interrogatories of January 25, 2024. Yes, sir. That as to interrogatory number four, that's the same interrogatory, same words that were in the interrogatory that Mr. Gillen went over, which was dated May 30th of 2023, correct? Yes, sir. And your original response in defense exhibit number six was none, correct? Yes, sir. Your updated mm -hmm. response was, the plaintiff declines to respond to this interrogatory and asserts his privilege pursuant to OCGA section 24-5-505, correct? Yes, sir. Uh, you know that 24-5-505 breaks down into two, two privileges, right? Which, which is why I was specific. I said I asserted the privacy privilege. Well, then that's what I'm asking you. Mm. In your updated response, there's no reference to privacy, correct? Yes, there is in the in the code section, 245-505. Okay, but it also to privacy. Just go with me, okay? That code section says, does it not? No party or witness shall be required to testify as to any matter which may incriminate or tend to incriminate such party or witness or which shall tend to bring infamy, disgrace, or public contempt upon such party or witness. You'd agree with that, right? I'm not reading it. I'm sorry? I'm not reading it. I don't have it in front of me. If, if I may. Mr. Seno, we can, uh, I can take judicial notice that that is what the rule says if you want to ask him any follow-up questions. Okay, thank you. You are not claiming that your answer to number four, interrogatory number four, on January 25th, 2024, incriminates you, that is, as in Fifth Amendment privilege, right? That's correct. You're claiming the second part, that it would, it would, um, bring infamy, disgrace, or public contempt, correct? I'm gonna object to that. I don't think that's the full thing, but, and also the witness doesn't have it in front of them, so I don't know how to respond to that. I'm laughing. several times privacy is largely invoked that session. Overruled. I'm claiming privacy. The privilege that you make reference to is to infamy, disgrace, or public contempt upon the witness, right? Or party. That's the section that you were relying on, correct? If that's what it says, yes, sir. Okay, well, I, I could show you, but I, I think the court has already indicated he can take judicial notice of the statute. So you assume that what I'm telling you is accurate, okay? Yes, sir. Uh, how would an answer of none bring infamy, disgrace, or public contempt upon you? So, as I explained um, in direct of, of Mr. Roman's counsel, um, the minute she elected to intervene into my divorce proceeding, I then started to understand the bigger picture, which was that all the attorneys in the election interference case were colluding with Joycelyn's divorce lawyer. And because mm. of that, I said, privacy. I don't want my divorce proceeding to bleed into this criminal proceeding. I just didn't want that. So you mm. raised a privilege, if I understand, that indicated that your answer would bring infamy, disgrace, or public contempt upon you, right? I'm gonna to object to the relevance of this and ask to answer several times. And while they are doing this, let me give a big shout out to the Tip Network. Shout out to the Tip Network. Shout out to Grover. 
Y'all, if one of the mods could drop my man's uh, channel in the chat, excellent content creator, been killing it on YouTube, absolutely killing it. Uh, one of the, the principal members of the mastermind that I hold, <laughs> the YouTube mastermind. Thank you to everybody who's buying the course as well. If you want to learn how to do this, the description and the link is down below the, the link in the discount code. The discount code, of course, is Fanny, F-A-N-Y. <laughs> but shout out to the Tip Network, one of the um, uh, members of the mastermind and such an important member. So shout out to my man, Tip. Let us keep it going, guys. Mr. Seda, where are we heading with this? Um, I, I think I can finish that up by saying you didn't say none again. You asserted a privilege, correct? That's correct. Okay. And you did the same thing, did you not, with number five? That's correct. Is it, that is, you didn't say none again, right? Correct. Okay. Is the answer to the interrogatory number four, as you have it in front of you, is the answer none? Is the, that the truth? The, 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 the answer is to that interrogatory is as I placed it at the time I responded, sir. I'm That's asking you now, is the answer to that interrogatory the answer is, none? The answer is still privilege. Right. So he's apparently electing to apply the same privilege, Mr. Shout Sinatra. out to Betty Spaghetti, exactly. Sam, and, ma'am. And I have a case which indicates that we can get beyond <laughs> that if the court deems that appropriate. And uh, to what end? Hmm? To what end? Where? that the privilege actually does not apply and he must, he must answer the question. And where does that get us? Even that, if he answers the question, has he already kind of said everything as the nature of the relationship, how long it lasted, when did it end? No, I think it would prove, I, I think if he is forced or compelled to answer the question, he will either answer it falsely by saying none or he answers it truthfully by saying yes and then telling us what it is. That's what I believe. That's why I'm asking. But the interrogatory you're referring to though, the, the question contained there. Two, two interrogatories, yes, sir. It's the entertaining one. It's whether there were other relationships, right? With a specific language that's in the interrogatories. Sure. Haven't you already, haven't you already covered that in all the other questions that we've had so far? Yeah, but we have, but again, the court could, if I could re- require or compel an answer from him as to whether Shut his answer would again. still be none, then we would know whether or not he was telling. And again, guys, this is the Donald Trump's attorney. Donald Trump hired this man to represent him, and he is going straight at the prosecutor who is prosecuting Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. So this is a huge interaction. The man who is prosecuting Donald Trump versus Donald Trump's personal attorney. The truth. Now, if the answer is no, then obviously there was a time in the past where he was not. It simply requires him to now answer under oath what he refused to answer and claimed what I might suggest is a bogus privilege and that you can pierce that privilege because it's a material fact in connection with this case. Shut Again, up, Bob, it's dude. a call that your honor makes. I have the case law that says you can do that, but it's your discretion. Ms. Cross? Your honor, Mr. Vice Chairman ran now for several hours. He's asked very been asked and answered very um, personal questions. Uh, we cover the issues. This is a was making argument, and this is probably an argument to make for the uh, later to the court, and not a question to propound to the so as I see it, the only relevance these interrogatories have to this case really whatsoever would be as either prior inconsistent or consistent statements. And to that, and I think the question has been put to him again and again and again, he's answered how he believes uh, he felt his answer should be and and why he answered a certain way. And as it goes to credibility, I think at this point we're arguing uh, weight, and I don't I don't really see the the value in pushing this this issue further. So all right. Well, the, just for the record, the case that I was going to refer to Please. is State versus Wakefield at three twenty four Georgia Appeal five eighty seven, and specifically. Specifically, Let's see, it would be 590 in which they talk about this specific privilege. This is a uh, 2013 case. And then they footnote to number th- footnote three and footnote three says there are times when the materiality of the evidence outweighs the testimonial privilege. And it goes and explains what that is. That's what I'm bringing. Uh, and I see what you're saying that we could uh, say that. You need to answer the question regardless of the privilege you asserted. At this point, though, I think we've covered that ground and we're ready to move on. Okay. Based on that, I have nothing else. Thank you. Okay. Mr. McCulloch? 
Anything on behalf of Mr. Floyd? Moving through defense counsel. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, no. I'm looking behind you. I Mr. McCauley. So. Yeah. On behalf of Mr. Floyd, he's elbowing you, sir. Okay. Um, Mr. Cromwell. Nothing, All right. Ms. Cross. All right. So now this is Fanny's attorney. Mr. Wade. All right. So just like A.B. said, this is Have Fanny's you still attorney. Got exhibit number 14? So Fanny is attorney. Fanny's attorney is going to examine Fanny's fuck toy. I mean, <laughs> let's be honest. All right. It's a little weird. It's a little weird. All right. Let's, let's see. Let's see what let's see what happens. In front of you. Uh, one with all of the invoices, I believe. I believe I have them all. All right. So you were asked, Mr. Wade, about um, a couple of the invoice uh, items. <coughs> and your testimony, I think, was that the percentage of income post special counsel appointment in November 2021 the percentage of your income roughly after that time was about 50 50 Fulton versus other income from your um, law practice, correct? Roughly, yes, ma'am. Okay. Sometimes more, sometimes less. Yes, ma'am. All right. How about your time? I'm interested in the percentage of your time from, sub, from November 2021 to, let's say, the close of the special purpose grand jury when it was dissolved in January 2023. You estimate for us the percentage of your time that was spent on Fulton County work versus other work. Oh gosh, ninety-nine, one. Ninety-nine percent of the time here in this building, working on this case. All right. It was, as I understood your testimony, it was an intense period in terms of hours while that special purpose grand jury was meeting. Correct. Yes, ma'am. And. Uh, who was head or manager of the election integrity case during that time for the district attorney's office? I was. You were coordinating the efforts? Yes, ma'am. Shout out to Carl. And those efforts included not just the proceedings that were happening in this building, correct? That's correct. Um, you don't need to go all through it, but is your representation that 99.9% .9 of the time, let's restrict it to 2022, 99% of your professional working time was devoted to this case? Yes, ma'am. And the remainder, whatever it was, was to some of your other cases that were ongoing. Yes, ma'am. All right. 2022, I want to focus on that a little bit because if we are looking at, I believe, the financial affidavits, do you have those in front of you as well? I do. The financial affidavit that was filed in your divorce case in January 2022, you estimated your monthly income at that time was $14,000 a month, right? In 22? January 22. Yes, ma'am. January 23, what'd that number come to? 9,000. What about 2024? I, I don't know. Is that there in front of you? Did this man just say he was making $9,000 a month mm -hmm. as a judge and a, and a lawyer? Wait, what? No, in, she's going, she did 2022, 2023. And she just asked him about 2024. Was he not a judge in 2023? I think it was 2022. Yeah, he probably can't be a judge in the special. I mean, it's night court, though. But maybe yeah. it's a conflict. I don't know. Yeah. Let's go. 22? January 22. Yes, ma'am. January 23, what'd that number come to? 9,000. What about 2024? Guys, with his age, being an attorney... You know, being down there 50 years old to make nine thousand dollars a month is crazy. That's that's barely six figures, right? Yeah, let's look it up. Nine thousand a month. Nine thousand times ten is ninety ninety nine, like one oh eight or something like that. And then take taxes out. So he's bringing home about seventy thousand dollars, guys. It's it's hard out here for a pimp. Yeah, it's one oh eight. You're right. Jesus, Christ. that is a very low salary for his qualifications. Let's go. I, I don't know. Is that there in front of you? Is that one? That's not one of the ones that's there in front of you? No, ma'am. All right. So as reflected in those financial affidavits, your income decreased as a result of your work in this case, correct? Significant. The structure of your firm, we talked a lot that's about that, and I don't want to go through Bragg. it anymore but, uh, than we need to, but 2022, the structure of your firm changed. Is that correct? That's correct. All right. 
in the early part of 2022, there were three of you, you and Mr. Campbell and Mr. Bradley, you split expenses. Is that right? That's correct. And you, you profit shared among yourselves, correct? Correct. Right. After Mr. Bradley left the firm, then he there were just hungry. two of you, Shout correct? out to Lee Rocks. That is Lee Rocks, the, no, the cause of the significant change. Yes, ma'am. So now you have two people bringing in income, correct? Correct. And one of those people, you, is spending almost all of your time devoted to um, this election integrity. Hold up, I want to hear this because this talks about partnership dynamics with mm -hmm. in terms of splitting the money. Everybody listen up. Are three of you, you and Mr. Nine thousand. What about 2024? I, I don't know. Is that there in front of you? Is that one? That's not one of the ones that's there in front of you? No, ma'am. All right. So as reflected in those financial affidavits, your income decreased as a result of your work in this case, correct? Significant. The structure of your firm, we talked a lot about that, and I don't want to go through it anymore but, uh, than we need to, but 2022, the structure of your firm changed. Is that correct? That's correct. All right. In the early part of 2022, there were three of you. You and Mr. Campbell and Mr. Bradley, you split expenses. Is that right? That's correct. And you you profit shared among yourselves, correct? Correct. Right. After Mr. Bradley left the firm, then there were just two of you, correct? That is the cause of the significant change. Yes, ma'am. So now you have two people bringing in income, correct? Correct. And one of those people, you, is spending almost all of your time devoted to um, this election integrity case, correct? Yes, ma'am. And your income from this election integrity case uh, is less than what it was the year before. Yes, ma'am. Shout out to Pills, Potions, and Poisons. Kind of One of the mods caps, can drop so the link to her channel in the chat. Let's talk about the monthly cap that was included in your um, contracts, indicating Excellent there was a, a certain threshold that you could reach number of hours a month. And over that amount, you were not going to be compensated, correct? That's correct. All right. And you kind of smile when you said that. That's a little bittersweet there, isn't it? That's bitter, bitter. All right. <laughs> is, it, is that still there in front of you? It is. I want you to take a look, please. That's a collection of exhibits that includes all of your invoices, as was represented. I want you to take a look at invoice number nine. Yes, ma'am. Is that there in front of you? I have it. Invoice number nine, Mr. Wade, indicates that you performed hours of work that you were not compensated for because your cap had been reached. Yes, ma'am. Want you to take up, and what did you do in those circumstances when the hours that you worked per month were more than the cap the, that was in your contract that you were permitted to be paid for? I, I was forced to to lose that time. I didn't get paid for it. Okay, and that's what exhibit number nine shows. Yes, ma'am. All right, and in exhibit number nine, you've got a task hours that were completed and you just didn't bill for it. You noted the time and then a zero beside it because you didn't bill the county for that time. Yes, ma'am. All right. What about exhibit number, um, invoice number 13? Can you flip to that for me? I have it. Is that a similar situation? Yes, ma'am, it is. And what is it on exhibit, num I'm sorry, invoice number 13? This invoice makes me cry. <laughs> There's so many hours here um, that I worked that I couldn't, I couldn't get paid for. So. And you work those hours anyway, Mr. Wade? Oh, absolutely. This is not the type of job that you could walk away from just because you're not getting paid for it. I think there's some professional rules of responsibility to an attorney who's engaged in a, a case. You you have to see it through. So it's not like I could. Just I want to stop right here, guys, because this is very important what he's saying. And this is really one of the parts that sucks about being an attorney. You know, if if you're working at Burger King and you get your 34 hours or whatever, you get paid for all of those hours. You're not working any hours for which you're not getting paid. Now, attorneys, we're different. Uh, and it depends on the type of attorney, but we basically work on billable hours. And so whether we bill, you know, $50 an hour, $100 an hour, $300 an hour, uh, $600 an hour, we work that hour and then we get paid the $600. But there are so many times when we're working 
and then the client stops paying and we have to keep working. We can't always just drop the client. We have to get permission from judges yep. to drop client. If you, you're looking at me, uh, a 20 year attorney over 20 years, let me tell you, <laughs> let me do this. Shout out to AB. Let me look at right in the motherfucking camera. I am owed well over six figures that I will never see in my life because either judges didn't let me out of cases or people stopped paying um, based on stuff that I was doing. I had to keep working even though I knew the money ran out. What this gentleman is saying is that Fanny put a cap on his hours. Fanny said, listen, you can only work. You're only going to get paid 100 hours a month. 200 hours a month, whatever it is, X amount, let's say, uh, let's say 200 hours a month. That's all you're going to get. But because of the job, things that come up, hearings, uh, deadlines, there might have been times when he had to work 250 hours. So if he's supposed to be paid $300 an hour, let's say, and that's too high because of the contract with the government, but let's just say $300 an hour and he could only bill for for 200 hours instead of the 250 that he worked. He missed out on 50 hours. And it's 50 hours times the $300. So what's $300 times 50 hours? That's how much money he lost and he will never get it back. He, he missed 15,000. He missed out on $15,000 in that month. And he already was telling you he's only making $9,000 a month. This is one of the reasons why being an attorney absolutely sucks. And also billable hours. Guys, even if I'm making $250 an hour, let's say, or $300 an hour, I can't always bill that time to you. There's going to be time that I'm going to be working and it's going to be very difficult to justify billing to you. So even though I work in real life 10 hours, I might only be able to bill eight hours or six hours. So I get credit for six hours when I was really in the office working for 10. You know, shout out to Keita G. I think she's corporate. If she's doing the billable stuff, she understands all this. All these attorneys who, who do billable hours, we understand it. It yeah. is very, very difficult. And so, you know, if you're working for the government or whatever. and That's you, what I was just going to say. You get paid for your time, mm -hmm. you know, and a lot of times these government jobs, you leave even get overtime, right? Ain't no such thing as overtime for an attorney. So this is what he's saying. What he's telling you guys is real. It is, it is an absolute hardship. You heard uh, the, some of the, the young thug. Fanny, yeah. Fanny is prosecuting uh, young, uh, young thug, the rapper, and some of his, um, some of his quote unquote associates slash gang members. Some of the attorneys have government contracts that pay them $15,000 a year. <laughs> a year. They took the case and the, oh, they're only making $15,000 for the entire year. They are going to work over $100,000 worth of, of work and are exactly. only going to get paid $15,000. Yeah, and that case has been going on for so long. We started covering it in December of 22. Exactly. Right? And it's like, there's like over, what, what is it, 300 witnesses? So that's something yeah. that's going to take a really long time. And they cannot accept any other cases. So it's not like they can say, well, I'll, I'll take this 15,000 and I'll work on other cases. They cannot because they're in court on that case the entire year. Can you survive on $15,000 a year? So some of y'all, you, know, you know, I get hit up all the time. All lead attorney. Should I become an attorney or my kids go into law school? Should he go to law school? Fuck no. Ninety five percent of the people who go to law school should not go to law school. They think it's one thing. It's an absolute another. It's an absolute. Imagine totally 50 years old making nine thousand dollars a month and working all this time that you're not getting paid for. The math ain't math. So what he's saying, guys, is absolutely true. It is, it's, it's a tough road to be an attorney. This invoice makes me cry. <laughs> there are so many hours here um, that I worked that I couldn't, I couldn't get paid for. 100%. So, and you work those hours anyway, Mr. Wade? Oh, absolutely. This is not the type of job that you could walk away from just because you're not getting paid for it. I think there's some professional rules of responsibility to an attorney who's engaged in a, a case. You you have to see it through. So 
it's not like I could just throw my hands up and say, well, I reached my, my monthly cap. I'm done. I, I, I can walk away. I can't do that. This, this is ongoing. It's constant. And I have to do the work. Can you look at invoice number 23 for me there in exhibit number 14? Yes, ma'am. Does that reflect a similar situation, the hours worked that you were not compensated for? Yes, ma'am. Invoice number 24 and 27, can you take a look at those and let us know if that reflects the same situation? Are you trying to depress me? No. Look at the money I'm doing. <laughs> it's the same, yes. Okay. And there's no work around to that. You didn't attempt to work around that, that um, contractual cap on your hours. Oh, no, ma'am. All right. You were asked a lot of questions, Mr. Wade, about the affidavit that was submitted, correct? Do you recall those questions? I'm sorry, I'm stuck on this invoice. You know, if I was gonna get a benefit, I'd, I'd like that benefit. That, that, that's the one I want. That, that didn't happen. That but, didn't happen. Okay. Right. And there was no renegotiating your contract um, to reflect that those hours should be paid or anything? No, ma'am. Okay. All right. Do you have your affidavit there in front of you? I do. The affidavit, of course, was attached to and provided in support of the state's response to Mr. Roman's motion, correct? Yes, ma'am. All right. And you prepared that affidavit? I did. You signed that affidavit? I did. All of the allegations and the representations in that affidavit are true. Is that right, Mr. Wade? Every one of them. Every one of them. You were asked a lot of questions about our line number 34. Can you turn to that for me, please? It's on page four of that affidavit. Yes, ma'am. Can you read it out loud for me, please? The district attorney and I are both financially independent professionals. Expenses for personal travel were roughly divided equally between us. At times, I have made and purchased travel for District Attorney Willis and myself oh. from my personal funds. At other times, District Attorney Willis has made and purchased travel for she and I from her personal funds. Examples of District Attorney Willis is purchasing plane tickets for she and I with her personal funds for our personal travel are attached. Funds, Mr. Wade. As you understand the term funds, does that include cash? Yes. Does that include credit? Yes. Does that include um, reimbursements? Yes. You didn't represent in your affidavit, Mr. Wade, that you were including all of the receipts from funds or uh, travel expenses that were paid on your behalf by District Attorney Willis, correct? <laughs> That's correct. You had, I think your conversation with Ms. Merchant was, you produced the receipt that you had. Yes, ma'am. Are you aware of any other receipts? What, I may ask this right now. Shout out to everyday people says, what will happen with the employees at the firm since Fannie and Wade are destroying their credibility? Future customers, employees will perceive guilt by association. That's true. And funded the entire trip to the lease. That was her treat to you for a birthday. Great point. Yes, ma'am. And you testified that she purchased the plane tickets for you, correct? Yes, ma'am. And while you may not have had the receipts on hand when you filled out the affidavit, because they weren't in your possession, are you aware now that there are receipts and um, that it reflects that the district attorney? Uh, this is like to I've got a copy. Do you remember, Mr. Wade, approximately how much? And that's the beginning of the question. Do you remember how much the flight was uh, for you, your flight to Bailey's? <laughs> Shout out to Jay. Jay says, we don't care who she sleeps with and as long as she doesn't buy the eggplant with taxpayer money. money. <laughs> see if that refreshes your recollection as to the amount that that plane ticket cost that was um, extended by District Attorney. You may keep it. You may keep it. <laughs> Shout out to Jay. Does that refresh your recollection, Mr. Wade? It does. Thank you. Approximately how much was the amount of the ticket that District Attorney Willis purchased for your travel to Vegas? $887.35. 
And I'm not tendering it, Your Honor, but I will uh, leave it with the court reporter for our documents. All right, <clears throat> Mr. Wade. Your testimony here in court today and consistent with your affidavit was that the personal relationship, I think we've called it dating today as well. Thank you, JP. The personal or dating relationship between you and the district attorney began sometime in early 2022, March, I think was your testimony. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. Right. And that March date isn't included in the affidavit. The affidavit is, is less specific, but that was your testimony today? Yes, ma'am. And that there was no personal or dating relationship prior to that time, right? No. Right. Okay. That's what said it again. I'm sorry. I'm going to direct your attention to 2020. Say, and, right. and that March date isn't included in the they affidavit. They weren't the dating before 2022. But that was your testimony today? Yes, ma'am. So he says that his is his testimony. Great catch, Av. He says that it's his testimony today that they were not dating, but uh, before March, well, they were not dating in 2021. They mm -hmm. were not dating in 2021. He said that's his testimony today. What's the problem with that? Anybody know? Does any put put believe if you believe that he wasn't dating Fanny in 2021? Put uh, don't believe if you think if you do not believe that he was dating. If you don't believe that they started dating in 2022 and didn't just didn't date at all in 2021, the issue is the cell phone records. Exactly. The cell phone records appear to show, you know, 2000 calls between them in 2021. The cell phone records appear to show him traveling over to her area multiple times, over 35 times in 2021. The cell phone records appear to show his, his cell phone being stationary in the middle of the night for extended periods of time in Fanny's location. So if he's saying now again, doubling down, that he did not date Fanny in 2021, how does he explain the cell phone? Route? Exactly. So that would have been the third attorney that's asked him a question. And that is the third lie that I've caught so far based off of the cell phone records. Mm. And he did not have in hand the cell phone records at this time he didn't really know they were in existence that the the trump's team was going to ambush him with this mm -hmm. so and fanny was upstairs she was upstairs watching because remember she came down really angry and hot and we were all kind of like oh my god why is she storming in like that wondering why she was storming in exactly all right let's keep it going oh where we go all right let's go but so he appears to be lying on the stand in real time, guys. <laughs> and that there was no personal or dating between you and the district. All right. Here's Mr. Wade. Shout out to Jonathan Barrett. Your testimony Going hard here in court today and consistent with your affidavit was that the personal relationship, I think we've called it dating today as well the personal or dating relationship between you and the district attorney began sometime in early 2022, March, I think was your testimony. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. Right. And that March date isn't included in the affidavit. The affidavit is, is less specific, but that was your testimony today. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. And that there was no personal or dating relationship prior to that time, right? No. Right. Mr. Wade. That's Sorry, good I'm going to direct your attention to 2020. In 2020, were you dating the district attorney? No. 2020, that was during the COVID pandemic, correct? It was. Uh, was there a situation for you, Mr. Wade, that made you particularly uh, vulnerable during the COVID period? Yes, ma'am. In, in 2020, um, and a portion of 21, I was battling cancer. Mm. Um, That's the date. And that prevented me from pretty much leaving the leaving environments that aren't sterile. And I just, I had health on my mind. You were particularly cautious during that time. Yes, ma'am. Wow. That, that is not good. That's not good. That is not good. <laughs>
That He's is saying, not oh, good. look at his face. Look at his face. Wow. Man, I, I, I want to be delicate because I fuck around and talk about this and then I get a goddamn diagnosis. Okay. So let me let me be delicate with it. And I'm not trying to say, <laughs> I'm not trying to say he's he's hiding behind his cancer. But he's saying that in 2021, he was particularly careful. In 2021, he only went to places that were sterile. In 2021, he wasn't really leaving the house like that. The cell phone records show that in 2021, over 35 times, he was sneaking out going to Fanny's condo. The cell phone records show in 2021, he was going over there in the middle of the night. So, that is uh, not good. you know, is he using this? Uh, you don't uh, <laughs> want to be careful, right? But I'll just say exactly what 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 AV said. <laughs> it's, not, it's not good. Yeah, I just saw somebody know? say it was a portion of 2021, but like the cell phone records are a large portion of 2021. Like it's it's January to November. That's exactly right. The the cell phone records show basically all of 2021 except mm-hmm. for December. So you can't just say, oh, well, it's a portion of 2021. No, the cell phone record stretched the whole length. So a little interesting, right? A little interesting. Shout out to Trainwreck Entertainment. Says he's over here churning out. She's over here churning out videos and watching my watching ours. All right, excellent. Shout out to Trainwreck Entertainment. If one of the mods could drop a link to her channel in the chat, puts out excellent content regarding court cases like uh like 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 cases that we're watching right now in court testimony. All right. So shout out to Trainwreck Entertainment. But yeah, so that's that's the situation where it would, you know, with his, his current testimony. And that there was no personal or dating relationship prior to that time, right? No. Okay. It's away. I'm sorry. I'm going to direct your attention to 2020. In 2020, were you dating the district attorney? No. 2020, that was during the COVID pandemic, correct? It was. Uh, was there a situation for you, Mr. Wade, that made you particularly uh, vulnerable during the COVID period? Yes, ma'am. And in, in 2020, um, and a portion of 21, I was battling cancer. Um, and that prevented me from pretty much leaving the leaving environments that aren't sterile and I just I had health on my mind. You were particularly cautious during that time? Yes ma'am. Were you dating anyone in 2020? No ma'am. All right. Thank you Mr. Wade. That's all I have. Ms. Marsh, I'm recross on those points only. Yes, thank you. All right Mr. Wade, um, the state asked you about how much money you're making now versus before. And you said you're making significantly less since you started working for Fulton County, correct? Right, let me get off well, the stand. I, I, mm-hmm. I, I did say that, but Shout out to Truth what we're talking me. about is because Such a strong the, woman. now at this point, the splitting of the financial obligations in the firm are now there are two people carrying the weight of three. So that would scale back on the amount of income, right? Amount of profit. <clears throat> Well, you're splitting the profits 50-50, though, instead of one-third, correct? The, the profits, yes. Okay. So, um, but you did testify that you're making, you're making significantly less now. We heard about it for a few minutes. Significantly less now that you work for Fulton County, right? Yes. Okay. Um, would you agree with me that $236,000 is more than $184,000? Absolutely. Would you agree with me that $262,000 is more than $236,000? Absolutely. Um all of these years, despite you saying that you were a three-way partner with Wade and Campbell and Bradley, and now a two-way partner with Campbell, all of your corporate tax returns are filed in the law firm of Nathan Wade, though, correct? My returns, yes, ma'am. Yes. For your law firm? Well, for my law firm, because I also have personal returns. Right. And I'm not talking about your personal returns. I'm talking about your business returns. Yeah, but but the, the question contemplates that my, my bring home money is more or less, so I want to be clear that 
re is reflected in my personal returns. I didn't ask you anything about bring home money, though. I'm not sure what you're talking about. Uh, what I'm talking about is y y your question was the portion of my testimony dealing with earning significantly less money. No, no. My question is <clears throat> during and, and let me I'll just break it down. During 2019, you filed your business returns. I'm not talking about your personal, your business returns for the law firm of Nathan Wade only, correct? I filed personal and business. Yes, ma'am. And even though you said you were partners with Bradley and Campbell later on, you filed your business returns, not with them, but as a solo practitioner, correct? Ah, I see where you're going. There's a different return for that Wade Bradley Campbell entity. And I'm not asking about that. What I'm asking about is during the years 2019, 2020, 2021, and 2022, you filed a business return for the law firm of Nathan Wade. Yes, ma'am. And in 2019, you said that the law firm of Nathan Wade made $184,000, correct? No, I, I, I don't know. Uh, is that does that does that sound familiar? Does that sound about like what you made in um, 2019 and reported on your taxes as a business law firm? If, if that's what's on the return, yes, ma'am, you're right. Okay, and I'm happy I, I can bring those up. I've got one copy. I'm not putting on a video for your tax returns, but. And shout out to. All right, may I approach Judge? Okay. Let me just Thank answer you. this right quick so, while they're talking about that. Shout out to um, La Latisha. Thank you, Latisha said. Is there a benefit to winning a case such as Young Thug that taking fifteen thousand dollars now will increase pay value later? No, 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 no. This is a great question, and the answer is absolutely not. You can fuck around and get lose your bar license on a case like young thug because it is so intensive it is so stressful it is so easy to make mistakes in a case that lasts a year and a half two years it is never 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 uh worth it and you win the case and then what you might not even survive your, your whole firm might go bankrupt making fifteen thousand dollars a year none of y'all can survive on fifteen thousand dollars a year i don't think i have any like 17 year olds in the chat a 17-year-old could survive $15,000 a year. A grown person cannot. And so it will, it is never, ever, 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 ever the case that winning a, a, a case like Young Thug is worth it. It is so much better to tell Young Thug, go fuck you. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> I am not taking your case than to take it and only make $15,000. Right. Because if he wins, then he was rich anyway. Yeah. Like the other co-defendants are not. Like, you know, I think, you know, he's probably... I think there's seven of them all together, but Young Thug himself has the money. He has the best attorney that's paid out of the bunch, right? But some of those other guys are screwed. They're so screwed. So great question, Letitia. That the answer to the question is is no, no. Great question. Let's see here. Is one hundred eighty-four thousand dollars correct? Shout out to Little Ross. Let's see. The second line, number two, gross profit. Yes, so like 184 and 24, yes, <laughs> And then in 2020, you also filed Nathan Wade, attorney at law, and your gross profit was $230,000, correct? Yes, ma'am. And in 2021, you also filed as a solo Nathan Wade, PC, attorney at law, and your gross profit was $236,000, correct? Yes, ma'am. And then in 2022, you filed as a solo practitioner, Nathan Wade, and your gross income was two hundred and sixty-two thousand dollars, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I'm, I'm not going to end up there since we've got your social. Um, but nowhere in these documents do you document that you received cash payments from this Willis, correct? I don't. <laughs> I hadn't looked through them. I, I'd be surprised if it, if there were something in there that said uh, do that. Do you want to look through? Listen to the answer. I'd be shocked if there was something in there that said that I received some cash from Miss Willis. Okay. But there is um, itemized expenditures for travel in here. You did itemize that. Oh, it's a credit I card didn't thing? itemize anything. Right your now. accountant itemized it. I, I, I hope so. But you're responsible <laughs> for taxes, even if your accountant files them, right? I agree. Um, and so you itemized your expenses for travel on all these documents, but you did not itemize. You didn't put anything in there about you being reimbursed for half of that travel. Well, those are those are business returns. Yes, you I, use your business would, card to pay for the travel, right? But but I, I wouldn't put a, a personal expense on a on a business return. But you so, used a business card to pay for 
these I use a personal trap. I use a business card to pay for everything. And what I do is turn over the statement to the accountant and the accountant then says, okay, this expense, that's personal. We'll put that over here. This expense, that's business. We'll put that over here. And they reconcile it. So you wouldn't find a reimbursement from Miss Willis on a business return. Okay, so they're not anywhere there. Nor would you find, well, go ahead. No, I'm just asking. So there's no, there's nowhere for any of that cash to be reconciled there, right? On the business returns, no, ma'am. Okay. Um, we talked a lot about the, the financial affidavits. I know the state asked you a couple questions about them. You filed one in um, 2022. In that one, you stated that you only had $5,000 in cash, correct? I believe you. Yes, ma'am. That, that was sworn under oath. At the time of the filing, yes, ma'am. Okay. And then in January of 2024, you filed another one that also swore that you only had $5,000 in cash, correct? At the time of the filing, yes, ma'am. Okay. So in 2022 and 2024, you only had $5,000 in cash. At that time, yes, ma'am. Um, and then you also, all of those interrogatories, I'm not going to go through them in pain sticking detail, but every single interrogatory you filed, there are four of them, all verified ones, every single one, you said you didn't have any cash stored in a safe, a safety bo deposit box, or any other location. Plaintiff rarely carries cash. If plaintiff does carry cash, it's a nominal amount, correct? That's correct. Okay. So we've got what? 2021, you said you don't have cash. 2023, you said you don't have cash. Again, in 2023, you said you don't have cash. And then in 2024, you don't have cash, right? So so you're assuming that I, I received the cash and I stored it. I received the cash and I saved it. Well, you didn't put what's it in the wrong bank, with right? receiving what's wrong with receiving the cash miss merchant and spending it nothing's wrong with it but so you didn't put that it in would the bank. that would contemplate why the response is what it is on the interrogatory Oof. so you spent the cash that's because before when when it was asked you said you didn't want to disclose where the cash was no 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 For privacy the, reasons no well i said that if i were to store cash in my home then why would i share that with the, the world is what i said i didn't say that I had some cash stored up in some place because that's not the truth. And you've talked a lot he, about he, he this. Beat um, her on I this. split with a yeah, third. Split this is when it started to get heated um, with them. From, let's see, from the check you received from Fulton County, July 15th, 2022. So back all the way back for July 2022, not a single check you've received from Fulton County has gone into a joint banking account. Every single check has gone into your own personal banking account, correct? All of them, with the exception of the checks that were going into the WBC firm, went into my business bank account, which is solely in my name. Right. Your I, business, your, your WBC account that you're talking about, that account was closed, though, in June of 2022. Correct. Okay. So, so everything would, after June of 2022 was put in a Nathan Wade bank account, not a corporate bank account with <laughs> partners. <laughs> Shout out to I think the, the, the question right before that only needed a yes or no. Amazing. So, so, so no, no ma'am. So much the, train the, the checks were deposited into firm accounts, law yep, firm accounts. Law firm of Nathan Wade PC. Yes, ma'am. As a solo practitioner. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So they were not deposited into accounts with Campbell or Bradley. No, ma'am. They okay. were not. Thank However, you. there were checks written to Campbell and Bradley that will reflect the third, the third, the third. And we've tried to get those bank records, but you've objected to those, correct? You've tried to get what bank records? We subpoenaed bank records, and you've objected to all of those, right? Your Honor, I'm going to object to those relevance. It's relevant if he's saying he has all these records, but yet we've tried to get them, and he's trying to keep them from us, but he doesn't bring all of the records. And you can make an inference if he's – there's a there's law that says you can make an inference if if some documents are within the party's control and they won't provide them, that there's an inference that they're not – Positive. Ms. Cross. Your Honor, there was no obligation for Mr. Uh, Wade to produce evidence that Ms. Merchant couldn't find an admissible way to produce. Uh, I, I believe it's irrelevant. We've covered the ground, and I, I um, object to any further questions. All right. I'll uh, sustain that. Ms. Merchant, let's find some new ground here. Okay. Thank you. Um, are you willing to waive your privilege with Mr. Bradley so that he can testify? I am not willing to waive attorney kind privilege. Okay. Thank you. Only on the question, the health questions that were asked. And I can ask it from here because we're very short. I don't want to get into the type of cancer. I don't want to get into the medical condition itself. This is Trump's attorney again. I understand again. you to say mm. that you had cancer in the year of 2020. Yes, sir. And you explained that 
because of that, in 2020, you were or kept yourself in a sterile environment? That's the right. The reason why he's asking that. Now, what about 2021? <laughs> 2021, just focusing on my health, trying to get back to myself. Remember I asked you some questions about Tateville mm -hmm. yes, sir. in the condo? Yes, sir. And you indicated that prior to November 1st of 2021, you had spent time at the condo, the Tateville Cape, condo? Yes, sir. With Miss Willis, right? Yes, sir. And with someone else? You said Miss Yerty? Miss Yerty, yes, sir. Okay, so you were not concerned that was not a sterile environment, was it? Are, are you inferring that Miss Yerty and no, D.A. Willis is not sterile? Of no. course it's a sterile environment. It's, it's a, a condo. But don't you remember that I followed up and said, where else might you have been to show your cell phone? He did ask him that. Hateville, yeah. said, the airport, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Not a sterile environment, though, the airport. You agree? It is not. Okay, what about restaurants? Not him right. It's not a sterile <laughs> environment. Right? They are not. And the Porsche, you said something about a Porsche what? The Porsche experience. That doesn't sound very sterile to me. Is that a sterile environment? Well, you're inside of your vehicle. Yeah, but don't you mingle with I mean, Porsche? I'm driving a Porsche. <laughs> yeah. Oh, remember we were trying to figure out the car note? Yeah. That's what you testified to, correct? Yes, sir. So there's no reason why you couldn't be dating in 2021, is there? Mm. Give me 2020, Mr. Sadow. No, say 2021. <laughs> All right. Correct? Mm. Dating? No. But <laughs> no reason. <laughs> <laughs> Boots got him. Boots got him. I you know, like he's like, why would I be now? I can hit now. We not dirty, <laughs> but you know, it's a little booty thing now. Uh, Dayton, I uh, don't really know about that, right? Shout out. Yeah, I like that answer. He was like, oh, dating? No, I don't, I don't need to date to hit. All right. Shout out to my man, uh, Nathan Wade. Don't you mingle with others? You can. Yeah, and you were doing all that in 2021 before November 1st. That's what you testified to, correct? Yes, sir. So there's no reason why you couldn't be dating in 2021, is there? Give me 2020, Mr. Sadown. No, say 2021. <laughs> all right. Correct? Dating? No. <laughs> no reason. No right? reason. Got it. Thanks. Wow, Mr. Gillen. Right. Okay. Yeah, he's cooked, man. He's he's, he's Stockton. Stockton, excuse me. Just real briefly, you said you started in 2022, and you also used the term personal relationship, uh, and there was no dating, no personal relationship prior to early 2022. Is that correct? Help me understand. I want to make sure I answer you. you so, so let let's let's be clear. Twenty twenty two was the start of any intimate sexual relationship with a district attorney. Oh my wow. god! Oh, he just keeps doubling down on the lie. He's he's digging himself. A hole here. Let's be clear. Mm -hmm. Twenty twenty two was the start of any sexual relationship. the The affidavit by the expert who's analyzing the AT and T data says that the cell phone records do not show that the cell phone records contradict what he just said, mm -hmm. right? Or at least imply the cell phone records don't say that they were fucking. The mm -hmm. cell phone records only show that he was in the area where her condo was over 35 times, sometimes in the middle of the night. Now, these are two grown people, 50 years old. Why am I going to your house at one in the morning and leaving at five? Right? The cell phone records don't show any penetration, but they lead to a logical conclusion that two grown adults, one going over there at one in the morning and leaving at five o'clock... What are we supposed to deduce? Yeah. All right. So he is doubling down and making it very clear. I, nothing in 2021. The, all of the cell phone records are only in 2021. 
And he's saying that nothing happened in 2021. Put Nathan if you believe Nathan. Put AT&T if you believe (laughs) AT&T. Who do you believe? Put Nathan if you believe Nathan that there was no sexual relationship until 2022. Put AT&T if you believe AT&T and the records that came there from intimating that there was a relationship in 2021. Man, I see a lot of AT&Ts up in there. I see a lot of AT&Ts. Let's go. Let's go. Let's, go. Let's get it very clear. Prior to early 2010. Is that correct? I think the AT&Ts have it. Help me understand. I want to make sure I answer you. So, so let, let's, let's be clear. Here we go. 2022 was the start of any intimate sexual relationship with the district attorney. Okay, and that's what I was looking for. Okay. In your affidavit, you used the term personal relationship. Got it. Today, you've used the term dating. And your testimony today is that that includes the term basically physical or sexual or intimate relationship. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And there was nothing, according to your testimony there was none of that prior to early that is correct that's all i've got today wow all right not seeing anyone else miss cross any redirect all right miss merchant can this witness be excused all right so that's a perfect time to what do y'all look look at his face look at his face most of y'all are feeling like this is not a good look for our brother our man nathan wade You know, driving a Porsche, he's a judge, he's an attorney. You would think he's a high-value man. Then look at his situation, right? Uh, Let me shout out a real high-value man. We got Viva Wood life in the jet. God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Shout out to Viva Wood life. Y'all know I don't ever ask y'all for anything. Please write Viva Wood life in the chat, guys. Somebody write Viva. Somebody write Viva. What does he say? Shout out to my man, Viva Wood Life. He says, Fanny was just tricking on little daddy. Let that black man live. (laughs) She ain't the only public figure or woman in power tricking on peen. It's the American way. They weren't (laughs) in a relationship. They were discussing the complex legal issues of the day. 2,000 times. 2,000 times. Shout out to Viva Wood Life, man. (laughs) Viva Wood Life. Y'all know Viva over here. Thank y'all for shouting him out. Excellent, excellent man. Excellent brother. High value through and through. Supports me so much. Shows me so much love and encouragement on this channel, guys. And he's been supporting me for so long. Much like Thane doesn't only support me, but supports so many others as well. Thank y'all for shouting out Viva Wet Life. Viva, thank you so much, brother. Every time you come in, come in with a hundred spot. You know, and I appreciate everybody, man. Some of y'all be dropping me 99 cents. Shout out to Raven. Mm-hmm. Raven would always come in and drop me 99 cents. I let her share her OnlyFans link in the chat. So I appreciate it all. But sometimes there are a few of y'all that just step way out, man, go above and beyond. So I really kind of want to stop and and let everybody know how appreciative, how indebted I am. So shout out to Viva Wood Life. Shout out to Viva Wood Life. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Viva. Cannot tell you how much I appreciate it, brother. Shout out to Viva Wood Life. Thank you. What what did you think about his testimony, A.V.? Kind of what were your impressions of it? I mean, we watched it before this affidavit came out. Mm -hmm. It was actually good to watch it again after the affidavit came out because we saw all the inconsistencies. Um, You know, I saw some people saying that the cell phone records could be, you know, circumstantial. Let's go with that. Mm -hmm. But even if they are circumstantial, because Fanny said, and when we were reading her response this morning, you have his phone records. You don't have mine. Hello. Right? But even though we still have Nathan's records, Nate is in trouble because he's sitting there saying, I did not go there. I, I, you know, I had cancer. You know, I, I was in safe, you know, sterile environments. But remember, Boots is smart. Boots questioned him on it. 
He's just like, I'm going to ask you some questions about 2021, mm. <laughs> right? And every time he asks him questions about 2021, which is at least three or four times, he lied, right? He lied. So that's, that's, is, it was really interesting to go back and watch it again because yeah. that is not good. I mean, if we're really going to be precise, we really shouldn't say he lied, although yeah. that kind of is. But yeah. he said something that contradicted the right. NCNT phone Let's record. Let's go with there that. There was a discrepancy. Yep. There was a contradiction. But, you know, usually business records and numbers are more reliable than people. What do they say? Mm -hmm. Men lie, women lie, numbers don't lie. Right. That's right. Right. So now numbers can lie. You know, you can make a lot of statistics that are misleading. Mm -hmm. But, it, you know, you would typically believe AT&T more than a specific person. So what AV is saying is exactly right. Exactly mm -hmm. right. Thank you again so much, Aviva Wood Life. Big shout out to Technological Chaos. Haven't seen him. I know. Before. It's been a minute. Shout out to Technological Chaos. This is why you use disposable phones. Yes, 100%. Nice. Shout out to Jonathan. Jonathan says, also TLA. The reason that Nathan went to Fanny's house after 11 a.m. and before 5 p.m., Fanny got these kids, okay? <laughs> Nathan was popping when the kids were asleep and left before their kids wake up. <laughs> now, Fanny, like, 52, 53 years old. So I think she do got kids, but they all grow, all right? Mm -hmm. But shout out to my man, Jonathan. Shout out to Truth, Lies, Opinions. Y'all do not know how strong this sister is. This is a high-value sister. Y'all don't really know the sacrifices that she has made, her strength. She is a veteran. She served this country so bravely. Shout out to Truth Lies Opinion. <laughs> it says, if the same records used by Fulton County are accepted in this case, doesn't that mean that those in jail now, those cases get thrown out or reviewed? Precedent, ethics matter. They have no respect for the law. Exactly. So on the one hand, you're saying that see the the uh the 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 the, the cell hawk analytics they don't matter and they're not correct. But then on the other hand, you use the exact same analytics to prosecute all these people yeah. here in Atlanta. So yeah. which one is it? You know, the, the 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 analytics are good enough to prosecute all these people down here, but they're not good enough to prosecute you. Looks like a double standard. <laughs> so shout out mm -hmm. to Truth, Lies, and Opinions, uh, really calling out that, that discrepancy. Shout out to Be Present. We got Be Present in the house. Excuse me, guys, I'm kind of under the weather. Shout out to Biz. We got Biz in the house as well. Shout out to Sunspots with True Omega Sun, a new member. Got a new member in the house. Yes, ma'am. Truth, lies, and opinions. Again, since I'm 58, but I didn't know a relationship was based on sex. I guess the meet and greet goes straight to sex. 100%. 100%. Shout out to Matter and Energy. And shout out to True Lies and Opinions again. Says, why is it my profile? Stop selling yourself for a bag or being used as pawns. Is it why is it my profile? Why is it my people? Why is it my people, guys? Stop selling yourself for a bag or being used as pawns. It is embarrassing, hundred percent. You know, you got a lot of stuff going on with this brother right here, Nathan Wade. A lot of stuff going on with our sister Fanny. Shout out to Fanny Willis. So uh, we're going to see how this plays out. There's another hearing on Monday. I might be able to stream it. If I can't, certainly watch it on uh, AV's channel. I got a doctor's appointment on Monday. We'll see how it goes. Not sure when the hearing is going to be. AV, any final thoughts on this? Yeah, this has been uh, an interesting few days. Uh, we've been streaming it. I want to thank you guys, too. I've seen um, a lot of support over on my channel. I'm a few subs away from 15,000. 15, so that's a little bit of a milestone for me. So I want to thank you guys for the support um, and just being, you know, open to having a co-host, right? Like anybody could be here. So Lee, thank you for the opportunities you give me, too. No problem. Everybody loves AV. Y'all go over and subscribe to her YouTube channel. Also, check out her Instagram. Y'all have been blowing up her Oh, Instagram. my gosh. <laughs> Y'all trying to make her start OnlyFans. Somebody write OnlyFans in the chat. Y'all are trying <laughs> to make this girl start a goddamn OnlyFans. I see what y'all are doing. Y'all are trying to get her to monetize herself for real, okay? Oh, my word. <laughs> somebody, write, somebody write OnlyFans in the chat. <laughs> I see what y'all are doing. All right? Y'all want the light skins. To... <laughs> let, me, let me Let me stop. Let me stop. <laughs> But uh, shout out, man. Shout out. Uh, Y'all see her Instagram right there. AV to the seventh power. Oh, yeah. No, my Instagram is actually AV7official. 
AV7 official. Absolutely. Well, what is AV to the seventh power? So that's your YouTube channel? That's yes. Okay, yes. that's their YouTube channel right there. I got hacked last year. That's why they're not the same. Oh, gotcha. Okay, well, y'all go check her out over there. Y'all trying to blow it up. All right, we got uh Shay to sweet, Shay too sweet. Shout out to Shay. Says BS, those cell phone records show it. I don't even talk to my spouse as much as they were talking to each other, right? <laughs> 2000 times. Shay too sweet mm -hmm. is exactly right. That's a lot. That is absolutely a lot. Shout out to Mr. Pickles. Thank you so much, <laughs> Mr. Pickles. <laughs> That's a name right there. Mr. Pickles says, Can the ATT evidence be used if they allow Fanny? The allotted time to vet the expert and formation pr provided. What are the ramifications for Fanny and Nathan if it is entered into the record? The answer is yes. This type of this type of uh, cell hawk information is used routinely. It's used all the time, not only in Georgia but in the entire United States. the The, the issue is they didn't do it correctly, right? Mm -hmm. They didn't. Not that they didn't formulate the opinions correctly, but if it's an expert opinion, they need to introduce it in accordance with the rules of the court. Right. Nothing just gets shown to the judge and the jury uh, haphazardly. There is a method that you need to use to introduce evidence into evidence into the record. You guys think, oh, well, you know, this is my cell phone and the text message show this. So let me just show you the text messages, Judge. No, you have to lay a foundation. You have to authenticate it. There mm -hmm. are so many steps before a judge can really consider anything. And Fanny is saying that, yes, we use these types of records all the times, but the steps were not followed to use right. these things. And even if the steps were followed, they don't show that me and Nathan had sex or anything. They don't show that we were even in the same house because they didn't have my phone. So they couldn't match up the phones. They only had one phone. Mm -hmm. How can you tell where I was? Nathan could have been at my home and I was, you know, I was on the, I was at the, 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 the crime scene of a mass murderer because the people got killed because they were, you know, the racial and, and the gender bias. So now mm -hmm. she's trying to even play uh, identity politics. Right. But the answer to the question is yes. If if Trump's team had followed the rules, it would be a they uh Fanny would really not have a leg to stand on. But she's got some objections, like AV said, on the technicalities. Yeah. Because they didn't really follow what appears to be the rules. So shout out to Mr. Pickles. Great uh great question, great insight. And shout out to True Lies Opinion says Mary Early, go on, lock it down. What are you scared of? <laughs> <laughs> what are you scared of right go on and lock it up man do You're it out here alone so <laughs> shout out to mary shout out to mary lee shout out to truth lies and opinions thank you guys so much all right guys well that's gonna do it for us but again check us out on monday if i'm not streaming on it absolutely go on av's channel and watch her as she breaks it all down y'all seen the excellent commentary that she has provided y'all are killing in the chat so thank y'all so much for participating. All of y'all's comments. Everybody who who donated, let me check my uh, cash apps. Do you have any cash apps or anything? Yes, there's a few that have come mm -hmm. in throughout the day. Um, I have two. Mm -hmm. Shout out to, let's just call you Mr. Muhammad, who sends a $5 uh, cash app. He says, thank you for your insight and knowledge. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. I have another one from... Andrew Love, <laughs> he sends $8 and he says, there's still no explanation for the number of calls and texts. I remember when this came in and that's when we were looking at Fanny's response, right? Because there, oh, there, yeah. there wasn't an explanation for those calls and those texts. So that's actually a really good point. 100%. Um, that's all I got on my side. Excellent. I got the same L. Muhammad sends me $5 as well. Says, thank you for the insight and knowledge. And also mm -hmm. Siobhan, the beautiful Siobhan, sends me $25. Thank you so much, Siobhan. Super, super generous to you. want to thank everybody who was hitting us up on the cash apps. Everybody who was the super chat. Shout out to all the new members. Somebody write new members. <laughs> There's a gang of members up in here. A gang mm -hmm. of new members. So shout out to all the members. And I want and everybody who super chatted and really I just want to take a moment to thank especially everyone who really went hardcore in the paint with the super chats. And I, I'm appreciative of everybody. 
But every now and then, there are a few people that go way above and beyond and kick the hinges off the door. Let me give a big shout out, of course, to Viva Wood Life, to Devils, a Devil Eyed Elvis. Shout out to Devil Eyed Elvis. Shout out to N Perez. We got the Joe Ethereal, who was a um, sponsor for a time. We got Daryl Triplett. AKA Officer Keep It Real, who was a sponsor at the time for a time mess. Well, we got Jeremy Akimi wrapping it up. And of course, what's up, baby? I hit over 15,000. Thank you, guys. Over 15,000. She just, y'all are. Wow. Uh, somebody write OnlyFans now. Oh, my God. <laughs> I know what you want. Y'all got her, y'all got her blushing and everything. Look at her. Look at her blushing. Look at her. <laughs> Do you guys see how what he does to me sometimes? <laughs> Listen, y'all are showing support. And and this is what I tell you guys. Y'all don't understand how much this stuff means to us. We mm-hmm. y'all are like, oh, y'all are just YouTubers, whatever. No, we're like real people. You work really hard, you know. We invest in this. So y'all mm-hmm. are really showing up, and it really means so much to us. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And of course, guys, please put t- please put your hands together. Put put your fingers on the keyboard for the sponsor of the stream, the sponsor of the whole series, the Thane Mithra. Somebody write Thane in the chat. Gah. Oh my god! <laughs> Somebody write Thane Mithra. Thane three free y'all fuckers, but but y'all were preaching. Y'all were. What did they say, Martin Luther Thane? <laughs> Martin Luther Thane. <laughs> Martin Luther King, <laughs> Thane Free, y'all. Shout out to Thane Mithra, the sponsor of not only this stream, but of the entire series. The entire series where you got this black man, this embattled, this embattled black man over here. They try to support, but it's not looking good for him. <laughs> his right? face, he's bowing his head. Okay, bow your head. <laughs> he's bowing his head. Thane is trying to hold him up. So shout out to Thane. Thank y'all so much for shouting Thane out. Cannot tell you how much he means to me. Y'all saw how much uh, it meant to to AV that y'all are supporting so much. So this is absolutely uh, how we feel about about Thane as well. Y'all just don't know what he means to us. So thank you, thank you, thank you, Thane. Now, um, I know we talked a lot about this situation right here. We read over uh, a few legal documents. Please understand that none of this is legal advice. I am not your attorney. I am the lead attorney, and I'm here to help you lawyer up. All right, everybody have a good weekend. Shout out to Thane Mithra. Shout out to Thane.